Pursuit to the general provision of Article 3-303 and 3-104, I move for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County to meet in closed session to discuss appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluations of appointees, employees, or officials for whom this body has a jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations and to perform administrative function. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or, questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote of the motion to go into closed session. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good evening. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education open session. It's Wednesday, May 6th, uh, 2020. I'd, I'd like to ask everyone to stand to uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a moment of silence, please? Please for our first responders, healthcare workers, and all armed services serving here and abroad. Thank you all. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. We have some housekeeping items at the moment. Approval of our agenda. Uh, I need to have a motion to amend our agenda to include 7.06 calendar adjustment com uh, conversation. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the motion to amend the agenda to include 7.06 calendar adjustment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All the opposed say no. The ayes have it, the motion is carried. I now need a motion to accept the amended agenda. So moved. I have a second. second. Thank you, I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote of the motion to approve the amended agenda for tonight. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. I need a motion to accept the, uh, uh, to approve the minutes from the open and closed session on April 8th and the open and closed session on April 22nd. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the approval of the minutes for April 8th, open and closed, and April 22nd, open and closed. All those in favor say aye. 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 All the opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much. We are now into citizen participation. Oh, I, I apologize. Number three, board and staff involvement. Apologize. Dr. Kane? And with very little to report, uh, lots and lots of conference calls. I still have a weekly uh, conference call with Dr. Salmon. I have a weekly conference call with our superintendents on the Eastern Shore. We have another conference call with Pazam, so that's all of the superintendents in, across the state. We have um, conference calls with the uh, Queen Anne's County and uh, updates for COVID there and um, several others. <laughs> Yeah, so lots of conference calls at this point. Mr. Pelusky, anything to add? I'll just add my comments, um, Madam President, during my COVID-19 update. Thank you, sir. Anyone have anything they want to add for tonight? Well, I've got some questions on distant learning for Greg, but I don't know at what, what point that's a time in, to... In the COVID-19 update. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are at uh, number four, citizen participation and public comment. <coughs> um, between Dr. Kane and I, we have received... Um, 64, uh, 66 emails and um, for public comment. At this time, I would like to read um, two of our student board members' um, letters to us. All of these letters will be uh, scanned and uh, put into uh, record. Um, I am going to read the names of all the students and where they're from. Um, at the end of our uh, regular session, we have a second public comment, and that's when we will address the parents and other members of the community and their, their letters. Dear members of the Board of Education, as you are aware, there's a lot of backlash after the release of plans for the class of 2020's video graduation. As a student board member, I will agree that in, with any decisions made about your graduation plans for this year. However, as a member of the class of 2020, I strongly believe that the current plans of graduation should be reconsidered. 
It seems as though you hear a lot from parents about how disappointing the current graduation plans are. Though they have a right to be upset, this isn't their graduation. This is for the students. For that reason, I strongly believe that there are that other options to celebrate the hard work that the class of 2020 has put in leading up to their high school graduation should be considered. One option to be considered would be to hold a ceremony without parents to give the students an opportunity to walk across the stage. We'd have to be mindful of distance, but I do believe that this option could be used. Another more popular item would be a drive-through graduation. Schools in Springfield, El Paso, and Northern Michigan are already utilizing this idea for a commencement ceremony, so we know it's not impossible. It allows for students to see teachers for the last time whilst having an actual celebration for their accomplishments. I don't see any reason why we can't have a drive-through graduation. It's what my fellow classmates have asked, have worked for, and earned. The class of 2020 officers have no problem with putting money towards a celebration for the graduates of 2020. Even if we had to postpone one for an indefinite amount of time, we still do everything in our power to celebrate the hard work put in by students for over a decade. I'm truly aware of how hard of a time it is for decisions to be made regarding this. This is completely unprecedented and not everyone will be happy. However, I feel like the easy way shouldn't be taken simply because these are hard times. I feel as though other options could be done other than the pre-recorded graduation with a little brainstorming and imagination. To present the seniors with a video and call at the end is not what students deserve. After receiving a cap and gown the day before, being told we're only getting a video graduation hurt a lot of students. I know you've been putting a lot of unwarranted anger, I know you've been getting a lot of unwarranted anger from parents, but that's not what I'm trying to do here. I do believe in the end you will make the best decision for students, but as I do feel as though the best decision should include acknowledging all that the class of 2020 has fought for to earn their diplomas. As these are my fellow classmates, I can tell you that these students have put in everything to get to this spot today. For that reason, I truly believe that the current plans for a class of 2020 commencement should be rethought. Kind regards, Shannon Billups, Queen Anne's County High School. Dear Dr. Kane, President Harper, and members of the board, my heart is aching and I'm very confused. The recent decision to completely cancel our graduation and post a slideshow video on YouTube on the day of graduation makes it seem as if our administration in our county is taking the easy way out. Every day in the news, I see amazing stories of principals going to great lengths for their graduating seniors to graduate them on completing 13 years of education and to make them feel special. After seeing all of these principals' efforts and knowing what my school and county is doing, I cannot help but to wonder, are our graduating seniors anything other than an afterthought? As you know, I am the Ken Allen High School student member of the Board of Education. I am also the class of 2020 student government president. During our nearly month and a half away from school, I have spent more time advocating for my class than doing schoolwork. It has practically become a full-time job. From researching what many exemplary schools are doing, creating social media senior spotlights, responding to parents and students' questions on social media, having phone calls with my principal, creating a PowerPoint presentation with three other alternate graduation plans for my principal, scheduling and planning a post uh, postponed prom, to disseminating information every day on what is currently happening in our school and county. What did I miss or do wrong? In Talbot and Caroline counties, all four high schools are having individual ceremonies at scheduled times where each student will be able to walk a physical stage and take pictures. In Kent County on May 28th, they will hold a vehicle parade around the high school parking lot to wave to teachers and administration. And on May 30th, a drive up event allowing each student two vehicles to watch their graduation ceremony together. In Worcester County, they will hold a safe outdoor ceremony at the end of June. I could go on and on, but I am confident that you would have to be aware of all that is going on around us. Their students and parents didn't have to rally for their students to be properly re recognized in a way that is appropriate for our current situation or stand outside of the BOE meeting with signs in hope of change. It was done out of desire to create the best possible experience from the onset. With all this said, it is reasonable that we are pleading for change. Your job is not to do what is convenient. Am I wrong? And begging, I am begging you to give us something more than a slideshow. Are we not deserving of that or anything more? Or anything more? Picture yourself or one of the other 600 plus graduating seniors in our county as your son or daughter standing before you. Would you not want better for them? Respectfully, Skylar Pedraza, Ken Allen High School Class of 2020 President. I would like to read off the names of the other students who took their time to send us their thoughts 
Anna Tong Dang, James Consoli, Maggie Silver, the Queen Anne's County High School 2020 officers, Morgan Flegel, Ken Allen High School, Riley Tangle, Tangwall, Ken Allen High School, Dylan and Tyler Addis, Queen Anne's County High School, Lindsay, and I hope I say this right, Verndock, Verndock, Ken Allen High School, Julia Cummings, Ken Allen High School, Tavon Gross, Queen Anne's County High School, um, Jacqueline Tona, Ken Allen High School, Carly Nielsen, I apologize, I don't see where, it's, where you're from, Carly, but thank you. Benjamin Hurley, uh, Ken Allen High School. I apologize. Erica Steinbrook, Ken Allen High School. Kylie Marsden, Ken Allen High School. Seth McLaughlin, Ken Allen High School. Hannah Price, Ken Allen High School. Jessica McDade, I apologize, I don't see where, you're, where you were from. McKenna Lev, Ken Allen High School. Josh Blemons, sorry, I don't see where you're from. Campbell Beach, Ken Allen High School. Riley Burke, doesn't say, I apologize. Julia Moran, Queen Anne's County High School. Jessica McDade, Alex Unger, Queen Anne's County High School. Samantha Bowman, Ken Allen High School. Connor Wingate, and then I have an anonymous here. All of these letters will be scanned and put into the record, and they are all very heartfelt. Please, uh, cries for us to change how we do uh, graduation this year. So I will give these to Mrs. Wright to scan and send to all of the board members, make sure that everyone has a chance to read them. Do you have any, would you like to add any comment, Mrs. Morrison, Morris, Morissette? Not this time. Okay. Well, it's Mr. obvious Anderson. that uh, these letters have been well put together and thought about. Uh, two ideas that came up uh, dealing with a walk across the stage and also the drive by graduation uh, probably merit uh, some review. I apologize, we are in 4.02 graduation discussion, which is a part of our agenda. Right. Thank you. Go ahead, sir, I apologize. I'm done. Okay. Mr. Smith? The one thing that I hear, it's not being convenient, take the easy way out. We have asked our principals to make a decisions to, for the safety and well-being of these students. And they've taken that heartily. And what, from what I'm seeing is they've been treated unfairly and about this. We can make a decision. I've looked at this, and there's some good ideas, as Mark said, that could possibly work. But at this point, we cannot have gatherings and large gatherings at this time. Um, you hear numbers are getting better. Some numbers are getting worse. We don't know all that right now. I think this board should be open that if anything changes, that we could reassess this, that we have these things in place, that we could do something more for these students, because they are missing a lot. They've already missed a lot with sports, prom, and other things. But my bottom line is safety. And you think about it, two or three months ago, we were worried about how many tickets we were gonna have inside an auditorium. Now we're, we can't even have a graduation properly because of the virus. Two years ago, we've done major things on safety because of mass shootings. That's not even entertaining us right now because we're not in school. Things change, and I apologize to all the students that are not gonna get to walk across at this time in Queen Anne's County and to their family members. But in the, how would any of us feel if a parent, grandparent, or even one of the children got sick? It's only gonna take one or two, or even one, that could somehow be linked back to this. And I think we're, we're at right now, we've made the right decision. I will leave it open until the day they walk across and then after, or the day we have graduation. And after that, maybe doing something else. And I think we're all that. But I really wanna commend our two principals because I thought, and Dr. Kane did, they know that they've been there for these kids. And to sit there and for people to sit there and say that they don't care and they're taking the easy way out, that does bother me because that's not it. It's a safety issue, 
and we will take the responsibility, but I think we're going to do the best we can. It's certainly not going to please everybody, but um, I condemn the people that have, you know, worked on this. And it's it's open, but uh, two days ago I had some, I thought some sunlight at the end of the tunnel. I hear the governor today and the superintendent of state superintendent, and shut a lot of that down right now, what we can and can't do. And then you hear numbers from different agencies. I just think we're on the... It's not a, it's, it's a, I think it's the right decision. It's not a popular decision. That's all I got to say. Thank you, sir. Captain Kelly? Yes, um, I have a couple of things. Um, I do appreciate all the public's input. Um, it was, it's very heartbreaking. Uh, I read a lot of things that came in uh, from the students and the parents. Um, and however, um, and, and I do know that the principals and their staffs worked really hard to come up with something that they wanted to do the virtual one when you think through doing a virtual graduation that is not an easy thing to do and the execution of that is going to take a lot of work as it is um, and i tell you i completely respect the principles both of these principles they're outstanding and i've had dealings with both of them and they have nothing but care for these students nothing but care i mean i can't believe the challenges they face and every one of them, the number one thing is how much they care for these students. And I know the students or parents are saying they don't really care, but that is not true. Um, it, but I was upset when I found out about the virtual as opposed to the actual. And so this week, and I found out Friday, and this weekend um, I brewed over it a lot. Then I started to calm down and I said, you know, what am I, how am I gonna convince this board that we should be doing something that, that all of these parents and students think. So I said, hey, I'm gonna grab the governor's um, order, the governor's state of Maryland order of what he's telling us we cannot do. And I said, I'm gonna go through each item very carefully and I'm gonna show the board how if we do one of these simple ones of just uh, the members going one by one and no matter how long it takes, going up by themselves, getting a picture, getting their diploma. And I went through the, the governor's order. And the first thing I did think about before I looked at it was that if we just do that one-on-one, -on -one, it would be, we would meet that group, there would be no group. We would meet social distancing, no problem, well greater than six feet. We would, and we would tell them to wear masks. That would meet the governor's requirement. And I thought that was it. When I grabbed the requirement, the number one thing that I completely forgot about was the stay at home order. And he's very clear on stay at home. And based strictly on that, there's nothing in there that is an exception that meets what we're trying to do. And we would turn around and break, really greatly break that order of stay at home. I didn't think of that, and I did not want to, to be able to tell myself that that is breaking that order. Now, granted, he's got a lot of, behind him, he's got a lot of education. He's got a lot of experts that have been telling him why we need a stay at home. So I'm not one to say we aren't gonna do a stay at home. We are a member, we work for the school system, and we can't go against what the governor said. Now, I'm searching for days here of ways that we can do this. Um, and today, I listened to the governor's whole speech, and then, as Mr. Smith said, he made it very clear we're not there yet as far as, as, as getting rid of the stay-at-home order. And then Dr. Salmon spoke, and she spoke specifically about graduation, and one of her second main bullet is whatever you figure out, which we can all do on our own, each school system, whatever you figure out, she stressed, it has to be in accordance with the executive order of the governor. So we can't. Um, and my, my thought is I hope that we can implement or we can create an alternate plan that we can implement when it is safe to do so. And I would like us to develop an alternate plan for the graduation and in, in the event he lifts the stay at home and our health officer of Queen Anne's County decides it's safe in our county to be able, because each county is different and or even think through holding a full graduation later in the summer. We need to come up with an option and be ready with it in the event 
the hopeful event that this virus goes away. And I would really like, I would like to have a student, um, one student from each school to be involved in talking through this and on the tiger team. I don't think we had students on the tiger team for graduation. I think that would be appropriate in particular the maybe, well, they can figure out who it is, but I think that would be useful. So I do apologize to all the people. I was right on board with you, but I, after I calmed down, I ended up realizing we're doing the right thing. The principals aren't hating you. They're just following what the rules are based on the information they have. And that is strictly based on the safety and health of, of everyone involved. Thank you, Captain Kelly. Um, I had, um, I actually had some people contact me and thanked me for this decision because they have not left their home since March 13th. They have family members with compromised immune systems and they knew that they couldn't um, attend the graduation, neither could their student because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I realize that the current limited plan may seem like an easy way out and it's defeatist, but that's furthest from the truth. This is gonna take a lot of time. Every one of these kids, excuse me, every one of these students and the parents have all asked, how do we make it special for our students? And the, the, the principals are working on a wonderful virtual slideshow yes with every student and their accomplishments and not everybody gets to go to senior night no i mean i've sat through hours and hours of senior nights you know and not everybody goes to them so now everyone everyone in this county is going to be able to see the accomplishments of these wonderful students so how special is that that we all get to know we all get to see how wonderful it is this this decision though does safeguard our community against a pandemic that has killed thousands of people. Um, I, I wrote a little heartfelt note about Queen Anne's County. This is a special place and it's filled with wonderful people. And we rise to the occasion to help each other. We've been through some crazy times in this county since I've been here 30 years. So I am asking everyone and all those people that are standing out there with their signs and honking their horns to remember this is our community. We need to stand strong for everyone here and please practice social distancing, wear your masks when you go to the grocery store or the hardware store, wash your hands, please be healthy, please be safe. These numbers are going to go up. I mean, that's just the, the, the hard reality of it. But please also know that everyone associated with the Queen Anne's County Public School System is incredibly proud for and of the class of 2020. And we wish them all the best of health, happiness, and success in their beautiful and bright futures. And may God bless and keep them safe. Okay. We have presentations, 5.01, the COVID-19 update. Mr. Pluski. Good evening. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Kane, Mr. Paluski, Greg Paluski. <laughs> I've heard that. So for, for the record, Andrea Kane, Mr. Paluski and I are going to tag team on um, the COVID-19 update and updates to our continuity of learning plan, which does include a, uh, a start on our recovery uh, for education plan as well. So of course we um, provide these updates so that we can keep everyone up to speed with regard to what's happening in terms of support for students, for families, for our employees during the school closure. And we have added, uh, in case anyone did not see the governor's press conference today, we have added to our state actions. Uh, as of the last report, we were at state action three when the school closure had been extended until May the 15th. And we are now at state action four, where of course, Dr. Salmon, I notified everyone today of the um, end of school. So school is going to stay, remain closed through the end of of the school year. Keep going, Mr. P. Thank you. 
And so Mr. Paluski is gonna talk a little bit about our continuity of learning plan. As of our last update, we mentioned that we had just recently gotten some updates from uh, MSDE with regard to some things that they wanted to see in each district's continuity of learning plan. And so Mr. Paluski is gonna go ahead and, and share some information about that. Thank you, Dr. Kane. Uh, just a reminder that we're in a continuous cycle. We call our three phases of continuity of learning plan, planning and organizing, implementing and support. And then really where we are right now, which is evaluation and adjust. And I would look at this as a continual improvement cycle. And you're gonna see how we're using that to continually plan um, in, in the near future. So as we continue to plan and, and organize, again, this one, uh, this updated slide is really uh, a lot of the steps that we had taken um, from the beginning. Our implementation and support, you know, our classroom expectations, uh, the planning calendars, uh, which will be updated, and now they will be extended um, through the remainder of the end of the school year, which is still uh, June 12th. Again, the last day for seniors being May 23rd. Uh, and then our continued continuity of learning plan, our FAQs. And certainly we, we have, I just want to just recognize to the public, our questions at QACPS, the executive team monitors this on a daily basis. Um, we've gotten a variety of different questions and uh, we've been uh, timely responding uh, to our, our constituents. Uh, if you remember, we had our continuity of learning plan, our really kind of what we called phase one of that, which we had until the middle of April. Uh, and I'm gonna spend a little bit of time a little bit further, but it's linked here is our revised uh, Queen Anne's County Public Schools District continuity of learning plan. It's about 20, 22 pages. I'm gonna go through that with you shortly. That is an update. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about phase two of Tiger Teams. It was mentioned a little bit earlier and in relation to what Dr. Kane had mentioned, which is around our districts, beginning our district's roadmap to reopen plan. I'm gonna go through some of the major components of that that we will have to have in place as we think about uh, opening up the next school year. Continue to receive that feedback and then communicate um, as we move forward. So uh, this is just a little bit of an outline which uh, describes some of the major updates that we're gonna to provide to you uh, as well as the public. Um, and I will get started with our compliance of our MSD requirements. So if you remember the last time that we spoke uh, at our last board meeting, I'd mentioned that the state had developed seven uh, essential components to every district's uh, continuity of learning plan. Those were due uh, on April 24th, hyperlinked in there, which is 24 documents. And I'm not gonna open that and go through and scroll through those pages, but essentially it hits all of those essential components that you see before you on how we're delivering instruction, on a daily on a day-to-day -day basis uh, we've also talked you remember at the last time which was around our tiger teams around uh, our, our recovery plan which will um, evolve through the summer as well as our traditional summer school program uh, we're currently in the the phase of looking at some vendors uh, to come back and actually to, to have you approve those probably at our next board meeting so we're looking at those vendors to be able to provide um, and, and when Mr. Uh, Fisters talks a little bit later about uh, some of the CARES money that we're anticipating we'll be able to use for that. Uh, we've also included and really expanded in here some roles and responsibilities for not only our administrators, our teachers, our paraprofessionals, uh, our school counselors, has really been a, you know, across the board, a system effort of supporting all of our students. Uh, we know that this is a difficult time for a lot of families. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit later about social emotional support and how that's gonna be significant moving forward uh, in our process. We did talk about accountability. That was a section that we had to have uh, at our last board meeting. Uh, we did talk about some uh, modifications in grading at all three of those levels. Uh, component five, the equity really looks at uh, how are we delivering service for special needs, our English language learners. Um, and that information uh, has certainly been provided before again expanded uh, professional development which continues to be ongoing anything from how to deliver online instruction through the google classroom through how to design lessons how to support those lessons um, with our teachers our supervisors have been doing a phenomenal job uh, they've created their own google classrooms for their teachers they are interacting with our teachers on a weekly basis supporting them uh, troubleshooting, where are they finding maybe some, some students are struggling content-wise. 
And then we had to provide really our resources that are available to our students. Some of this we've shared um, in multiple communications through the superintendent uh, with our community, but we've also expanded that uh, to our core resources and our supplemental resources. Those are listed on our webpage. We just included those uh, as well, which is a whole host. And I also just want to going to give a caveat because if you click on that, that plan, you'll also see it's very emphasized around data privacy. And we believe uh, we have policies in place for that. So we want to make sure that we overemphasize that. And I think I mentioned this before. There's a lot of resources out there for teachers. Uh, and we've got to make sure that we're vetting those appropriately so we're protecting our students uh, as well as our teachers for that matter. I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. What were you talking about, a vendor? Vendor for what? I didn't, you didn't sure. finish that. I sure. Think. So uh, in, our last, um, in our last update, we talked about recovery education. And what we talked about was as students move through the summer or students that maybe have an incomplete, we know that they're going to need additional support throughout the summer. So we're looking at a couple different vendors uh, that hopefully potentially we could purchase that will be able to provide that assistance to students um, in real time that can be diagnostic. And we use the term, I think pretty much everybody's familiar with credit recovery. So if I didn't get credit in the summer, I'll go back and have to retake that. We need to look at this like unit recovery or, or gap recovery. If, if I'm struggling with some concepts, um, this is a way to be able to fill those concepts to be able to support that, that student through the summer. So probably at the next board meeting, I'll come back and do a presentation on that and specifically with some of the vendors um, that we're looking at um, to be able to purchase, to be able to support that. Mm -hmm. So it's really about this kind of how do we keep the continuity of learning happening through the summer when we know there's been a huge disruption to the regular learning process. Okay, because I have had that question from several parents. Yes. What is the, as the kids call it, summer school they would have to do if they did not meet the requirement? In and, the... Yes, and, and so there is, there is still going to be traditional summer school right, as, as we I'm normally have. Yes, yeah, so once we have the vendor, um, once we get that approved, it goes through our vetting process, we'll approve the funding for that. Then we want to be able to put those expectations out to our teachers and to our families um, so that they know what is available that they can have access to. Um, when it comes to the unit side, that will be free um, you know, to all of, our, uh, all of our students in our district. So even if they did not get an incomplete, they would be able to review it? Is that what you're saying? Sure. So, so if you have a student, if you have the incomplete as an example, and that's in a, in a credit bearing course, but let's say you got a B. However, there were some gaps in your learning um, due to the COVID-19. You could use this resource to front load or, or um, uh, relearn, if you will, maybe some concepts that are going to support you as you start the next school year in the next sequence course. So would that be, is that necessarily the requirement that teachers will put on the students or it would just be optional? For so it'd be, absolutely, it'd be optional for, uh, for families. Um, the other thing that we're looking at, which is also, and, and, and probably when I present this more when we have the funding side, is there's also an acceleration piece. So maybe you're a student that was get, has been getting an A, has been completely engaged with, with your teacher, and maybe you want some enrichment. Maybe you want to excel those, those knowledge and skills as you go into the next school year. This will be able to help that as well. And so not to get into a whole complex about um, diagnostic and really figuring out each individual's learning plan or learning path and how you fill in gaps along that path, but that's essentially what we're looking at this program to be able to do. Uh, it's pretty amazing, um, you know, to be able to <coughs> offer this to all of our students. And I think parents as well as students uh, will find a significant benefit uh, as we move forward and, and begin to plan the next school year. Well, I think we're gonna be, as I understand, we're gonna be requiring kids so, to get so, incomplete. So, so for some students, and, and that's what we talked about, for some students that might be the student that gets an I, um, we're going to require that they do that. Um, there might be some middle school students that maybe ended up with, with a pass and they want to fill in some gaps with that as well, or maybe they're just not there yet because we've given those students till the beginning of the school year to be able to enhance that. Um, so we're monitoring that. We're working with the schools now because we're trying to figure out how many students at a minimum would be required to take it. And then outside of that, we want to be able to offer that to all of our families as an option. Um, again, we all know the research around summer slide. 
uh, you know, where, where, where gaps and skills can can potentially decrease as summer moves on. Um, so we want to be able to fill that. Okay. And that that's essentially conceptually the idea. Good question. May I ask? Sure. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, for those who would be doing sort of an ESY, so they don't lose their skills, foreign languages are also included in this. So yes, that, like that's the a, eighth grader going from Spanish one to Spanish two, who's missing the end piece of that class. Sure, and, and and that's so one of the first areas we want to look at is is certainly math and, and ELA. One of the things that we're finding math is is much more difficult to be teaching online. We're certainly finding that out. It's really national research around that. Um, and, and certainly because we know those are the core, two core functions. Outside of that, we're, we're, that's exactly what we're looking at. We're looking in other content areas, whether that's social studies, whether that's science, whether that's languages, whether that's in CTE, that um, uh, looking at one particular platform that working with our curricular uh, supervisors can be able to take a look at courses and say, you know, these were the major concepts and skills that should have been taught in the spring. These would be two or three that we would focus on um, and then be able to look at those individual units. So yes, we're looking at to start math and ELA, but then looking at expanding that as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great, great question. Yes, sir, Mr. Anderson. Speaking of math, uh, how are we measuring our success here? I mean, I, I hear a lot of conversation and it's great to have it laid out in outline form. <clears throat> but is there some way to measure our success or where we have a dip and we need to pick it up? Is there some numerical? Uh, it's probably tough to create, but is there a numerical judging somewhere that <clears throat> says that we need to spend time on this side? And, you know, how do you measure success here? Well, I think there's a, there's a variety of different ways. Um, we would be surprised if there would. Yeah, I mean, there's there's certainly going to be a variety of ways. I mean, the, the, the first comment I would make to that is uh, we've just got guidance from the Maryland State Department of Education the other day on thinking about how to evaluate your continuity of learning plan. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in some of the larger districts uh, that have a learning management system, and I know some of you have, may have heard me mention that, a learning management system, uh, something I've been advocating for since I've arrived, that has a lot of back-end analytics to any particular course where you can look at, um, you know, I don't want to say student attendance, but you can look at engagement, a, engagement on a variety of different levels. Uh, there's a whole complete back end of that, and there are back end metrics that you can look at and at a click of a button be able to have a variety of that. We, we don't have that, but what we do have is, is probably the best metric is our classroom teachers. So our classroom teachers know our students extremely well. And that's one of the things that we emphasize as we went into this is the fact that you haven't seen your students for a few weeks in the beginning. And you're gonna have to reteach some skills. You knew where they were at that time. And as we move forward, their teachers are teaching, students are-, are How is that measured? I mean, you know, I, that's a general and accepted- uh, Sure, thing, so- but How are we measuring this? Sure, so- I mean, We're spending money eventually to- Sure, so, so one of the things that we did and we set forth within our grading policy was we changed it to all progress assessments. And that can be a variety of different things of individual assignments. And what teachers are doing is they're giving those assignments, they're giving feedback to students on those assignments. Uh, they might be mini quizzes as an example or formative assessments is what we'd call those. And so they're giving students feedback. That's one, no doubt about that. <clears throat> The students are getting graded, and so how, are they comparing it to previous years, a standard somewhere? Uh, I'm not hearing how we measure success in, in some kind of quantitative way. Maybe it's the work product everybody passes. Well, I guess that's good. But if everybody always passes, that doesn't say that what we're doing, it, it says so, we're doing something that does not leave out anybody. It does not change the outcome, but it doesn't tell us how well we're doing unless you compare it to history. 
So can I just jump in for sure. a second? I'm sure you're going to say something probably similar. So there is no comparison to this continuity of learning plan because we never, never had, had to do it exactly. Yeah. So when we elected to go ahead and continue to grade students, but continue to give students who may not have that support at home an additional opportunity to get that work in at a later time, that will certainly give us some indicator as to what students are learning. Right. So, so indeed, if you're yeah. looking at what students are learning, grades are it. If you're looking for a comparison as to how well they're learning using this continuity of learning plan Compared. in comparison to some other year, there is no valid measurement because that's not happened before. Well, it would be if there is no change and you, you don't have classroom, it means that whatever is going on has been sufficient enough. That's your grades, but you can't compare this continuity of learning plan to anything before because we don't have anything. I, uh, exactly. Uh, so what, but at some good, point, you're going to be asked. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So MSD. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, what I was getting mm -hmm, to. They do, and and of course after all of the districts submitted their initial plans. They did come back and offer some guidance, which Mr. P just referenced. We updated our plan as of the 24th, and they are working on some type of a rubric so that we could look at it and see how we are faring in each one of those categories. And so that is under development. That'll be shared if you haven't already gotten it. So we'll be able to take a look from that point. But this is all so new that the best way that we can tell if students are learning is by the grades that they are receiving. Bingo. Uh, you mentioned the word tough. Have we discovered or experienced uh, something that was more tough to implement than the other, or is it just generally a learning curve? I'm not sure what you mean by more oh, tough you, than another. You, said that some, you mentioned the word tough, that mm -hmm. uh, this is tough, uh, and I expect it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but are, is there anything that's so tough that it it's giving trouble to the people trying to implement it? Yeah, it's called the face-to-face -face time with their students. Our students are used to I'm being I'm talking about engaged. implementing a system that's never been implemented before. There's always some place somewhere that an unexpected challenge occurs. Maybe that's a better way to put it. So there are challenges um, everywhere. Just absolutely. Okay. Because our teachers, the good thing is, is that you know we use Google Classroom, and that wasn't brand new. So we weren't able. We didn't go out and run out and buy iReady or some other product that some uh, districts may have been able to purchase. We were already using to some degree okay. uh, Google Classroom. So there wasn't as significant a learning curve with a brand new product so we were able to do fairly well with transitioning to that in terms of comparing you know what is the toughest it is just what the situation that we're in you know from my perspective this we haven't had to do before it's challenging for some teachers more so than others that may have children at home uh, that they have to teach as well as the students in their class. That time issue is definitely a challenge. It's challenging for parents who haven't had to be teachers before to teach math and, and some of the other things that are, that are expected you know, for students to learn. So there are challenges all about. But the, the important part is to understand that we're overcoming these challenges. I don't know that there is anything uh, that we have been unable and ha to accomplish or to work on and had a scrap because we just couldn't manage it. That, we, haven't, mm -hmm. we have not faced that level that, of challenge. That was the part that answers the question. Took a long time for me to get to it, but there we go. You, you got to it. <laughs> and Mr. Pluski, I don't have this PowerPoint on here. It's not attached. Yeah, so just later on, I mean, to, yeah. to maybe yes, tomorrow, just send it to all of us, because yes, I'd like to. Yes, ma'am. I like, I'm, I'm, I'm cricking my neck. Yes, we'll, we'll, it'll be posted. Yep. Thank you. Your, your PowerPoint's going to go into grading in a minute. Is that what, or is that not? Uh, I, not necessarily specifically into grading, but if, if there's a question, I'll be happy to answer that. I did have, I had someone right. ask me about the middle school. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, uh, the middle school, they cannot go into next year. 
because you had mentioned that the high school students had up until October to be able to, like the freshmen, sophomore, juniors, until the middle, middle schoolers cannot. Uh, and I think the, that was a misconception. Th they have until the beginning of okay. the start of the school year. Okay, the middle able, schoolers correct, to finish. Correct. Okay, thank you for that And I believe that is in the, it's it in the slides. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I believe that's going to Yeah, I had a parent sure. say, he's got until October, I'm never going to get him motivated. And I'm like, no, no he's got to get it Middle the beginning done. of the school year. Okay. In high, high school, school for credit For was. credit bearing. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Sure. And your okay. eighth graders will take their devices to high school with them? N no, is that going to work? That's a that's a different device, guys. Okay. E Yes, and it, it is a different device. So, okay. so when I talk a little bit later about our Tiger teams, it, when we look at, and you mentioned this earlier about seniors, I think about how we're collecting their devices. Well, would I figured be we, everybody side. would be turning in, but correct. And then we got to look eighth at eighth grade to ninth grade. Sure, because it's a different device. You're absolutely right. Um, the short answer is we have not thought all that out yet. Uh, now that we've gotten the news today, we know that then when there's a, a stop date for school, um, that's one of our next pieces among many pieces that you'll see later that we're going to have to figure out what that process is going to look like. Because they'll need those the summer for this recovery. Absol or absolutely. You know, when we re-image, when we update, you know, all the things that happen in the summertime, we're going to have to figure out potentially how we phase things with groups of students so they're able to continue that learning through the summer. Okay. Yes. Right. Let me ask you one question. Yeah. Yes, We're sir, Ms. Smith. Primarily middle and high school right now, aren't we? Are we talking? Is this looping a little bit into elementary too? So I would say back oh, the overall continuity of learning plan is is pre K to twelve. So it encompasses all of our levels of students. Because our younger learners, elementary, aren't as savvy on Mr. electronics Smith. as. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Can you hear me? Yeah. Get closer to my question. Closer to my question. I know you want to hear me. I do want to hear you. <laughs> um, the elementary school children that are younger probably aren't as savvy on electronics, learning electronics. I'm not saying watching sure. other things. But are we getting to them? Because I'm hearing com issues that there's not consistency. Are all our classes the same, like all second grade, third grade, fourth grade? across all our schools coming out with one packet or is that different packets for different schools so they're the, the learning packets i would say it's really focused on what the standards are that those particular teachers are are teaching to and there might be different resources that that they're providing that the teacher has access to um, but i have not heard any any conversation or even a complaint uh, related in that area. I haven't heard it from our principals. I haven't heard it from teachers, but I'll be happy to, we're going to meet with principals tomorrow. I'll be happy to look into that. I think, well, I think if I can interject, the answer is no. Everybody's learning packet in third grade, or let me say first grade, does not look the same. Okay. The standards that they're learning are the are same, the same okay. but the documents that are in those hard copy so, learning packets are not all the same. So uh, a uh, first it, it could be different by school and definitely different by different schools could be different packets that is correct I it's teach focused on the same standard. learning standards but not the identical uh materials in that pocket okay, packet. because i've gotten this from a couple different people because one person tells me so i kind of like to hear it from two different people so i get the some kind of consistency these packets are coming both by electronic or they're picking them up they're a conglomerate of a bunch of there might be 80 pages but they're not numbered. So there's, they're having to sit there and find out which one goes where. And they're having a tough time. And some, one lady has put a spreadsheet together to say, here's how you find them. But they're having a difficult time when they get 80 pages for a two week learning packet to go over and find out where they're coming from and where, which matches up to what. And it's taken a lot of time. I think in all fairness, there's frustration probably on the teachers and the parents because it's exactly what you said, even though teachers have children at home, a lot of parents are working either at home or not there. So I don't, we, is this, a, we, you we haven't heard do. anything about this before? I haven't, but, but I'm sure it's, I mean, I'm not teaching a child at home, so I completely understand. But what we could do is we could, we came up with a really easy solution um, a couple of weeks ago, principals did with regard to putting an icon for a camera so that they knew which 
documents to take a photo of to submit to the teacher. So we could definitely come up with some icons by content area, grade, and all of those kinds of things just to help organize it a bit better for families. I, mean, I think it, that might that yeah, might because, help. Because they've got if you're doing a two two week package, you're talking ten days. Mm -hmm. Even if you just did the first ten or twelve letters of the alphabet or did an A, A, B, C for different content or something, just to make it easier for them to get to it not because i think they're spending time just trying to get up to speed so they're frustrated before they even get started yep we can definitely help with that okay because that's and then well direct your comments in an email to both mr Pluski and dr kane so they can address that yeah i'll, I'll get them i'm just bringing this up because it's something i'm hearing from people and if, if, if you haven't heard it's been an issue it's it's interesting but um and certain people tell you certain things sure you know um but I just want to make sure it's, we're making it as user friendly yeah, as we can. Absolutely. Because, you know, when you start talking third, fourth, first or second graders, it's, you know, for them to click on stuff and do stuff, it's, it's, I think it's more challenging than even our middle school and high school students. We can absolutely help with that. Absolutely. Okay. And, but, but different, like a teacher is doing this, would do the same packet week after week after week. So she's, or he or she is following that. They're not a different teacher doing different packets and coming out from different resources, is it? I'm not sure I understand what you're talking if, if, about. If, if a teacher, you know, Mrs. Kane is t the first grade teacher, she's putting this package out for her class or a couple of classes for the next four weeks. But if Mrs. Kane's doing one, Mr. Smith's doing one, Mrs. Kelly's doing one, then I wonder if it's coordinated well enough. That's the only question. That would be, if, if that's, I don't know. Is that... I, I haven't heard that because the teachers are not going into the buildings and, and creating individual class packets. So we do have right. specialists that are working with administrators okay. that are helping to put these packets together. So I, I'm not so sure that you'd be seeing, uh, you know, Ms. Kane's teacher versus Ms. Harper's, t you know, as a teacher doing a whole I'm bunch just of different about how, things. how the information flows. By school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. By school. And grade level, certainly, in content and question area. on the, and you, I forget your slide where you said you're at a phase now where you're evaluating and analyzing that. Yes. Well, um, I guess the grading went in just recently went in. Yes. And they finished it yesterday. And so the grades showed up. There are some inconsistencies on how that was interpreted. Uh, I've gotten a couple of phone calls today. Um, and so, the, the and this is a high school question okay. because certain way when they transferred all the the masteries to progress and and then they stopped at the 13th of march as a grade and then they can do they add them all up together after that there's there's some confusion some teachers are doing it a certain way and some are not so that is part of the evaluation and adjust that i think they really need to look through um in particular sure with the um, the dean academic deans, because I think there's some confusion in parents. It's early. They just we just looked at it today, um, but there's some confusion on okay. who's doing what, and because there's different ways based on a little bit of evaluate a little bit of presentation we got. There's different ways that you can analyze the grades. You you know at what what at what step do you use? Do you use all the grades from the first day they were in the semester? Now that they're all shipped from mastery to progress, you add them all up, that's the grade so far. Um, and, and there's some confusion. I thought they were stopping at the 13th of March, and then anything above that was, if it's better, the 13th of March grade goes up. If it's not, it stays where it is. There's a lot of ways to figure this out, so. I'll be happy to, uh, we're, we'll meet with, we're gonna meet with the principals tomorrow. Um, okay. I, and I recently spoke with them this week, and they are not fielding any questions around that, but I'll be happy to reiterate that. And well, the academic dean probably is, because uh, these parents have called them several times. And so. Sure. And, and I'll that's happy where they to, should go, obviously. Sure. I'll be happy to follow up, and, and we'll meet with both of them and, and um, see if there's any, you know, what the issues are, and we'll be happy to address them. And, sure. and, and an explanation when this is all organized and we've got all the kinks out of it to the parents of how these grades are working because they're right into every detail as far as okay. is my child getting this or that and you know it matters to them Thank I'll, be, you. I'll follow up with both of our academic deans okay great thanks sure so my comment is uh, yes ma'am what i'm hearing sorry we get all the we get all the complaints but never the um never hear the accolades of our teachers that are working so hard to work through this crisis and uh, and god bless them and thank everyone that's a part of the school system 
Um, what I have heard from a few of my teacher friends in the high school is that um, the no harm, no foul. You know, we can't, okay, a student has a B, but he or she is not, the student is not turning in any work at all, so they can't get a C because there's no harm, no foul. So how are we holding the students accountable? So the teachers are frustrated with that. That's the incomplete, isn't it? That is. We, that That's is, exactly right. So when we that. spoke about that okay, well, last week, again, and a matter of fact, I remember we were talking about the, the student that's maybe getting the A that has just decided that... To stop working altogether. I'm going to stop We've working altogether. social media. My kid's not turning any of this in. Why bother? Well, and the, I'm so going to make the, my child You're going to go to work. summer school routine. And, and, right, that and, that's, a, and, and that was certainly the recommendation from our schools, from, from our principals and academic deans, because they know they had to balance the being flexible with, with a student that needs additional support with maybe the student that was getting the A, that um, certainly the principal has the right you know, to withhold that and give that student an A. Now, for that upper level student, we'll use that as an example, as maybe that's getting an A, uh, I, I would think you would you would want to be able to get that grade by the end of this year and not have to work on that through the summer right. to be able to get that I into a grade or into a P because you're going to be into a whole new set of classes once you start the fall. So actually I was hearing the opposite. I was hearing some parents and, and some students saying, uh-oh, now I'm being held accountable. I better get going. Okay. Um, so actually I've been hearing from teachers saying, thank you, because I was worried about some of our students that, that might be, I don't want to say checked out. But um, so I, I, I think we've gone about this the right way and, and kudos to our academic deans and our, and our principals that have thought through all this and have, have thought. But I'll certainly, again, if, if there's any concerns to that, if that goes to the academic dean, we'll, we'll okay. meet with the principals tomorrow and I'll follow up with that, you know, of, of what they're hearing. But when I talked to principals the other day, they weren't, they, they, they weren't sharing the same thing. So I'll follow up. And in, in that same line, a question on, um, are the, you know, I've seen the immediate grades that came out today, and if there's, there's incompletes on what they've done since the 13th up, at, is there a point where the, um, you know, they, they do have not turned in kind of stuff? Right, it, it should be, I think, a blank in high school. And then the not turned in, some of them say not counting towards your final grade. My question is, are these, are they going to be notified by their teachers that, hey, you're missing this entire unit, so you're going to need to get this unit? I mean, there needs to be some notification to the student because it's, it's today's first day, but it's really unclear right now. Sure, and I, and I would think our, you know, for, for the vast, I mean, all of our, for the vast, I would say the vast majority of our teachers, I, I think have been doing, trying to do a very good job of giving feedback and making sure if there is, I know that, that we've been in multiple conversations with our principals about students that aren't turning things in, that aren't being engaged right now. Um, and if we're not hearing from them, how do we make sure, you know, we do a wellness check. But the, Great feedback, great comments. We meet with the principals tomorrow, and, and I'll certainly put this on my list with them, and, um, and and we can follow back up. I'll give you an update when the sure, next time Sure, and I we'll understand. Meet. I mean, it just came out, so sure, this is sure. new, and we're at that phase of figuring out. So how do you out. get to see all the principals? Do you do a Zoom meeting or Google, we're, we, Google, we're, Google meeting? We do a Google meet. We do. We meet with all of them. Uh, try not uh, to use Zoom. Don't Zoom. No, nope. we don't what happened. Zoom. You we don't what happened. It's not, it's not an approved. Google, Google Meets. Yes. But, but just as Ms. Harper said, we, I get lots of phone calls. And today I was on the phone all day with parents about the grades. So, yeah, and just I so would you know, just, it's confusing. Sure, sure. And I know that's part of your role as a board to, to get feedback from constituents. And, and I would just encourage one, having that parent talk to the teacher is always the first move. And then if that academic dean, the principal, um, I just haven't been hearing it from, from the leadership side of that. Not to say it's not happening, but you know, and if there's any concern, please let us know so we can follow up with it. The, the, let the principal know if there's a concern, if there needs to be more clarity, uh, more communication. Uh, I think everybody's more than willing to do that as long as they know what the particular issue is. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Anybody else? Thank you. Yes. Okay, so moving on, we are at uh, graduation, and, and I just, you know, I really, in a very heartfelt way, sympathize 
with our seniors and with our parents because this is a this it's a difficult time and when you think that you're holding out hope all of a sudden something comes through and says no you know we're not able to do that so i appreciate all of and, and families you know sometimes i get letters that say i know you've gotten 100 emails i know you have you know what that's okay that's that's what i am here for and that's what our board members are here for and we would not in any way want to say don't write or don't express yourself this is absolutely our students rights our parents rights our communities and so yes we absolutely want to hear from you um, the unfortunate piece of it is is that we just have to be in compliance with the law i have certainly checked with our health officer uh, for queen anne's county i have checked with law enforcement um, and, and even had a comment yesterday from uh, state's attorney's office. We are doing what we are legally responsible for doing as far as the graduation ceremony goes. And I know that there are about 10 million, probably 10 million and one uh, variations on what one county is doing versus another county and how they're handling uh, graduation. But what I can say is that over the past couple of days, we as superintendents across the state of Maryland have been contacted either by uh, the majority of us by our law enforcement for our local area or our our health officer to say you may not have gatherings you may not ask people to be out on the road uh, for non-essential travel this is the reality it is a hard hard pill to swallow but what I would like to also say, and our principals did an outstanding job of, of coming up with a, uh, a variation of a graduation ceremony that keeps everyone safe um, and abides by the governor's executive order. But to Mr. Uh, Smith's point, when such a time arises that those restrictions are lifted, we are beyond, beyond happy to convene our students in a way that's appropriate with whatever restrictions abound at that time. Uh, you know, everybody, everybody knows that the governor has a recovery plan that is set out in, in phases. And those phases address how we can convene in groups over a period of time. As we enter into the next phase, we still are under the executive order, right? And so we have to abide by those things. But when such time arises that we can convene our students to be photographed in their caps and gowns, to walk across a stage or a stadium, our principals, myself and everybody here, executive team, we are more than willing. Don't think this has anything to do with willingness uh, and or, or lack of creativity is another word, uh, phrase that I've heard. It's not that. We are abiding by the law, number one. And number two, we are adamant about keeping everyone safe. So it is difficult. It will not be forever. And I do recognize that, you know, as the months go on, uh, folks may be less and less inclined to come back for something, but we will continue to press forward. I've spoken with our principals and they are already, I've asked them to already start planning for what that graduation may look like uh, when we're able to convene groups of students. And so that is already underway. And uh, to all of our students, all of our seniors, I do understand, I get it. Uh, we want you to be safe. Don't give up hope, but stay safe for right now. So right now, as the slide shows, we are pre-recording uh, a virtual uh, ceremony. There will be speeches that are given. Um, Ms. Harper, myself, our Val Sals, our principals, uh, and others who are invited will certainly be a part of that. Um, there may be some opportunity, and it's probably out there already, to have parents to send in photographs of their students in their cap and gown because they did receive them already. Um, so that is an opportunity 
opportunity out there because I know our students want to be in their cap and gown in a photo. So that is something that we certainly can look at. Uh, we have already put some yard signs out. You may have seen them as you drive through the community if you've had an opportunity to do that. Although I know travel is uh, only essential, but as you go to the grocery store or whatever, I've seen them. Um, public announcements, uh, radio announcements are happening. But um, when we're able to do face-to-face, -face, we certainly will be doing that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, suppose it's uh, August the 25th. Right, that's a little bit too late to have yeah. a graduation. I mean, it doesn't it, want to. It, you're right. So I'm, I'm not going to put a date on anything. I'm just going to say when we're able to do something, when restrictions are lifted, that certainly is something that would be considered. And let's not, you know, fool ourselves. As restrictions are lifted, we already have seen the governor's plan. It's in phases. So we're not going to go from, okay, no more than 10 folks gather to it's okay to have 500 people in a room. That's not going to happen. That's not laid out in the plan. So it will be gradual. And so what we'll be looking at is how do we get groups, small groups in. I understand. Mm -hmm. But the point that I was trying to make is that it was made earlier that with bits and pieces of information, people uh, who were affected thought there would be some opportunity to do things that were not allowed. Correct. Uh, there is also a deadline beyond which it becomes impractical to do one. And we'll because let them be the judge the of that. Year. Yeah, we'll, we'll let them be the judge of that because there will be some students that are still in the area. There will be some students that are not going to be in the area. We've got kids going to military and other places. My, my real point, when such an opportunity or occasion occurs, can the board be let know so we can rediscuss all of this? Well, it's not really a board decision. It's, it's not, a it's, principals will, will disseminate that information to the public just like they did last Friday. A courtesy. We need well, well, we will be t we will be informed as well as the community, uh, but you know this is up to the the principals and Dr. Kane. Okay. I think we don't want to be informed after it goes well, out. We, That's all we'll we're saying. Be, we'll, we will be informed. Okay. I'm only okay. saying that it would be. You know, that, and this is time. This is all brand new, but when somebody calls me and says, "Have you seen this letter?" and I don't know what the letter is. Uh, yeah, you okay. know, hey, we do better next time. Okay. There's something that I'd like to ask, though, um, because I just received another email. Um, a lady is asking, so the drive-through, the fashion, they to pick up their pack, pack, cap and gown, you know, it was okay for them to do that. How come it's not okay for them to do a drive-through um, graduation? And yeah. as I understood it, the cap and gown, when they picked that up, they weren't allowed to get out of their cars. They were put in their trunks. So nobody got out, no, you know, there was no you know, face to face of any kind. So that was the safeguard they had for that. Yeah. And so what has happened again since Monday, literally Monday and Tuesday, we have superintendents have been contacted by law enforcement. There is There are a couple of districts that had planned some drive through sort of graduations and those have been halted. Like I know today, so, Caroline County put their whole um, um, plan out and, and I was like how are they going to have four people uh, be with a student and go through the school yeah, yeah how are they going to do that yeah and I think part of it has to do with how we receive information oh, and so like I mentioned what we thought we could have done last week and when I say we I mean in education in the state of Maryland what some may have thought was okay last week. This week we found out was not okay. Some school districts had planned, like I mentioned, drive-through graduations. Those plans have been halted in many districts. Has everyone gotten to a place where they've heard from their law enforcement or their health officer? Uh, probably not, but many of us have, and some of them have had to change their plans. What I am concerned about is making sure that now that I have had conversation with our health officer, and now that I have put it out there to our leaders in Queen Anne's County and I have gotten confirmation that we are doing the exact right thing I am not going to change on that and so until until such time as restrictions have been lifted and and we'd still be in compliance so okay. there are ways to get creative when the time is right but right now this is the most safe option and the legal option that we um, that we have mm -hmm. 
And I think the one thing we've got to be very cautious of, I like what we're hearing that we're going to be able to hopefully do something later on down the road. And Mark's right, the farther you go down the road, the less things. But it's a, you know, until things get lifted, we can't do that. And if it gets lifted in 30 days, then maybe a search time after that you can do something. But then lift for 60 days, it's a moving target that we don't know right now. That but is correct. To the public, you know, we're open. We've got something to do for May to graduate, but hope and we will do hopefully do something else in a more personal way at a later date. We just don't know when that will come. I would and like we certainly to. have a lot of ideas on what to do, but we just right now cannot do it until certain phases are lifted. And from what I heard from the governor today, it's not lifted. What I'm hearing from a lot of the parents is they want to see the students in the captain gown. And I would love for them to be able to send in pictures mm -hmm. to the print, their you know, corresponding principles so they could be used mm -hmm. for the picture Absolutely. rather than what was taken last August in the yearbook. I mean, I know it's not the, you but know. But that, that's why I brought it up. Yeah, I've it's spoken not with the, the principal of, you know, and, best you know. solution, but right. it gives them a chance to get photographed in that the captain gown. That is all along. So can a student send in an appropriate picture of themselves? And, cap and a cap and gown with a father or mother, whatever they want to do, just one picture that would be posted as their graduation picture. Is that a possibility? I just brought that up. That's yeah. why I said it. So that is, and, and a principal brought that to my attention okay. as to something that they would want to do. And so that's absolutely a possibility. So they could send and, it but in. But what we'll do is we'll make sure that the principals put that out uh, to their students, their family, so that they know it is coming from them and they know that this is something that's uh, viable. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be lovely. Yeah. The next slide just simply references what I just mentioned. Um, so no need to, to, you know, belabor the point. But uh, by law, legally, we're doing what we uh, can do and um, are definitely open to celebrating our seniors in a, a, a special way when the time permits. In violation. There's 11 people in the room. <laughs> really? Sure, we all there's everybody some. is social distance enough that no one is touching anywhere near anyone. State waivers, Mr. Yes, there, there were two last week uh, that were approved by the State Board of Education. The first one um, is really around the teacher and principal performance uh, evaluation, and essentially the waiver, the student growth component for their evaluations will be waived for the 1920 school year. Uh, so we're going to meet with principals tomorrow on that to um, make sure that they communicate that, what that, you know, means, you know, to their students, I mean, to their teachers, what that means for them. Um, the second one, there was a waiver of final grade changes made within 45 days, the last day of the grading period. That's actually in some recent language about two years ago uh, when the Comar regulation on grading and reporting um, really was around protocols for changing grades um, and the, the superintendents uh, lobbied across the state to have that actually waived. And so that really goes in line with what we were recommending, which allows until the middle of October. But I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that. Uh, just a very quick update, uh, our access to uh, internet options, uh, very exciting. Uh, our, our mobile hotspots have arrived and they are in the hands of uh, 18 of our teachers. Uh, they're also in the hands uh, of our students. Remember the last time that we spoke as they came in, our priority was to get them in front of teachers. So we had about 18 teachers in the district that did not have internet or, or spotty internet. We were able to get hotspots to them. Uh, both of our high schools reported they had about 120 uh, at Queens County High School and 14 at Kent Island. So you can see the numbers there. We've got six, uh, 60 at Queen Anne's and seven at Kent Island High School. Again, those numbers rec represent going to seniors first, then to juniors, and then to sophomores. So, um, Unfortunately, we had 12 that were uh, bad. So those will be in tomorrow or the next day. Those will go right to Queen Anne's County High School to finish up the sophomores. And I also believe by, I checked today in Comtech, either tomorrow or Friday, the next shipment of 300 will be in. So once they tag those devices, then those should be going out Monday. We'll finish out our high schools and then we'll start moving into um, our middle schools. Uh, our school building outdoor, who is paying for the hotspots and then who is paying for the connectivity? Are we doing that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Connectivity on hotspots, though, can 
can be on their cell phones too. They can get hot spots. They they can have tethering. What they call tethering, where you can tether it to your um, cell uh, cell phone. Yes, and we brought that up. Good point, Captain Kelly. We brought that up in our original slides that that is an option. In fact, one of the things that we found from these numbers is when principals originally reported them, um, some of their students have got uh, 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 Atlantic Broadband in their home to when they didn't have it. And I think that's been part of our communication, knowing that that's been out there. So we've been able to give those uh, hot spots to some other students. So that has certainly uh, worked. Um, should uh, we receive, uh, as it relates to our outdoor uh, wireless access kits, uh, those should be here by tomorrow. We're going to start our installation uh, next week. We have included uh, Queen Anne's County High School, so I just wanted to make sure um, that is in there as well. They'll receive that as well. How many did you receive? Uh, well, we've expanded that to Queen Anne's County High School. So I receive five or we still? We will. We will. By the end of the week and yeah. install next week. And not to beat a dead horse. What's your theory on having Suttlesville Middle School and Suttlesville Elementary School as two hotspots? Well, one, I, I believe in, in working with both of those principals, there is a need. Um, as it was expressed by both of those. Uh, we also recognize when we looked at our numbers that there's a high need in the Southersville area to begin with. Um, and, and one because they're Title I schools. That was kind of our logic behind it. Um, the whole goal here, number one, is to get all of our schools with those outdoor mm -hmm. uh, Wi-Fi spots. And that kind of leads us into the Atlantic Broadband partnership that we're still working on. That's still the goal. The, I mean, the, school, the, the goal still remains to be able to get those at all of our school by the end of the year. I think as we're building the hot spots, you know, and more, more kids are, are being able to take that home and, and connected, um, that's helping. But I also think that, you know, it, it just adds another layer of, of access. I, I, which I, I guess I still have a hard time when their schools are less than a half a mile, a mile apart. Why wouldn't you put one of those down on Ken Island or, or, or somewhere? Then have, well, there's one at Churchill and Archie School. There is one there. Churchill well, that's what Elementary. it says up there. Oh, I'm yes. sorry, I can't. But you got to see it. I mean, I just don't understand. Once when we go back there, I can understand it. But why would we went one down to Stevensville Middle or Ken Grace, Island Elementary? Just have one Grace on Ken Island, Island for, or one in one of the Grace parks down at Robocook. That's Middle, a, a, yeah. a weak spot. Grayson Middle's there. Um, well, you know. I, just, I, I mean, I just don't. They're so close together. And sure. Sellersville Middle School has a lot of parking to my, from what I've seen. Well, and I think the other side of this, and, and, and we know this just because our population density, when we look at it throughout the county of our roughly 50,000 residents, there's, it's highly more populated, certainly on, on Kent Island. I think there's more spots where people can right now connect than there are in the northern part. Um, but, you know, we're going to continue to do the best job oh, that we I can know. to I, try I, to I, provide still, access. I guess why we have two, it'd be like having one here and one at the Liberty Building. Why do we, I mean, is, is they, we need to, we have, uh, uh, you know, too many people in the parking lot? Or why do we have, why wouldn't we put one in Queenstown and one here? That's, I, I just, I'll drop the subject. It's just or my Matt, Or Mattapeak, Mattapeak Elementary and Mattapeak Middle are adjacent to each other. If you put one in there, you get two schools. So recall, it's so, a little bit better. Now right, exactly. Grade. Recall the need. It's in right. need. Right. Well, no, there, there are gaps. There's down there. several layers of cost. One is the, the hot spot itself and its installation and wherever it goes. That's a cost number one and it's fixed. Then there's the cost of using the hot spot on the internet. Now, hot spots can be accessed and the access can go anywhere. Now, what's to prevent the, who's paying for the excess uh, internet use. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but no. we're pro we're providing the device, and when we talk about the hotspot, we're pro we're co covering the cost of connectivity of the data for that. Oh, uh, I think you're going to find that this is going to be used for a lot more than school. Well, and there's nothing to stop that. Keep going. Well, there could be. But to clarify, aren't the wireless access kits? That's a closed school system, so you have to have log on. Yeah, and we you're did. Only going to be able to access certain sites. Right. We 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 still have the firewall, um, so we we still have that, and we talked about that last time. Mm -hmm. 
if a parent is in the home and the parent needs to use the internet and they've got the hotspot there, then they're going to use it. And, okay. and, and so be it. As long as we are ensuring that students have a way to do their work and are continuing to work for, with whatever recovery plan that we put together over the summer and into next year and the summer after that, that's the goal. But the wireless kit is different than the hotspot. A the wireless kit is, is at the home. school, right? The, Correct. Right, is at the school, so, and that's still still same as if you walked here. I can't go to some far out site that's inappropriate when I'm using school error. internet. And we're still Depends considering on using the buses. Amount of time and okay. the information that goes through, okay. and I'm telling you, we're going to end up with an unquenchable thirst for adults to use the hotspot. Well, that's... I have a question on the hotspots, I don't think we too. should ignore that. Do we have, like, I guess you aren't to that point yet, but we probably need to develop a policy. So okay, wait a minute. We can't have two company. conversations up here. I thought he was done. done. Sorry. Okay. Can we move on? Go ahead. On the hotspots, um, we, we're going to need a policy written so that we know who gets them, how we keep track of... And how long are they going to have them if they move from one school to the other? I mean, sure, all of that we, has to be we, resolved. We, we did. We, we developed that through Comtech. So everybody that gets one has to sign off on it. And it really falls under acceptable use okay. because it is a device that is owned by the school system that is being issued. Uh, so we do. We, we have all that logged. We know who. We've got serial number. And then we've got a sign-off sheet, which is kind of like a user agreement. How long do they keep them for? I mean, are we... Do they turn them back in, or do you have a policy on that? Or probably not yet, but do they carry them to the next school they go to, or do they keep them for years? What are we doing with that? I, as I understood, it was only two months. Well, we've looked at extending that because of the recovery plan so that families can continue, just like I mentioned, to use okay. them throughout the summer. So we're looking at extending that and possibly using some of the dollars that we receive from uh, the CARES funds okay. uh, to do that. Okay. So yeah, we we've, we've have considered that. And we won't need to write a new policy. We're, we're covered. And we may be in that spot, you know, in the fall, mm -hmm. if we're still... Very much yep. so. Exactly. So, Very much. So I think we need to have a way to keep track of all that. Mm -hmm. Thank Very you. Very much so. Okay. Doesn't the county Smith. get some money, money for the money? Smith. Sorry. Doesn't the, any county receive money for this fund for the virus that won't money be coming? Cares dollars. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Could we work with the county? Because we discussed it, and I think Jim brought it up, about parks. You know, why duplicate this if the county was going to put hot spots in different parks around the county? That would cover some of us, relieve... I think some of Mark's concerns that, you know, a lot of people will be using it, but it's a county service. And if it's county money, everybody can use. It's gave her a note saying that. Uh, <laughs> we don't think too much money for some of this. Mr. P is going to get to that piece. But anyway, right. it, it's something where we have discussion hey. with, with the county. Let's, let's do this. And you know, then you could do uh, Roma Coke on up 18. Mr. Smith, this is round three on talking about connectivity. Well, everybody's had a chance. I know, I'm sorry. I know, I know, I know. But this is the third time that we have discussed hotspots in our meetings, and it's a passionate topic. It's a passionate topic. Well, and, and the only thing everybody the only thing needs just, to be heard. Yeah, no. Yes, the sir. only thing I just wanted to add, I, and I think that's that's part of the planning that Comtech is in with county government as well as Atlantic Broadband is to figure out where, so we're not duplicating if it's going in a park versus putting it in one of our schools. So, I, I think there is some coordination that's happening to that. You know, I, I just wanted to add, and it's the last thing, just to move on from this, but, you know, we are looking at the, the bus pilot for Wi-Fi. Some districts are doing that. Um, Comtech has, I've asked them to look at that across the state. Um, it, it seems like states, states, it seems like school districts are abandoning that because if they're going with you know, hot spots that are outdoor kits. It, it might seem overkill. Uh, the range is not as far as it would be on a building. Um, buses don't have any locks that are on them. Right. So there are some, there are just some con concerns about it, but okay. I'll provide you an update once I get some more. There's no locks on the buses? <laughs> By law, um, that's certainly not, I don't want to step in Mr. Pinder's area, but wow. Um, Didn't know. But you're not dismissing that. You're saying you're, you think... No, it's like still... Like Barclay, it, if you go out to Barclay. Well, I, and I think that's right. And, that, and that's... that's and, going to and, and, and I mentioned this uh, in, in the interview. If you look at a, a community like Crumpton, yeah. who has just has a, like a fire hall and a, uh, a post office, still is quite a ride to Southersville Middle School. 
Uh, so it's looking at those things uh, again, and I think that's why the coordination with Atlantic Broadband in the county is if there could be a hot spot in that Crumpton area for them, then then we certainly wouldn't abandon that idea so we don't duplicate. Okay. That's right. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I, I really want to, and this kind of goes to what the superintendent and what you heard today uh, from the governor, as well as from uh, our state superintendent of schools, Dr. Salmon, and that's around the Maryland uh, recovery plan. If you've watched um, her press conference, um, we've had a chance to be able to look at that. I've read that, um, and it's, it does provide some, some guidance. It does provide some um, items or principles rather for school districts to think about. So what the second phase of our Tiger teams are going to involve really our district plan for what we're gonna call uh, our roadmap to reopen. And uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of things that have to be considered for us to open under the guidelines that you were just talking about. Um, but I think I just wanna make sure that we're clear that the plan that we develop will at least be at a minimum of 16 months to 24. Um, that could be well part of obviously two years, but I think that's, uh, as I mentioned, recommended the superintendent, I believe that's the kind of planning that we're gonna have to do because we could be in and out of different phases depending um, on the pandemic and how it lasts, spikes, goes down. So that's the kind of planning we're gonna have to do. So uh, as our first phase of, of Tiger teams, you saw their recommendations, they're being phased out. Um, the next phase are gonna phase in. Uh, so our first Tiger team is really gonna be on the facilities and operations side. And there's some key focus areas there, building access. We, you know, we're gonna have to work with our health department. We're gonna have to make sure those protocols are in place. Um, we're gonna have to work with uh, Mr. Pendershop here about sanitation and cleaning, uh, transportation, school meals. If it's a partial opening, what's that gonna look like? What's transportation gonna look like? Uh, athletics, if, if that's gonna uh, evolve in the fall. So there's a whole uh, host of facility and operations components um, that we're gonna have to take a look at in, in whatever phase we're gonna open in. Uh, Tiger Team 2 will be our continuing uh, continuity of teaching and learning. Um, all of the things that are around looking at a school schedule, a partial school schedule, we heard today, state superintendent talked about an A day or a B day or phasing in elementary schools first and while secondary schools are, are online. Um, this Tiger team is gonna look at all that. They're gonna look at our, our distance learning, they're gonna look at our curricula, um, our, our interventions, our services for students, our special needs populations to ensure that we're meeting the needs. Uh, Tiger team three, just as we were kind of talking about, um, we talked about a little bit about testing. Uh, uh, and accountability. Um, this is gonna have to look differently, um, whether that's the state testing and, and right now, um, potentially we're gonna have to administer a diagnostic uh, uh, assessment in MCAP as soon as students, or at least within the first two weeks when students arrive. Um, two part diagnostic to figure where the gaps are, although we do have a lot of diagnostic assessments already. And remember, we, we give a lot of internal assessments, our local assessments um, that are administered face to face. So we're gonna have to rethink about um, test security uh, with our local assessments. Um, we're gonna have to look at, you know, uh, right now there's a conversation that the students that, uh, let's say if I was taking algebra one, I didn't take that exam, um, but I'm gonna have to maybe take that exam in October. So when I'm moving on to my next grade level. So there's a lot of things that we have to look at. We've got to look at our testing calendar. Um, grading and reporting, we might have to make again some, some adjustments in this area. Um, so lots to take a look at in that area. I mentioned this earlier. Um, nationally, you're seeing this. One of our Tiger teams is really gonna have to look at um, how we're providing our supports and social emotional, not only for our students, not only for our families, but for our employees um, that are maybe dealing with some difficult situations at home. So self-care, family support. Um, we're also gonna have to look at as, as this graduating class graduates, the, we got a next graduating class that's gonna be potentially in a, in a different learning environment as they move forward. So we gotta make sure they're on track with their graduation requirements. So a lot of our school counseling, PPWs, 
Um, we just talked about technology and, and connectivity. We have to have a Tiger team that is constantly looking at our technology needs. Devices will be one thing they look at. How do we bag them? How do we tag them? How do we get them back in the hands of students? Our mobile hotspots, um, looking at pre-K to two, uh, even though in some cases that might not be great appropriate to have a device, um, we might think about doing something in that area. Um, our asset management. Uh, so we're going to have to look at that as we move forward. Our staffing, our professional development, and our evaluations. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things we're going to have to look like, look at differently. Um, if we're not able to open our leadership academy that we normally do, it's going to have to look different. How principals provide professional development when teachers come back is going to have to look different. How principals give feedback to teachers in a virtual environment that they've never done before, that's going to look different. So. Um, our theory here is by operationalizing our school leaders and, and our staff to look at some of the best practice across the country um, and make the best recommendation for Queen Anne's County Public Schools and our community of what's going to work for us. And you heard that today from the state superintendent is their guidelines in which uh, they're providing to, to our local superintendents and it's going to be our responsibility to figure out what works best here. One more question. I'll pause there for a moment. I'm sorry, one more question. Sure. This is another one came up, and also I'm interested in it too, is the um, SAT test. They canceled all of them up to, I believe it's um, August or September. It's September. And it, is Queen Anne's County paying for that first one? I've gotten inquiries from parents on that one. And it's in last year, this year's money. Yes, and uh, I do believe I, I um, we've had a request from both of our academic deans to be able to administer that. And I believe I was working with Mr. Fister on that because we do have the funds allocated. It, are we able to just transfer that and to be able to pay for that? But that would be the intention is because we've set that precedent that you know that serves to that serves an accountability piece on one side, but that you know we give that during the day which is an added benefit to get more students to do it and a, and a huge benefit to families um, that were paying for that. I'll yes, the word that is. I've gotten that question. Yes, we, I believe that just got released uh, by the college board not too long ago, maybe a week ago, right. that they were gonna offer now a September mm -hmm. administration. So we wanna make sure we're able to provide that with students. Could we prepay that? Could it in, use this year's money to prepay for next? We're working on a contract with college board to do that. Thank you. Sure. AP tests. Now, do the students pay for the AP tests or do we pay for that? So student, generally speaking, students pay for that. However, um, there is a waiver that we can uh, get from the college board economically disadvantaged, uh, for an example, your students are economically disadvantaged. Um, and then we will, we can get half of that from the college board, then the school system picks that up. We get those requests from schools. We've been paying those, at least I know since I've been here five years, that we will pick those up. And when are they going to be administered? Um, well, well, the current, uh, I believe it's May 11th uh, to the 24th, the AP exams. Um, remember, those are a shorter exam, um, about 45 minutes, um, and only covering content up until March. Um, and that will be also open notebook, open book. Um, I don't know if a lot of families know that, but that that is... They've advertised that. That is allowable. they are going to have time to look at it, what they're saying. So then we'll look at the next administration. It's also, it's a proctor problem because, you know, how you know that it's really the student taking it, so. They're also talking a lot about I, cheating, a lot about oh, the impacts of cheating, so. Well, I was reading an article the other day and I, I think we'd be amazed at some of the technology that's out there around test administration today that, um, you know, if they see multiple movements, they can flag your exam. Uh, and then somebody's actually going to watch that. So I think there's some, you know, obviously College Board's been doing this a long time. Right. Test security is, is a big deal. That's a big assessment. Um, well, stay tuned. Okay, great. Thank I have you. a question about your plan. Yes, ma'am. As schools do reopen and allow students back in, what's the plan for the families who don't feel safe sending their child to school yet? Yeah. Don't have an answer have to an that answer. yet. That will con we'll continue to work through that and plan. Um, one of the reasons why we thought it was just so important to make sure that we continue with that online component for education recovery and to continue with the um, hot mobile hotspots is so that families could continue to access learning at home. 
um, that's whether there's a, 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 a surge, another surge, or if we've got a week off or snow or so that there is some continuity that is expected and everybody is used to and teachers are aligning with what's happening in class if we are face to face uh, because the truth of the matter is we will have that yeah. we will have that and we will also have issues with when does my child go to school yeah. are we going to do a day b day a day b day c day a week on a week off so there has to be some consistency there has to be some kind of a natural flow from what happens in the classroom if they are face to face and what happens when they're learning at home online. So we're, we're going to have that um, and we anticipate that but we are at the very beginning stages of our plan now. We've got an overview, a framework, but we don't have the details worked out just yet. Okay. Because I can imagine there's going to be there's going to be fear yep. about going back Absolutely. into a crowd. Not necessarily because a child is scared or sick, but maybe a family member or the news about a possible reoccurrence. So I just didn't know if that was part of the plan. We'll have and to account the family for that. not being penalized for mm -hmm. that. And and part of it, you know, because while attendance is mandatory and we we know that um, you know there's an expectation we broaden the term you know the understanding of attendance and it can absolutely be online um, we'll, we'll have to see how we create our plan and, and try to ensure that that happens i don't know if there's going to be anything that comes out at a later point you know down the line as everybody gets deeper into mm -hmm. their plans from msde with regard to that kind of thing i cannot imagine that uh, the governor or the State Department wouldn't um, expect that we're going to have some of that. Yeah. The obverse okay. will also occur. Somebody sending their child that's sick. And, and, and we all know at this point, you don't have to ha appear sick that's to right. carry the virus. So There's nothing we can do about exactly. that. Exactly. Well, something a part of the point. CARES Act that I understood the county was uh, looking at was having the um, scanners, the thermal scanners, the temperature scanners, mm -hmm. it may be helpful to have them at the schools if hopefully, you know, we can access some of we, those funds. Yeah. That yeah. would be quite an undertaking. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah. We do have them at the schools now, but that's just for the limited staff that are going into buildings. When okay. we've, If we've got, you know, hundreds of kids that are going to be going through schools, there would have to be another. Um, and the, the other, I think it came up, um, uh, this past week, um, the availability of them Correct. is, um, hard to is get. an also issue. Also a need for certification in order to use them and declare that they're effective. There's, this is uh, for restaurants that they're going to be using it for average. Well, I, was, I went through Atlanta Airport back in, in March and they had, they had the, big, the big door and everybody had to walk through that. So they scan the temperature on everyone. I, I can tell you it's been many years, but I've been to China years ago and everybody had to do the same thing. You walk yeah. through and, and it, your temperature. That was really an x-ray machine. They wanted to see if you were carrying contraband. The other thing is on the, on the timing of, it's just a lot to do. This is going to be a busy summer. But I'm thinking if we end up doing, you know, A-B days, then we got to worry, the parents have to worry about babysitters right. and absolutely. how they affect their jobs That's and the huge. teachers too with their children. Uh, uh, it's absolutely. Lot. Because yeah. the daycare work, you know, daycare Obviously providers are going to get inundated with this if we don't go back to, we don't go back to school, but yet parents get to go back to, to work. To, yeah. So we're going to have daycare workers that are going to be, you know, acting as paraprofessionals or teachers for that matter. So it's, it's uh, it, definitely... It, it, that yes, now, and, quandary. you know, my staff is, is, is pretty typical of me this time of year telling everybody we have about 116 days until school starts um, from today. If you think about what we're going to get ready to do, we have about, a, about two months to redesign education in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. That's exactly what we're getting ready to do. And the buses, <laughs> oof, this is a big thing. Well, you know, I mean, safety is going to be the priority, but Queen Anne's County does not have the resources, daycare resources, the facilities that, that in this county if we go A, B. I mean, that would be not that w that's a decision, but it has to be a concern when we do this. It is a concern. Um, and yes. like I said, 
a week on, a week off, A day, B day, C day. Uh, what we certainly know is not going to work is the AM, PM because that's twice the uh, transportation and we certainly can't do that. So we've got some ideas to look at and, and we, you know, in our executive team, I call it role play. We just have to role play it all the way through to the end. You know, what could possibly happen? So there's a lot of planning that's going to have to happen. But all of those things that you're bringing up are absolutely factors. Because even our teachers are parents, but yeah, they're right. working parents just like they're working parents just yes. like our other parents yes. that's working outside that educational system. They all going to have the same issues. Yes, that's right. Well, I don't want to see those retirees retire. <laughs> Okay. Mr. Pete. Okay, is that? Can, is, are, I'm not sure if you. Could I go back just, yes, just really quickly? If you would just slip back to slide um, 16. Um, there we go, that one. Uh, I want to be sure that I bring that up because this is going to be an action item on today's agenda. Okay. Agenda. We made the amendment for this. Uh, today at our superintendent's meeting, there was some further clarification uh, that happened with regard to the waiver request that we approved last week right. or the last board meeting. So last time we talked about a waiver for April 28th, um, primary election day. We, we've changed that to June 2nd primary election day and so i have given each of you a, a draft of the letter that um, will go to msde changing that day so the five days we're going to continue we're going to request three days for snow days you already approved that may 25th you approved that and now we're changing the april 28th to june 2nd okay. which is our action item later on mm -hmm. okay you have on there something about funding, Mr. Polisky? Yes, ma'am. Yep. So uh, we just wanted to give a quick update. The information that you see there, um, you know, it, it still exists. In red, you may not be able to see it very clearly, but all it says is that that Queen Anne's County, um, that fund that came from CARES dollars for the county, uh, the public school system is not privy to use those dollars. So we'll be using the dollars that we have gotten for the um, education relief um, part of it, but not the dollars from the county. So I just wanted to be sure that you had that update. Keeping that themselves. They are using that for um, items directly related to COVID expenses that they've had. I haven't seen everybody's plan, but I'm going based on the... We don't have any expenses. Oh, yes, we do. Um, but we were not um, permitted to use those dollars. And we are going to, just like I said, we're going to use the other dollars that we get from the state um, for our expenses. Was that the county decision or was that how they a tag they Either came decision. with? Well, um, I guess we'd have to watch the meeting to find out. Perhaps. You know, we, we've, we've been um, sort of back and forth on it a little bit, but the bottom line is that we were not able to put in dollars for it. It did go in on May 1st as they planned, but we'll be using the dollars that we get from the education piece of it. I get it. Okay. okay. And I think I'm going to flip you back. Uh, there we go. Keep going. And uh, I think you pretty much finished your Tiger yeah. teams. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Is that decision universal amongst the counties in the state? Well, I can tell you, I don't know how it ended up, but I can tell you that a few school districts were contacted by their local government and they were asked to, to submit to the plan. I um, had, uh, you know, because I take part in the calls for our county, I did learn about the funds that were available. I asked about it and I was given a letter that everybody else got that told what the uses for the funds could be. But when it all came out in the wash, we were not able to take advantage of, of the county dollars. The dollars that we can take advantage of are the ones that you see right in front of you, the elementary, secondary school emergency relief dollars. The, the amount that you saw is only half. Correct. And I think we should submit the costs that we got directly related to uh, COVID-19 and ask the county to help 
pay for that? You know that we have done that already, right? So we have been so yes. so we have been in contact with the county. I mentioned this last time. We've been in contact with the county and I was initially of the understanding that we could possibly use those dollars as I listed on that last slide for technology devices those kinds of things and after that board meeting we learned that we could not so Mr. Fister absolutely has been in contact with the county and they submitted plans for other agencies I believe that the thinking is because the other agencies don't have access to these dollars as we do for elementary and secondary schools that the expectation is for us to um, use those funds rather than county funds Okay. I'm not going to evaluate it right, wrong, good, bad, or indifferent. It is what it is. and But I wanted to be clear, we asked for those funds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Dr. Kane, this, these items that we, these are specific things that we can spend it on, but we cannot spend it on what we, the technology piece. Of. This is a different bucket right. of CARES I mean, funds. So specific of what we can do, and that is not included in there, so... So reimbursements, yes, we can submit for reimbursements. The majority, the vast majority of our dollars are going to likely go to recovery ed. That last bullet that says supplies and services related to cleaning and sanitizing, yeah. some are learning. If our technology mobile hotspots are part of that then you know we're going to ask for that as well okay. the state superintendent has access to a you know a pot of dollars that comes from care and she is also asking districts about their need for devices okay. um, and so because we're one-to-one -one in the grades that we choose to be we're okay in that area but the question became can we use those dollars for uh, the mobile hotspots and those kinds of things They're and devices they are devices they they absolutely are and, and I believe that she's okay with that okay. so as soon as she gets her documentation sent out to the school districts we will certainly be submitting um, for that Great. Mm -hmm. and because we've distributed to more children do we need to replenish our extras should we have our break? our devices like there's always a backup for one of the Chromebooks that goes yeah. down yeah have we depleted our backup no, so. not to my understanding. And, okay. and remember, the other thing, when we've gone into phase two of this, the, the, our devices now are of, of a higher quality. Okay. So they're, we're not seeing, like with the prior... Keys uh, popping off. Keys and that popping kind of off. Thing. So they're holding up a, a lot longer. Okay. Is this, is this fund a, a dollar amount or just what you submit to it and then we get reimbursed if they, it's reimbursable? So this one was initially $750,000 for Queen Anne's County. They had to go back and recalculate those dollars um, because they left one school uh, school district out. And so we're a little less than that. We're somewhere around 735, 738, right around there. So we'll still have access to that amount of money. In addition to whatever Dr. Salmon um, offers. I'm not sure we what have that 730, will be. 38, whatever. And then hopefully some other things we can be, get reimbursed for for this thing. Correct. And, we will and can that float into it. both both years after June the 30th? Can it go into this year and next year? Oh yeah, we can okay. use it after June the 30th. Mm -hmm. I, I'm right on that, right, Mr. Fister? Yes, yep, because it's over the summer. Yeah. So I I've been fielding emails as we're having our meeting, and there is a question: How uh, can we clarify how CTE students are to compete their hours and get their certifications, and what happens with next year? Yeah, that's a really good question. So a really it, it really depends upon the certification area. So for an example, in cosmetology, they've allowed some online components as well to that. Um, there's some other guidance from MSDE um, that we're really just trying to figure out, like from the certification side, because there's, there's really, there's two components. There's a practical side to that, and it really depends on the CTE program. Uh, Mr. Talley's been working with both of our high school principals. Um, in fact, was just dealing with the fire academy students and certification the other day and trying to figure that out. Um, the gentleman, when we went through Queen Anne's County High School and they were building that beautiful door, did they get to complete their door? I mean, that was beautiful. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> And, and that's been the challenging side of, of CTE because there's such a, there's a classroom the component, and there is it's it's very hands on. I was just 
You keep your fact, virtual I, academy and learn how to bricklay. And I was reading something the other day where the CARES money can be used for CTE in, in some of those supply areas. So um, it's, it's very specific from nursing to cosmetology. Um, so Mr. Talley is going to work with both of our high schools um, and, and our students to make sure. Now as we go into next year, I, I don't know yet what that's going to look like, um, but I know there's different and I, and I don't have it with me and I apologize, but there are different components for different certification areas on what their MSDE is, is recommending and allowing. Okay. And I would just encourage that parent, please talk to their, their, uh, their either their school counselor teacher, um, which is directly connected with Mr. Tolley, who's overseeing that. And, and MSDE is not giving us any kind of guidelines. There, there are some guidelines uh, as it pertains to CTE, um, specific to, again, it's not blanket for learning. every certification area. There are okay. different components. Like the cosmetology has an online component that they're allowing for the student to take in order to take the test. In welding, they don't have that, that option. So it's, it's really by certification area. But please have that parent, please direct them to reach out to Mr. Tully, reach out to uh, us, the okay. school, and um, we'll, we'll do everything we can to help them out. How about the ones on the intern program where maybe their businesses aren't working? They're really imposed. Mm -hmm. Well, even if they are working, are they allowed to attend since school is not in session? Well, we, the ones that were mechanics, mechanics are essential, essential so they're allowed. But our students our should students not be in allowed. school. Yeah. So, well, I, I know that we, and it, perhaps not part of the um, internship, the apprenticeship program, but we mm -hmm. do have students who are working. Um, yeah, so it depends on where they're working. but. So if they're working with their apprenticeship program, right? Are, are we letting them do that? Um, I don't know that we have students working with their apprenticeship program, but I know that we have students that are working, which sure. is what I was yeah, I know yeah. they do, making a point of. Could those, could those hours? But, but I'm just wondering what we're doing with those kids. That's, that's half, their, half their semester. Uh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll certainly follow up on that with Mr. Tully. I'll be, I can sure. report on the CTE side the next time that we meet. Okay, hey, thanks. Sure. And hopefully the students have reached out to find out from their teachers. All right, is that the end of the slide, sir? That's okay. more on the operation side okay. of, of meals. Yep. Just, uh, we've got about 93,000 meals served as of today. Um, just wanted to make sure that you had the update on that. Does everyone have the report? How Mr. long do we do, we do that, just till schools that are? I'm just interested I, in how I long I have my job. I, I, I know. So, you know, that is part of the summer meals under that guidance. Yeah. And um, so we'll, we'll continue as long as we get um, or are able to do that. That's the same question that superintendents are asking. So we're not seeing this ending. Um, and the guidance has not been very... Um, clear you know in some aspects with regard to what school districts are going to get reimbursed for with some of those meals because if you recall in the beginning of this the directive was feed everybody and when we went to the three meals and a snack feed everybody that third meal and a snack and don't worry about it if uh, usde doesn't pay you back the state will pay you back now the guy is a bit different so luckily and i just i thanked mr pender and uh miss k because where I, while i was drilling feed everybody feed everybody i don't care how long it takes just feed everybody uh they followed the guidance and we are not stuck in that situation where we're not sure if we're going to get reimbursed for that third meal and a snack so uh, thank goodness for them because you know things changed but we'll, we're, we're doing okay and we're going to continue to feed and until you know somebody says not to age 2 to 18 all the yep. way through the summer is yep. that wow salmon but have we been it's a summer program as well and that we're under those guidelines for summer and feeding. are those from monday through friday uh, monday through friday S meals? same same meals just like and we're it's doing not just farm students then through May oh, because 7th. we have farms and and others right 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 we're doing everyone right Did but the the farms one was initially the Initial. directive for the three meals and a snack right so 50 percent or more um but we wanted to do that for everybody so and well, i know miss k uh, searched for all kinds of grants that she could do and each and time she, she did is, yeah. some of the rules would change and we'd make we keep track of it she was great about keeping track of it to get the money but i'm wondering past the school year if that Continues. We go into the summer because it's part of the summer feeding. Mm -hmm. So we can go into the summer. What it looks like after that, I, I don't know. 
so we'll continue to feed. But we're not making any uh, policies that aren't state or federal approved to get reimbursed on. We're not making any policies? Well, in other words, we're not doing three meals or four meals. We're not doing something above what the state and federal government's telling us to do that they will reimburse us for, are we? We should be in good shape. Um, at the, what was said to superintendents by Dr. Salmon is if you don't get reimbursed, if USE says, nope, we're not paying for that, she said that she would. I'm not so sure that she'll be able to fund that and the devices. So, you know, we're, we're being very careful right now. We're, we're in good shape right now. So you, I'm, I'm not When you say in good shape, are we out of, I mean, are we out of pocket? Do we, have we gotten any reimbursement yet? I don't know. Have we? So the most we'll be out is one month's payment. No, what I'm saying, if, if somebody didn't do what they said, they were, not us, so a funding source. That's what the grants are for that Ms. K is applying for. So we should be okay. So even if, if somebody says we're not going to fund all of your sites, your non-Title I sites, so let's say that. Um, then we still should be okay because we've gotten some funding or we're getting ideas for funding from other sources. So, I, again, I am not concerned uh, that we're going to be left holding the bag. Uh, if we get to a place where that's becoming concerned, then we'll let you know. Okay. Because I just wouldn't want to get, what, what are we spending in a month for feeding? Do we, is, that, is there a general number? And if you don't, I, I can understand. Or send your, ba your packet, sir. There's a packet that you just got from, just received it's from got, Mr. It's Pender. got a number in there? At there, well, the average number of students of 560 daily, weekly 2,800, and to date through May 7th, served 92,718 meals. I, know what it I, under, costs, I, understand, I understand, but my question was, out of 92,718, are they costing us $5 a piece? Well, that is a good question. I mean, just, just make sure we're not, I can see it, we got a tough budget to look sure. at, and we'll, we don't we'll need another hundred or $200,000, okay. something else. Yeah, there's no money on here. Thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Smith. Got some great pictures of everybody that's putting stuff out. Thank God for them. If Dr. Salmon's attitude means anything, she led off her press conference with the amount of food that had been distributed and sounded very positive that that was a very, very good effort. It, it absolutely is. And it, no indication know, that it million. was to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> we can't. No, nope. we can't. If we have, this is too important. All right, any, any other questions? Hearing none, can we, can we have a break? Can we have a 10 minute break, Mr. Jeff, is that okay? Thank you so much, Ladies Mr. Gentlemen, Mr. Pulinski. Thank you. Yes, Welcome, appreciate Dr. it. King. And we are back, thank you very much. Next item, uh, we have our current action items, 7.01 Human Resources Report. Is that anything else to report, Mrs. Bass? Okay, any other questions, comments on the HR report? Do I have a motion to approve the HR report as discussed in closed session? As amended? Mm -hmm. Approved as discussed? Mm -hmm. Dr. Kane? Right. Yes. Okay, got it. Motion? Second. A motion and a second. second? Second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to approve the human resources as discussed in closed session. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you, Mrs. Bass. We'll leave us now. Mr. Pinder will come in. So we have only 10 people in our room. Thank you. Have a good evening. Drive safe. Thank you, Ms. Bass. Uh, the substitute driver report, there was none. 7.02, Mr. Pinder will now come in and discuss the new bus purchase. Good evening, sir. Good evening, President Harper, board members, Dr. Kane. My name is Sid that Pinder. ten in a bed? <laughs> and that's all. So, so they say. One fell out. Oh, monkey's that's jumping on the bed. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> approval for new bus yes. 2021 school year. Yes. I am uh, seeking approval tonight for uh, Miss Norma Jean Nickens to purchase a new bus for the 2021 20, school year to replace bus 6606, which is 15 years old. Um, so that bus has met the age that it can legally be on the road um, in the state of Maryland. So we're looking to have that approved tonight um, so she can proceed with that purchase. What uh, budget is this coming out of, 2020 or 2021? It will come out of 2021. And that it comes along with a new PVA, as you know. 
Six. And have we accounted for this? Yes. We budget for about six or seven per year. Oh, we, right. we, we look out and align it with when they expire. So if you look at the last two digits of the bus, that is the year it went into um, okay. service. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I call for the motion uh, to approve the new bus purchase for the school year 2021. Driver's name, Norma Jean Nickens, uh, to replace bus 6606. Motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Any questions, questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to approve the new bus purchase school year 2021 for Norma Jean, Jean, Jean Nickel, Nickens for a new bus to replace 6606. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. <clears throat> the ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very much. We now have the text, textbook adoptions and the novels, grades 6 through 12, 7.03. Madam President, <coughs> Superintendent recommends uh, 7.03 action item, textbook adoption novels in grades six through 12, and as well as algebra and math eight. Um, per our last board meeting, uh, we've extended the 30, we extended it uh, another 30 days for public comment. It has also been on our website for that amount of time. Uh, to date, we have not received any public comment um, in either one or towards either one of those materials of instruction. We recommend that these items be approved in order to move forward. Any questions for Mr. Yeah, uh, just a question. Uh, how, how do we teach students that speak Spanish how to do math in English? Well, okay, that is a question for another time. Um, that's not about these textbooks adoptions. Oh, it's about these textbooks. If they, uh, if you would wish, I bow to the chair's request. But I'm so, how would we translate these to Spanish for our ELL st ELLA students? So, we provide a lot of support with our EL teachers at our high schools that be able to support our students. Typically, what we find within mathematics with EL students, um, they typically are able to pick that up rather relatively quickly or uh, more quickly rather than on the reading side but the materials do have um, supports um, built within them um, as well i would say the biggest thing is is the support from our english language um, teachers um, that use shelter instruction to be able to support the student um, it, it's being looked after I, absolutely okay I, I, yes sir that answers the question <laughs> yeah i read one of these novels i took it home and read it it was, it was very interesting, and, and for 6 through 12, um, I could understand that. It, this is coming from the Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant. So um, my question is, we're still doing online learning. I mean, these books are just going to sit in the libraries until such a time. That's a shame. Well, well, I don't know, because remember, we sent novels home with students. Um, so students are still okay. reading. Okay, good. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll continue to, to mm -hmm. do that. So since uh, they are two separate um, amounts of money, we'll do two separate motions. Um, I need a motion to accept. Oh, I'm sorry. Any more questions or comments? I apologize. Is this members. for both sets of books or just algebra? Um, this is a, the English language eight. arts, and then this is the math eight and algebra one. We're going to do two separate motions okay. because no. it's two separate dollars amounts and places of funding. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Okay. So I need a motion to accept uh, the new novels in the secondary language arts and English courses, fiscal impact of $21,000. Budget source is Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy <coughs> Grant Year 3. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Yeah, I, I guess I misunderstood you. So this is doing the uh, both, not the algebra, but the other one too. This is just in, the in novels, the reading yeah, the one under pride, I had, I know, I know one reviewer had uh, questions about it, and I, I do have some concerns on a little bit about that. Okay. It was a pride. Yes, there was some questions last time, sir, asking if we could Same hear question. from the people who vetted these books, because there was one that was... Sure, and in, in speaking with Mrs. Passon, I know that she mentioned that before. There, I think there was one scene within pride um, that deals with drinking. 
um, and I think there was another uh, partial concern around some language. Um, those were the two things when I'd spoken with her, I think that she had reiterated before that the, that the one individual on the committee um, ha just had a concern about. Again, this would be for sixth grade advanced. Yeah, well, I read purple hibiscus and I would not recommend that for sixth and seventh graders. Um, only because of the content, the, the violence. I, I really wouldn't recommend it for that. Um, I mean, I know they see, you know, video games and do whatever, but sure. this one I would, I would really recommend for eighth grade or higher if I had a say in it. All right, any other questions, comments? Well, um, how is it treated? And is it treated favorably? Is it said this is not good behavior? Or it no, not not at all. I mean, the, the there's something that happens. It's the. I mean, it was vetted through. Some, you know, I, I've everybody here, and they all approved it. Um, no, I think he's asking about when you read the book. Was the violence the issue resolved? Was the issue resolved? How? Was it favorable? Was it, I mean? Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, that's why I think that it should be for eighth grader, eighth graders or older. Um, it, it centers around a family and um, there's domestic violence. And in the end, well, it's, Pur yeah. Purple hibiscus looks like it's recommended for 12th grade. It is. Uh, let me review it here, I've got it. Oh, thank you. I did not see that on there. Th okay, then I'm fine with it. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Twelfth grade. Okay. Uh, English Thank four you for honors and English yes. four. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And the other one that, that you were right on one. The other one. The other one was a problem. Was um, the 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 one that was recently spoken about with among the board was pride. And someone didn't like drinking the drinking. Yeah, there was there was a, a scene in there. It's my understanding that that there's some drinking and then there's also um, the use of some profanity. Um, and I think that individual felt that that wasn't appropriate for a grade six advanced. Let me ask you a question. When this book, because this doesn't happen until some student takes it home and the parent objects to it, because I don't, even though it's been out there and we've done our due diligence as far as letting the community see it, sure. I don't know if they've really looked at it closely enough. If it's for the ones or two that might not be their cup of tea, which some, some of my opinion, did it, does every parent have the right for their student yes. to opt out of this and uh, will be given something else that's yes. to keep them up at grade level if yes. they don't feel it's appropriate? Yes, they'll be given an alternative assignment. And so any of our, any of our novels, for that matter, that, that are being taught, if a parent, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, does not wish to expose their child to that particular novel, the teacher creates an alternative assignment um, that really gets after the same content standards. <coughs> if you're looking for the theme, as an example, you could do that through a different novel. But yes, the parent has the right to opt out, and then the child just has another assignment. And it's something comparable at... Mm -hmm. Keep them up. Yes, the absolutely. Grade level appropriate. Again, the big thing here is teaching the same standards mm -hmm. and then using a different novel uh, to maybe get an author's purpose or, you know, what are the themes within that. Um, so, yes. Can we make the recommendation since two of the people who vetted this both rejected it? Can we recommend that it goes to eighth grade or higher? We, we we can certainly you can we can certainly do that as a uh, as a board you have the ability to be able to do that if you're not comfortable with that would we that can, be make you more comfortable sir well we could take it back to <laughs> mrs and, and mrs passon would be you know she could certainly take a look at it and speaking with her probably you know maybe look at a, a grade eight advanced or even a ninth grade um honors course uh, so yes, that, hey, we all that have, is an option. Yeah, we all have different opinions, so it's not just me, <clears throat> but this has been brought up over a couple meetings, and I brought it up, and if nobody's looked at it, and you know, it's hard to say, okay, who else is gonna look at it? If they haven't looked at it, as long as they have the right to get something else in placement if it's controversial enough for them. That's absolutely. I don't mean every because anything can be controversial to somebody, but you know, if it is, I just would want to make sure that is a way that a parent it feels strongly that it's not right because you know there's a lot of things and people don't react until it happens to them. So all of a sudden, this book's going to be given out. It's going to go home, and then there's hopefully not an uproar. But if there is, there is a mechanism that they can. Not there have. is a there is a built-in process that allows for that 
parent choice if, if they choose to. So yes, even though uh, if you chose to approve it today and there was an individual parent that realized later, I don't want my son or daughter, mm -hmm. they have the right to the alternative assignment. Okay. So they would not have to read it. They would not be forced to read it. Then what is your recommendation, Mr. Smith? Do you want to amend that? I, I, no, I have, I have, you know, I've spoken my piece on what I think about, I don't agree with this right now, but it, it, it's been it's been out for read, it's been sitting over there, it's been put on as I asked on uh, electronically so people could look at it. You've had no response to it. No, sir. You're telling me that if somebody has this book and has takes offense or has a problem with it, the parent can opt out and something else will be given yes. to them appropriately for the grade. Yes. Okay. You know, it is what, it, you know. Thank you. I have one recommendation though. If I don't remember, and I remember a lot about my child coming up through the grades, I don't ever be, remember being told that if I had a problem with the book to talk to the teacher. So maybe we just need to advertise that, as, especially, I mean, in the elementary schools. So parents have that understanding. I just recommend that. So I never got that word. Sure. I'm going to have Ms. Passon make sure that she reiterates that to her. Yeah. And the teachers do that. As long as the teachers hopefully, know that right. they would. And, and hopefully, usually when there's some kind of, you know, I'm thinking secondary, which is this applies, there's some kind of course syllabi that talks about expectations. Uh, I would think it would be there. Uh, but I know that's place. always fine print. I, but that's I, a good place to have it. Sure. Sure. I'll, I'll make sure I make a note of that. Thank you. Yes. All right. Uh, no other questions or comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the new novels and secondary English language arts and English courses. Fiscal dollar amount $21,000. Budget source is Striving Readers Comprehensive Literary, Literacy Grant Year 3. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. The second, the textbook review for Math 8 and Algebra 1. Uh, can I have a motion to accept Math 8 and Algebra 1? Um, contract period July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2026. Fiscal impact amount of $189,623 coming from the FY 2020 capital budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments, discussion about these? Do we have any feedback from the community, sir? No, ma'am. That was equally at, at uh, Mr. Smith's request. Um, also, the math aid and algebra were posted on our website as well. Okay, and we had no, no concerns with either of them. No, ma'am. The board members, any questions or comments about these? Gift and talent, okay. Hearing no other discussion, I call for the vote on the motion to accept math eight and algebra one. The contract period July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2026. The fiscal impact amount of $189,623 for the FY 2020 capital budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, sir. You're welcome. Uh, we now have policies. Yes. Uh, Madam. Uh, President, Superintendent recommends action item 7.04, policies and final read uh, for the Title IX um, policy 5.28 and regulation 528.1 and school district calendar policy number 647 and regulation 6471. Uh, to date, we have not received any public comment on either one of those uh, policies. However, based upon uh, our last discussion uh, in the regulation, which is in section four guidelines, uh, school year, which is A, uh, subsection three, uh, Captain Kelly did make uh, a comment of adding elementary school. We have done that. We've had it elementary school. Again, it's just divided into trimesters on a 180 day calendar. Uh, those are not equal 60, 60, 60 because of parent conferences, but we did allow that language to your comment, Captain. You're Kelly. talking about the school, school year calendar policy. Um, I would like yes, to. I mean the school year calendar policy, but specifically where Captain Kelly's recommendation was, we did make the change in the regulation in um, section four guidelines under a school year subsection three, 
the last sentence there reads, elementary schools will be divided into three grading terms or trimesters over the course of a 180 day requirement. Captain Kelly noting that we did not specifically say elementary school. Um, so we had, we had amended that. Thank you. So uh, do I have a motion to accept the school year calendar policy 647 and the school year calendar regulation 647.1? Uh, so moved. I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments, discussion on this motion? Any questions about this calendar policy? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the school year calendar policy 647 and the school year calendar regulation 6471. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Uh, Title nine. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if I'm supposed to sign this or not. I'll let Mrs. Wright change let, that. You're welcome. Let, yeah, absolutely. It's good um, point. It's good. The Title IX, do I have a, a motion to accept the Title IX policy number 528 and Title IX regulation number 528.1? So moved. So, do I have a second? Second. I have, I have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments, discussion about Title IX policy? And please thank uh, Ms. Sandrews. I assume she put all this in the format and the spelling. I appreciate it. It is a uh, it is Arduous a collaborative of, effort between uh, who gets assigned and then yes she is our uh, she's our she's my last stop uh, to make sure that everything gets proofread and and it is um, and just to say the one thing about this is that you know when we're in track changes and I know it's it it's more complex than it than it is it, I, and you're part of that Mrs Harper yeah. so thank you for recognizing her I am and not her near as much. Work as these ladies that put this together and make this right. Um, so I truly appreciate their work. Thank you, I'll make sure I reiterate that to her. So no questions or comments about the Title IX policy? No discussion? Okay, I call for the vote on the motion to accept uh, policy nine, I mean, excuse me, Title IX policy 528 and Title IX regulation 528.1. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no, the ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Mr. Pender. Number Ted in the bed. Come on over. We have uh, contracts for approval, 7.05. Yes, ma'am. I'm uh, seeking approval. We have about eight contracts tonight um, from various different funding sources. Um, the first one I'm seeking is... Sir, let me go ahead and make the motion, and then we can have the discussion. Sure. How about we do that? Yes, ma'am. Love it. I need a motion to accept the partial VCT replace flooring replacement at Kennelon High School. Contract is with Continental Flooring Company. Fiscal dollar amount of $83,830 coming from the FY 2020 Comprehensive Building Assessment. Do I have a motion? I moved. Do I have a second? Second. Questions, comments, discussion? Now, Mr. Pender. Yes. Um, this area was identified in our comprehensive building assessment uh, that was performed also in the um, Maryland Public School Construction um, uh, survey that they do. Um, VCT has about a 20, 25 year life cycle. Um, you know, we are past that right now. And this money um, was allotted in the capital for FY20. Um, and this will help us replace the cafeteria, basically from the gymnasium to the cafeteria, the whole entire first floor. Um, same thing we are doing at Graysonville Elementary School. So, how much uh, did we budget this from the beginning? This one was about a hundred thousand, so it came in lower than what we had. Okay, that is fantastic. So, I, I will say this: all the, the ones that we are bringing tonight came in either on budget or under budget. Okay. So, how many bids? Um, this is through a intergovernmental okay. uh, purchasing. I know, but so we're allowed to pre-bid. Yes, yes, ma'am. Pre-bid. Uh, any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to, to uh, approve the partial VCT flooring replacement at Kennelon High School, contract with Continental Flooring Company for the fiscal dollar amount of $83,830 for the FY 2020 Comprehensive Building Assessment budget source. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you. Just one thing. Why do we call it partial? I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with the vote. We, we decided to um, take it in two year cycle. Okay. So we wanted to do one this year so we could devote to other capital projects and not swallow it at one time. Thank you. So. 
I'm sorry I didn't ask. That's all right. No, that's, that's, that's a good right. question. Uh, I need a motion to accept uh, the uh, asphalt paving to be done at Churchill Elementary School with a contract with Page Industrial Services Gordian. Uh, to um, overlay the asphalt parking lot area. Fiscal dollar amount $107,238.11. Budget source is FY 2020 Comprehensive Building Assessment. Do I have a motion? So move. I have a second. Second. I have a question. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments, discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Pender. Yes, this is the same thing we did at Sellersville Elementary School last year. Um, we have choosing one school or two schools if we can do each year as you know we've never uh, touched any of the asphalt projects at our schools and they are in desperate need of repair so um, this one also came in under budget um, and we will also be replacing the milling and overlaying the uh, playground area where the blacktop is for the basketball areas and those so that is included just to in clarify this. it says asphalt parking areas bus loop blacktop playing areas at churchill elementary so all that needs to be done. Yes. And, and we, we had do budget the black, when we do the blacktop, are we doing curb and gutter or is it all right? The curb and gutter is fine. We take a look at that. We do have some drainage issues at Churchill. For some reason, when you pull in there, they put this culvert right at the main entrance that really needs some work done to it. The um, bus, bus, bus entrance or the... On the bus entrance. Across from the store. Yep, right there. So that is included in here. You know, once we get in there, you may see a small change order based upon that. But um, last year when we did uh, Sullivan Elementary School, we identified some curb areas and also some uh, points that were saturated with water that uh, we took care of. And now we have the proper drainage there. It's working pretty well. So they, they're going to take it down enough and rebuild it back up yep, where it will gonna hopefully mill, drain. Yep, they're going to mill it and then put a correct... Uh, you know, uh, percentage of decline in there. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the asp asphalt paving at the Churchill Elementary School with the Page Industrial Services Gordian Company. Fiscal amount of $107,238.11. Budget source FY 2020 Comprehensive Building Assessment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. This is right from your office. That is five yeses. Thank you. Security camera installation. Do I have a motion to accept security camera installation at Ken Allen High School? Approve the contract with Skyline Technology Solutions, LLC. Fiscal impact amount of $70,745.30. Budget source, 67000 from IAC School Safety Grant Program. $3,745.30 from the FY 2020 capital security. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments, discussion? Mr. Pender. Yes, President Harper. On uh, this one in the next uh, two or three, we, I wrote a grant and we were able to secure uh, grant funding um, to go ahead with some of these. So we do not have to use as much capital funding out of our security uh, line item. So for... Um, Bless you. If you recall, all schools in the state of Maryland were required to do a security assessment. And once we did that, we knew we had some areas that were not covered with cameras. And, you know, we identified some of those. Um, these will get the, them caught up with the rest of the schools. We're looking to install 14 uh, security cameras um, uh, at Ken Allen High School um, on the first floor and then eight on the second floor. Um, that will help us utilize the whole entire school within that frame there. Um, it is piggybacking on the Carroll County Public Network um, uh, purchase contract that we've done for many years now, and a lot of school systems use that. So these will be the same cameras, the same system, the same server that we have throughout all of our schools. Okay. Any questions, comments, discussion? So is it, this, this is basically Ken Island, Sellersville Elementary, Centerville Middle, and for those three? Yes, sir. You want to just loop them all together, or is that not possible? They're at different dollar amounts, sir. Okay. So I have to do them separately. Apologize. Yeah. It's the same company installing them all? Yes, sir. Is that the same company that's installing the next three? Yes. Yes. Makes sense. We have two of these, one for 
I've noticed two contracts for Kent Island High School. You're going to see they're coming from different funding sources. Okay. And the the three that we're going over now have a substantial amount of grant funding with them. And the last two you're going to see deal with security uh, capital from FY20. Okay, thanks. And you have to remember, since we changed the threshold uh, to $25,000, to has to be brought before the board. And since they're from different funded sources, each one of them require a separate vote. That's fine. Just, I'm just clarifying just for everyone. Why. Sorry, it's monotonous, and but it is necessary. So hearing no other discussion, I call for the vote on the security camera installation at Ken Allen High School with a contract with Skyline Technology Solutions, LLC. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $70,745.30. Budget source, $67,000 from IAC School Safety Grant Program and $3,745.30 from the FY 2020 Capital Security fund. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Good. Security camera installation. At, I have a motion to accept the security camera installation at Southersville Elementary School. Contract with Skyline Technology Solutions LLC. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $32,302.96. Budget source of $15,000 from the IAC School Safety Grant Program and $17,302.96 from the FY 2020 capital security line item. Would I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments, discussion? Mr. Pender. Y yes, President Harper. This will just be adding 11 security cameras. Again, um, same procedures. Uh, we had our security assessment identified those areas. Same contract, uh, CCPN cooperative purchasing uh, contract. And again, we were able to get 15,000 in grant opportunities for this. So we're only using 17,000 from capital. How much did we budget for that though, sir? Do you remember? It's pretty, it's on. It's on co court, okay. yeah. what was budgeted yes. in 2020? Yes. Okay. Sid, on these cameras, can they be looked at remotely? I know the school has ability to look at them interior. Can you look at them or God forbid something happens, the sheriff's department or somebody that needed to do an assessment? So, yes, we are very fortunate. Uh, if, when we started this process about, I don't know, five or six years ago, there was a different system in every school. And in order to view it, you had to go into the server room to actually view the cameras. Um, all of these cameras are digital IP based. I can pull up my laptop anywhere that I have internet connection and view them. And we also are, it's either the second or third um, county school system uh, in the state to be on MVU. Um, and what MVU is, when you're basically looking at the, uh, the Bay Bridge, the state highway cameras, those types of things, uh, there's different levels. So if we were to go into a situation, we have it set up now um, so that the Sheriff's Department or um, emergency services can tap into our camera system and view what is going on and get real life live information so we have that set up at Queen Anne's County High School, and we're, we've renumbered all the cameras to make sure they're in chronological or they're in order going around so it flows better. So I would say probably when we get done with these last three schools, they will all be on there. Um, we actually had training set up for the Sheriff's Department um, and DES, and then we had to shut down for um, COVID-19. But uh, DES has the same system. So, like I said, we we're one of the second or third counties in the state to, to get that. So, if we had an incident or a fire or something, the, the, the service departments could see it mm -hmm. and you yep. can find it, whatever. Okay. Different levels of, of Understand. viewing it. So, That's good. not anybody can just. No, no, no. I don't want anybody. I'm yep. talking about people that need to see it. Yep. What about the firewall so that we don't get somebody? be able to get in and view all these schools and see which one uh... you 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 cannot get in there um, when I say that um, this is um, dealing with the Maryland State Police um, also one of their agencies coordinates this um, over across the bridge uh, the Naval Academy um, Camden Yards um, a lot of the larger um, security places have this also so it's not fire, so it has a firewall yes, that's does, impenetrable sir. to somebody other than the CIA or some you it's, know, yes it, foreign government or something. It, it's sophisticated. There, it is. Thank you. Way above my knowledge.
Hearing no other discussion, I call for a vote on the security camera installation, Southersville Elementary School with the Skyline Technology Solutions, LLC. Uh, fiscal impact of $32,302.96. Budget source, $15,000 from the IAC School Safety Grant. $17,302.96 from the FY 2020 Capital Security Line item. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Security cam I have a may I have a motion to accept the security camera installation at Centerville Middle School contract with Skyline Technology Solutions fiscal amp impact dollar amount of $38,584.25 budget source $34,000 from the IAC school safety grant program $4,584.25 from the FY 2020 capital security line item uh, do I have a motion so move. I have second. a second. I have a motion and second. Any questions, comments, discussion? Mr. No. Pinder. When, when um, <clears throat> maybe Sid was going to talk about this, but when we have part of it paid for by a grant, and in this case a large part, and then the smaller part from our capital budget, we're only using the small part when we compare it to what we budgeted. So we have an over, we have an over, we have a credit that exists whenever these grants supplant a uh, a budget item what do we wh where's the uh, it's a form of capital budget lapsation if you would uh, so we have extra capital money do we just keep that we for have unexpected stuff uh, no we have a um, many many identified areas um, like single point entry um, when you go into a school we don't want you to just be able to go left right anywhere you want you want to be funneled in we um, have written grants for those you, you'll see those coming up to you we also have um, where we really need to go back and rekey our schools um, okay so what basically so there's a list yes what basically you're saying is that there's a list of not high priority but really one of priorities mm -hmm. And the more grants we get, the more money that's available to do those. Yes, okay? sir. You're correct. I don't want anybody to get the impression that we got money floating around that doesn't have any attention. No. Yes, sir. That's all I got to say. You didn't get a chance to talk. Uh, uh, just seeking approval for the camera installation at Center of Middle School. Same procedures we follow with the other two schools. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Discussion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on uh, to allow the security camera installation at Centerville Middle School, Centerville Middle School, Skyline Technology Solutions LLC, fiscal impact dollar amount of thirty-eight thousand five hundred eighty-four dollars and twenty-five cents. Budget source thirty-four thousand dollars from IAC School Safety Grant Program, four thousand five hundred eighty-four dollars and twenty-five cents from the FY twenty twenty capital security line item. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Do I have a motion to accept the security camera installation Cannon High School Stadium with Skyline Technology Solutions LLC, the fiscal impact dollar amount of $32,864.55. Budget source, the FY 2020 capital security line item. Do I have a motion? So move a second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments, discussion? Mr. Pender. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this was identified in our uh, security assessment um, as not having any kind of surveillance equipment located uh, in the stadium um, at Ken Allen High School. This will help us complete that whole entire school by having the uh, proper uh, surveillance equipment out there. Is this security system tied in just like all the rest? that somebody can see what's going yes, on sir. around the clock. Okay. It'll be on MVO. We just ran um, the, the wiring and all last year to get out there to have um, Wi-Fi. So this will enable us to finish up that project out there. Because under the bleachers? So you'll have them on the bleachers. You'll have cameras on the field. You'll have cameras on the concession Stands. stand. Um, and then we also have the uh, Pixelot system that will be, once we go back to um, Athletics will be able to televise any of our games uh, anywhere anybody has internet. So, 
So we're seeking approval for that. Any questions or comments? Is that what the fan stand is up where they broadcast from? Is that called the fan yeah. stand? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the security camera installation at the Ken Allen High School Stadium with Skyline Technology Solutions, LLC, fiscal dollar amount of $32,864.55, budget source FY 2020 capital security line item. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. I need a motion to accept the security camera installation at the Queen Anne's County High School Stadium. Contract with Skyline Technology Solutions, LLC. Fiscal impact amount of $29,681.69. The budget source of FY 2020 capital security line item. I have a motion. So moved. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments, discussion? Mr. Pender. Yes, uh, President Why Harper. is this one less than the other? The uh, distance that we're traveling gotcha. from the actual school to the stadium is shorter. And how much was the budget for these? Right on budget for these. Okay. We have a pretty good uh, no, uh, yeah, no. formula okay. for this. We've okay. done it quite a bit. So just seeking the same approval that we were doing at Ken Allen High School, at Queen Anne's County High School, um, this will give us total coverage of Queen Anne's County High School. Okay. Do you have, do you have uh, camera uh, throughout those portables out there, too? Yes, you do? we do. Okay. They're so close to the stadium now. Yep. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the security camera installation at Queen Anne's County High School Stadium. Contract with Skyline Technology Solutions, LLC. Fiscal dollar impact of $29,681.69. Budget source is FY 2020 capital security line item. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you, sir. No, another quick thing, not, a pr not dealing with the vote. Um, does that mean that then Queen Anne's County High School now has everything covered? Mm, just yes. like Ken mm -hmm. Thank you. Trying Great. to keep them equal. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I, uh, ask for a motion uh, to accept the contract to uh, for the floor refinishing of the gym stage and dance floor contract with Aegis yes ma'am floor life LLC fiscal dollar impact of fifty seven thousand and ninety four dollars budget source is the FY 2021 operating budget do I have a motion so moved I have a second okay Questions, comments, discussion, Mr. Pender, why is this 2021? So, as you mentioned earlier, anything over $25,000 we now have to bring to the board uh, for approval. We used to do these in individual contracts um, and with the new policy, you group them all into one, which takes us over to $25,000. Okay. This money, um, this is an annual cost that we do every year um, for the traction and the floors. Imagine you have Parks and Rec, our own student athletes, our own phys ed classes, dance classes in there. Um, it's common practice. The only difference this year is I'm coming to you asking you for approval. We are not doing the work and we are not spending the money until after July 1st. But what you'll see is I, I'll have other contracts coming to you. I need approval so that I can line the contractors up because if I'm waiting until July 1st, I'm never going to get them in there. Um, so just to clarify, this is all the gym, stage, and dance floors in all of our 14 schools? Yes, ma'am. And we did have three companies that uh, we got bids Yes, I have from. three. It was too much to put in scan in there, so I have the three. Okay, but just to let here. them know that Aegis, Aegis? Yes, ma'am. Was $57,094. A&L Floors LLC was $62,307. And Performance Floors was $65,271. So Aegis, you know good, better, and different and we've, gets to have the bid. We've done work with them before. And they okay, that was my next University question. University of Maryland and many okay. major colleges. That was my next question. Have we had them here before and they did a, 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 a job? Yeah, okay, a good job. Is this simply just an annual recoding or do they sand the floors down? And it's an annual recoding. If you look at both high schools, we will be sanding down the stage areas. I don't know if you've seen them lately, but um, they're, they're in major need, need of uh, some tender love and care there. So okay. that will get them up to par with the dance floors that mm -hmm. were sanded down last year and then also the 
um, Ken Allen High School, Queen Anne's County High School uh, main gyms okay. were sanded it down or redone. Uh, technically, it's a safety issue. Yes, sir. <clears throat> And it can only be done in the summer when, you know. Exactly. So once you, once you start that work, I need 72 hours before anybody can go back on them. So once we have fall sports come back, uh, I'm, we're done. You know, it's a, I can't get in there. So when they're recoding, are they also doing repairs to the lines that are down on the floor in the gym? Okay. Yep. So since no one is going to be in these schools now, could we not get them done earlier? We could. I just... You know, I just need approval. We could get them done earlier. Okay. Now, the funding would not be available until July 1st, right. you know, which some contractors are fine with. I have a problem that. with. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the bid for the gym stage dance floor refinishing in all of our schools with Aegis Floor Line LLC. Fiscal dollar impact of $57,094 from the FY 2021 operating budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question. Yes, sir. Ken Allen Elementary School. Uh -huh. uh, there was an architectural report that bounced around, and then I think at one of the meetings you had indicated that the work had begun. Mm -hmm. um, You're talking about Mattapique Elementary. I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah. Um, I went by there and I didn't see any changes. Now maybe it, they they did them, uh, and I don't have a good set of eyes. So they identified four different areas. Um, the first area was the gutters that were installed on that building were undersized. So when the water was coming off of the roof, it was overshooting it and going down. Um, there uh, was about two weeks ago, they installed the gutters um, on there. Um, we also actually just finished up yesterday with a company that um, scanned all of our stormwater management drains <coughs> through there and we did identify some problems that were occurred when construction um, happened that uh, you know were taken care of. I, I will say this, Thursday, if you remember, we had some torrential downpours that evening. Right. Went down there Friday morning, and I did not find anything. No standing water inside the gym. Where? No, no I'm saying oh, there was no. I was going to say no. I didn't see it. I'm like, where did I miss that? No, there was not any standing water. So I think the steps that we're taking, you know, are working. Um, you know, and again, it's all based upon the funding that we have. But just putting the gutters on there seems to have done a major uh, impact on that. But yeah, there, the, there's one place where the gutters go into and inside the building yep. and it empties right down the side of the wall. And we have a contract for that part. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. yep. We're just it's waiting interesting for the that every building we put in, even back as far as Bayside, there's always been a grading issue and some kind of an engineering issue. I don't care what school it is, but there's somewhere. Not since Carly got here now. No, she's, Let's hope. Well, I think it's important to say that we, we get after those when we, we find them. But it, it, it is. This one's taken a little bit of time just because of the funding. But since we have the funding to knock some of these off. I think this one you'll get enough funding. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> I, you, you'll see some much. Now, I'm not going to say that you won't see a little bit of warping or whatever based upon what has initially happened that we have to patch up. But I'm, I'm saying as of friday when we had that torrential downpour it that's was, a good sign it was, it was not only raining but there was a stiff breeze going in one direction yeah the, the camera system was kind of eye-opening to see what the drains look like so we're working on that now good okay. thank you yep. um yes, uh do i have a do i have a motion um for the emergency purchase of verizon jetpack mobile oh, hotspots um uh, for the fiscal impact dollar amount of $34,614.72. Budget source, FY 2020 operating budget and or the CARES Act stimulus funds. Do I have a motion? I move. Moved. My motion is second. Any questions, comments, discussion? Mr. Fister. Thanks Thank for you, joining Ms. us. Thank you, Ms. Harper, board members. Um, this was an emergency purchase as related to the COVID-19. Wanted to bring it to you really for, uh, for information purposes, but you know, certainly uh, approval would go a long way as well. Um, as Mr. Paluski alluded to earlier, these are on order. Um, 
as we discussed earlier, these things are very difficult to find. Uh, some of our initial consultation with uh, Verizon, AT&T, these devices weren't going to be able to be in until July 22nd. So we, Mr. Combs and his group was able to identify um, this company, CT, CTS Mobility, and we were able to secure 300 of these at $115 a piece. So we decided we would go ahead and procure those so we could continue the distance learning for our students. Um, and the total of that, including shipping, was $34,614. And they should be uh, in this week and put them to use next week. I apologize. I did not make that a part of the motion because I did not see a name of a vendor. Who was this with? Because it's not on this. Oh, board. I'm sorry. Yep, you're, you're right. It's CTS Mobility. Okay, I am going to uh, Austin, gonna hand, Texas. I'm going to hand write that on here. Okay. Um. I do have a request for this. Even if it's an emergency, um, we we should be informed that you you know you've got something and you're going to pay for it. I mean, just a recommendation because well, I thought that was the purpose of tonight, but so we're approving after the fact, so. Well, and that's, that's why through our procurement policy, emergency purchases to continue the operations of the school system was one of the things that right. we had put no in. No problem the doing it, but we should be made aware of it. You it? could have sent us all an email and let us know. Right. Okay. It's all that would be, absolutely. I mean, that would be, okay. that would be acceptable. Okay. Does an emergency uh, requisition like this take three votes, four votes, five votes, or just the majority. And, I mean, it's and going it, to get probably And all. like I said, within our policy, because of what the superintendent deems under her purview as an emergency purpose to continue, you know, okay. that's where, that was the auspices under which we purchased these. Now, you have on here and or. So do right. we have the funds in the current operating budget to cover the $34,000? We'll have, yes, we do, because of some of the savings that were incorporated, and I'll talk about that a little bit in my expenditure report that's coming okay. up next. Um, but we're also going to be putting, have a plan to put together to MSDE related to the ESSER funds, as we call them, uh, the 700 You mean plus, the lesser funds? Well, the ESSER funds, 700 plus thousand dollars. So that would be part of our plan, would be to whether we would want to include this. And in, again, it's the second lowest funding from the state because of our Title I population. So even though $700,000 seems like a lot of money, it's not going to go far when it comes to putting in recovery and continuous, continuation of uh, distance learning. So we'll put that all into a plan, you know, almost like we've developed a budget where we'll put uh, what we want to do and we draw a line where $700,000 is or wherever the amount finally uh, amounts to, and we draw a line. And then what we decide that we can fund with this money, we will. And then that that doesn't, uh, we should have some savings left over from utilities uh, and some other things that we'll be presenting to the board later this month. So I'm confident we have the funds available either in either source okay. um, to Any pay for this. questions or comments? So that list, you, you get approved by the board, list of what you're getting. It's not an emergency purchase. Correct. Okay. Uh, yes, if it, if, it, if it deems this. I mean, a $100 purchase obviously doesn't come here, but if there is a contractual purchase of over twenty five dollars Well, it depends on what it, I mean, it could be stipends. You know, it depends on what the plan turns out to be. It's not, we're not writing a $700,000 check to Verizon to provide distance learning or anything like that. If anything rises to the board that requires board approval, we most certainly would bring it to the board for their approval. Okay. <clears throat> the, pur the purchase of these units, do we have any monthly payments after that to, for Wi-Fi access or is this just a one-time payment that's not going to be a this recurring? This is strictly for the devices. Okay, what, what's going to cost us for 300 devices every month? $4,000 a month for those. For the two months that we're continuing to pay for this. Okay, we're going to do this for two months because we're in a, you know, distant learning thing. Yeah. Then we'll come up with a policy or some kind of reimbursement to, if people are still using these things. Or, or however we're going to continue that learning, just like we did for the first hundred that we got them up and running. Uh -huh. We're going to treat it the same way for the data plan to run concurrently with that so that at some point we'll dealing with all 400 at one time. So we have 400. So what's, uh, what's that? How much a month, roughly, a piece? It, it turns out to be about $40 a month for the unlimited data per device. So that's about a little cheaper than what you're, most people are getting. Yeah, because we, I mean, we I think can get gonna, into a state what, contract. The reason with the where deal. I'm going is on this thing is sooner or later we're going to have more and more requests of everybody because you don't have internet service. You get one because I have it. I don't. Correct. This is Mr. why. Mr. I'm, Smith, are you talking to your microphone? I mean, it's just going to be, a, I think at some point we have to have a, a, a policy of where these are going into and how we're going to, you know, recover it because I want to be equitable to everybody. Correct. 
And, and that's all going to be part of the plan that we were just talking about that do up to MSD next week. There is another entity in this county that's also exploring internet in the same areas as we are. And my guess is that we should be able to persuade the county to provide some seed money on this and then try to have a cooperative approach so that was internet. So that was part of what we have been talking about. So we are working with the county. When we talk about Atlantic Broadband, the county is in uh, those conversations as well. And I have stated we cannot provide internet for the county. That is not our role as the school system, but we have to provide access to our ability so that our kids can get it if it's possible. And as a corollary to that, anybody can sign up for the internet using our hotspots. Only yes. if they have ac only if they have access to the only if they have passwords. Correct? Yeah, every every hotspot device has passwords right. in it. Right. So if you live next door, you're not getting into right. my hotspot, okay. right? right? Um, These are not public access right. points. Yeah, not no. like the Wi-Fi's at the schools. And, and we do and, track and those, who we're distributing them to. Right. So we, we yes. absolutely are keeping track so of that. So it's not like going into a cafeteria and anybody that goes in no. there can, okay. Not like going to a Starbucks. I'm not going to a Starbucks. No, that's not what this would be. Nobody. My question is that I would really like to see this paid for with the CARES Act funds because, again, it's it, it the necessity it rose out of this oh, COVID-19. Absolutely. I mean, we can possibly. The initial that, That's cost. correct. That's why we put that in there. But what we have to recognize is that, you know, those funds are limited. And um, we want to make sure that we have a education recovery plan for our students. So these go hand in hand. Um, but, yeah. yes, we that's the plan. Okay. And since the monthly data plans are under the twenty-five thousand dollars threshold, we don't. Ha it doesn't come before us. So yeah, it's, it's a utility asking. cost, correct? But it, we're absorbing that cost. Yes. Okay. And but and I want to reemphasize my concern. I understand buying the hotspots for somebody who does not have one, so they have access to it. And if they're in a certain economic range, I can understand subsidizing some of it. But when you start subsidizing all of them for everybody that's going out then you're picking and choosing winners and losers. And what I'll say is, you have it and you get yours paid by the board and I don't. That's just being a NIMBY, but I'm just telling you what somebody's gonna come up with. Understood. I guess I'm less concerned about that than I am that this is a two month deal and after two months, it's gonna go up unless the contract is sets this for the long term and I don't think it does. But we're also, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to no, go, go, go we're right also there. looking at that. Remember, we had that conversation a little bit earlier that we're looking at extending that so that our kids can access over the summer and into the next year, although we don't know what it's going to look like. Exactly. So, but if we do extend it, then we're, we're even more problem with what he just mentioned. And so our, our point was um, not necessarily, I see where you're coming from, Mr. Smith, but it wasn't about picking and choosing, you get, you don't. Our point was give it to all of our kids who don't have it, who need it. Not um, with regard to uh, you make 60,000 and you make 100,000, so you pay two thirds of it and you pay, you know, we, we weren't looking at that. We were interested in, in people's job situation has changed at this point. Um, so we were looking at extending access so kids could do their work. That's what our goal was. We understand that. But I think the, want, confu right. the, the difficulty uh, um, is uh, continuing that. For we know we can't do it forever, right. but you know, I guess that's, but this is where we are right now. We have to make sure the kids can access their work right now. For Hopefully one, our county is going to, you know, come through with something in areas where there is not um, internet. But for right now, the goal is ensure that kids can do their access. work. But I guess I understand I'm 100% behind help. You know, we're in a certain situation. We need to address it, get over this and get, keep going. But, but we have 500 teachers. You're telling me 18 of them are limited access. Correct. So we're giving them a hotspot and paying for it. Correct. The other 482 were not. 
And it may not be, be that they all did not have it, but had some spotty issues or access problems with it. And we need them to be teaching their kids like I, now. I, 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 am not, I have no problem with that. I'm just looking in the future, if we keep paying the reoccurring cost of the monthly fee, and, yep. you know, are we being fair to everybody? Yep. And I'm just, yep. I'm willing to help anybody out I can, sure. but I got to sit sure. there and look at what's fair. Yep. I see a lot more high weeds than that. So, you know, okay. we're doing what we said we'd do through the summer, fine. Yeah. I do have a quest, though. I know we have this twenty, thirty-five thousand dollars whatever, we're limited at 25000 But when we're getting new, complete new pots of money, I would like to periodically, in the brief, in the uh, meetings, be briefed on where this money is going. We know where the money from our budget is going most of the time, but this is a whole big pot. It Seven hundred. Yeah. Thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. I hate to think we're not involved at all. And in and you will get the plan. Okay. You absolutely will That's get the all plan. I want. Yeah, we've been putting general because we don't have the plan drafted out just yet because we or have the money the application. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So, but it, you will certainly. Have okay. It. I mean, it's, and you. certainly it's no different than the the Kerwin dollars and and how we expressed to the board the dollars we were getting from the state next year and what the and last year and what the plan was going to be. This is really no different other than the timeline seems to be a little accelerated. We were talking about Kerwin for years. Here we're talking. Right. Seven weeks, yeah. and we're, no, we're moving fine. forward. Just, that's all I'm looking for. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion for the emergency purchase of the Verizon Jetpack mobile hotspots contract with CTS Mobility. Fiscal dollar amount of thirty-four thousand six hundred fourteen dollars and seventy-two cents from the FY 2020 operating budget and/or CARES Act stimulus funds. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Fister. Welcome. We now have the expenditure report. You have seven point oh six. Oh, I apologize. Thank you for bringing that up. Seven two seven point oh six calendar adjustment. Yep. Dr. And so Kane. just as we uh, shared during the COVID-19 and continuity of learning plan um, updates, the date for the primary election day was identified as April 28th, but as we know, it changed to June 2nd. And so last time we met, you, the board approved the um, adjusted calendar with April 28th on it. And I want to bring it back for this amended um, date. It's still primary election day, and we're still going to request for that to be waived, but it is June 2nd, not April 28th. So do we need a motion to accept that? Please. So so that means April 28th, the calendar says April 28th, we're closed. We're asking to, um, no, we said April 28th, you approved last time for it to be an instructional day. Correct. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is not April 28th, it's June 2nd, right? Because primary election date, the date changed. Right. Okay. And we did, so we'll, we did not use the 28th as an instructional we, right? we We did. We did. Um, and so we have to add this April, June the 2nd because that was the uh, directive from the state superintendent today. So Mike, that is, gives us an extra day then. That just moves the day. No, we still worked on the Bless 28th. You. It was, right? We worked on the 28th. So we did that work counted on that. That was that extra day we were short. So what would probably happen is instead of, because I've already sent it down, instead of getting a waiver for five days, they will likely waive four. Only four, okay. Good try. Yep. Okay, got it. Because uh, I, I just wonder we get into the fact of having to pay uh, another day's wages. If we, nope. Okay. Same, same number of days. It's, so let me it's clarify. a waiver. Let me, cl let me clarify what this motion needs to say. The motion needs to approve the waiver to include June 2nd as an instructional day? Correct. And that's all we need to say? A primary election day. Mm -hmm. And then we ask for only four, or we just let that go and see what happens? Correct. Gotcha. Thank you. It would be nice to end the year a day early. <laughs> I mean, it sure would. Right? Okay, so I need a motion to approve the waiver to include June 2nd as an instructional day. June 2nd, the primary election day as an instructional day. Correct. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any question or comment on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the motion to approve the waiver to include June 2nd, the primary election day as an instructional day. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much. Now, Mr. Fister, we Thank are you. at 8.01 expenditure One. report. Yes, ma'am. 
Thank you, President Harper, board members, and Dr. Kane. Uh, tonight before you is the monthly expenditure report, both in detail and summary formats for uh, information only. As we're in the middle of projecting where we'll be financially at year end, there are no recommendations at this time for any transfers. Throughout the virus pandemic, we've been witness savings, but we've also had a large increase in pandemic-related costs, such as personal protective equipment, cleaning supplies, technology, postage, envelopes, paper. I said, well, I, what I have is a rec we'll have a recommendation for you later um, this month in our budget work session or our board work session later this month that will actually do the categorical transfer because we're still um, feeling our way through some of the extended payments that we've made to employees and things like that and how that affects our bottom line. We are, again, seeing savings in like, we had a mild winter with utilities. We are seeing some reduction in transportation costs, even though transportation is still over. So we'll have to move some monies there. Uh, of course, substitute costs. Uh, we're looking at some of the special ed costs that may not have occurred at the rate it would be had we been transporting students and even the rate reimbursements to our non-public. So we're still looking at all that and we'll wait, have wait, some wait. recommendations. We're getting money back? From? From? No, the, the, the state said that we needed to continue to pay. The non-placement schools. Yes, because they're still getting are... services provided. So depending on the level of service, there might be a small reduction on a percentage basis, like 80% instead of paying 100% of it. Okay. But we are still paying. And for that first 10-day closure, we're paying 100%. Okay. But it's after that, depending on the services delivered, we might okay. see a small little savings. We are definitely sa saving the dollars and the overtime related to transportation, but as witnessed here, you know, we're already over in that category, so it'll require a, a categorical transfer approved by you and then over to the county council. Um, and, and again, we're going through our normal end of the year process. Uh, we would have had that done by now, but with everything else going on with COVID and everything like that, we're just making sure we got all our I's dotted and T's crossed so that we only bring this to you once. Um, so that when we do these transfers, it's most appropriate where we will end the fiscal year. Category instructional furniture and equipment. There's a negative $3,700. Was that on there before? I'm looking at the I detail. believe so. I can get you details as to yeah, what Yeah, and then the contract services under mid-level admin. So Yes. Yeah, I, that wasn't there before, that I recall. Okay. What are those? It's 7,000 in the hole in those. Well, he'll, he's I'll have to get you detail. some detail. I mean, okay. uh, a lot of that it, with some of the contracts that we are that we do have in place in lieu of salaries for some of those positions, not necessarily that one, but that's why in with this transfer that we'll be doing, we'll be moving money from salaries to contracts because as we've talked about, especially in special ed, in student health services and things like that, um, we can't find the positions speech pathology otpt so we're contracting those out so that's some of it not necessarily this particular one but that would be an idea but uh, i can certainly get you some information on what those two are thank you mm -hmm. when what do you think you have a good idea i know you have it june the 30th before that of where our budget will be at the end of the before the end of the year at the budget work session at the end of this month i'll be bringing you I'm anticipating bringing you a categorical transfer that will align us for the end of the fiscal year. So then we should know what our fund balance is or whatever. We'll have a, yes, we'll have a pretty good idea. I mean, I know yeah. it's not down to oh, the penny, yes. but down yes. to mm -hmm. a reasonable estimate. Especially yeah. now knowing that, you know, um, good news, I guess, with, this, with the school closure, that sort of solidifies some of the projections that we would have had to guess mm -hmm. prior to this point, substitutes being one of them, transportation being another. Um, so that helps solidify some things. So yeah, we should have a pretty good estimate for I you. The basic our next, uh, in two weeks from now. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, next item, 8.02, transfer notice. I see there's nothing on yes, here. Yes, there are no transfer notices uh, for this month. Um, Everything was you know, being paid where it is, but we will see a transfer request uh, at the end of this month and, and or the first meeting of June. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next on the item, the future school board meetings, um, May 20th. Do, do we talk about, no, we haven't yet. Um, do we need to have a meeting next week? May 13th? I think we agreed we that talked we did about not, it earlier. That, no, it's May 20th. It changed. Okay. And then June 3rd. I do have a, a question, uh, and it's about meetings. Um, we had, I had an email. Um, apparently people are wondering why we are here and not at home. They wanna know why we're not meeting through teleconference like our state BOE. If we are gonna choose to preach the stay at home, then we might first wanna make sure that we're practicing it ourselves. Thank you for that concerned comment. So do we have an opportunity to do telecommunication 
We certainly do, and um, we how have would we be able to? to to do here. We could get on a Google Meets. That's how we meet with our principals. Um, or we how could, would we be able to put that through QAC TV? So there is a way to do it. Um, I don't know that QAC TV uh, is able to do that, but we can certainly enter. Uh, ask if they can do that. Um, like the commissioners, we have taken the same format to do it uh, th in this way, but it is an option if that if it's you know if the technology is there. We'll do it when the county commissioners do it. Well, well our yeah. room is bigger than the county commissioners' office, okay. and we have I mean we have ten people in the room. If you all feel uncomfortable and you want to wear masks and glo I brought gloves tonight and I have hand sanitizer, we have wipes. If you feel uncomfortable in any shape, form, or fashion, please let me know, and we'll all go to masks. I mean, I want everyone to be safe and healthy. So. I mean, I don't have a problem with trying to do it virtual if, if we can do it virtual. Well, we, we could, but we have a large room. We're, we're distanced properly. We're holding it down to 10. If somebody's in and out the door and, it, you know, 10 comes in, 11 goes out, or, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. But I feel I like to see people, be able to talk to them, we get presentations. I just don't know with five board members, Dr. Kane, executive team, I mean, it would just, I don't think we get as much accomplished. And uh, I mean, I just don't want to miss anything unless anybody feels avid that we can't well, meet it's, like it's this. A, it's just a concern. I, I'm bringing it up because if, if you don't feel comfortable being here, I would like to know that. I like seeing you. Well, this does break the stay at home. But this is essential this business. This is considered essential, essential business. It is considered essential. Okay. I mean, we're running 8,000, I mean, the Dr. Kane, 8,000 students, and we're trying to... Okay, I just want to make sure the public understands. Yep. Education is, this is... Yep. Well, it's, a, it's, this. The, it's the business of the county, and the county commissioners also conduct business every Tuesday. We do it twice a month. Actually, they're every other Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, is it every other? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Like two, two a month, just same Great. as we are. We follow them. Okay, uh, so May 20th, June 3rd is our um, general board meeting, June 3rd. Hopefully some, you know, restrictions will be listed, lifted and we could have some people here in the room with us. Um, we need to go over the complete list of the 2021. We will be discussing that at the work session mm -hmm. on May 20th. Mm -hmm. We need to approve that um, calendar um, at that time. Uh, public comment and citizen participation. I don't have anything else new on my phone. Um, I have here 33, it is 920. I have 33 parents comments. What is the consensus of the board? We read them all, read their names, read a few. What would you like to do? I think we should read them all myself. I think we should read them all. Before we did start, I, I wanted to see if we could be sure and tell the, if you could add the input to that, Dr. Kane, why um, we went ahead and did the, the, the pickup of the um, caps and gowns. Oh, well, we oh, absolutely, surely we did. We scheduled, um, and the principals worked through Justin's, and that was scheduled uh, last week. And I know that, like I've mentioned earlier today, Monday, Tuesday, superintendent started getting calls about not having kids to come through and pick up materials and not having drive through graduations. But at that point, we had already distributed ours. Um, and so that information just came um, after the fact for us. So it's just like I mentioned, the flow of information when you get informed you know, is, is how you respond. So we had already distributed our caps and gowns and some districts had not had a chance to do that and have been directed not to do it. Okay, but we've great. done it. And, and to make it known to the public too, they did not get out of their cars. They didn't even roll they down did the not. windows. They did not get they out of their cars. They went straight into their trunks Correct. of their cars. So, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it, it, it didn't break the rule, but we didn't realize. Correct. Thank how, you. How many of us uh, can be recruited to do whatever needs to be done uh, in a cap and a gown? Um, when we are able to have a face-to-face, -face, we all are there. So all board members are there, all executive team uh, members are there. So uh, you'll be, you'll be, cap and gown. don't worry, and the we'll take I care of it. The one I used to graduate with was, rent, rent, was rented. We'll so. take care of it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, um, we'll have you in your cap and gown. Are you comfortable reading some? 
Letters? Yeah, I'll read a few. Okay. Mr. Smith, are you comfortable with reading any? You guys can go ahead. Go ahead and start, Captain. Mm -hmm. This is one from uh, Kathy Silver to M Mr. Schreckengoss, Dr. Kane, and the BOE members. I'm writing to you as a parent of Maggie Silver, a member of the Ken Island High School class of 2020. I know you are receiving many emails today, as you all should be. The decision that has been made regarding graduation is disappointing, to say the least, and quite frankly, unacceptable. Many parents and students have emailed you with various safe and creative ways to celebrate our seniors during this unprecedented time. There are stories in the news every day about how school systems around the country and in our own state of Maryland are thinking outside the box to make sure seniors are able to experience these important milestones in the best way possible. Many parents in our small, tight-knit community have reached out to offer help in any way possible, yet you never ask for input from the students nor from the parents. Your decision regarding graduation is a lazy one. You are choosing to do the least amount possible. You have failed these kids and they know it. I know many of the students at KI High School, class of 2020, may, many since elementary school. They are smart, hardworking, talented, and compassionate group of kids. They are special and they deserve better than this. It should also be noted that making sure that graduation caps and gowns were picked up and paid just before this email went sent out, all the while knowing they weren't going to be worn, adds insult to injury. Shame on you. This is still time. There's still time to do the right thing. Many parents and members of the community are willing to help make this happen. I urge you to reconsider and give our seniors a graduation they have earned and deserved. Kathy Silver. Okay. I'll read, you, you read one. Go ahead and read one. Mm -hmm. Um, dear Queen Anne's County Board of Education, May 4th, 2020, we are the parents of Megan Casely, or Casley, a graduating senior of the class of 2020 at Ken Allen High School. After reading the email regarding graduation, we feel that the Board of Ed and the school system has failed our 2020 senior class in celebrating and memorializing their accomplishments. There are many alternative options that can be done to honor our graduating seniors other than a simple virtual webcast. Our children have worked hard for 12 years in the Queen Anne's County school system and four years at either Ken Island or Queen Anne. Several options have been submitted to the board with many parents volunteering to help with the planning and volunteering to help in any way. It is enlightening to see many school, schools across the county commit to alternative options to show their students how much they care and how to be creative and flexible when there are odds to overcome. This showed those students how to persevere through adversity to make the best of a bad situation. It is disheartening to see our school board do nothing to overcome the same odds. The board's in action to simply have pictures scroll across a monitor through a local network that most won't have access to has made our children feel unworthy and that our leaders are afraid to stand up and do the right thing. Taking the easy way out sounds, sends the wrong message to our children who are going off to college, the military, and the workforce. You can do better. Our children have lost so much already, prom, sports, senior awards, etc. Let's not let them lose graduation completely. We ask that you reconsider the options presented and look at what other schools in the nation are doing. A better solution can be done while following social distancing and CDC guidelines in addition to the governor's recommendations. The window to do something different is closing. Rally your people and accept the help, accept the help our community is offering. Our kids deserve their legacy, and you play a major role in it, not only for them, but for your own legacy as well. Uh, Scott and Lori Casley, Casley, Ken Allen High School. May 4th. Good evening, Dr. Kane, members of the Board of Education, citizens of Queen Anne's County, the amazing, amazing graduating class of 2020. This has been a very difficult time for our students, our families and teachers, support staff and administration. I want to thank each and every one of you. The focus should be postponing graduation date. We can adhere to the guidelines in place and still have a ceremony of sorts. Graduation was planned for May 28th, possible, possibly scheduled four weeks later for June 25th. If we are still not able, four weeks later, June 23rd, and lastly, August 13th. If an actual ceremony is unable to occur, the students individually can walk across the stage adhering to the guidelines in place at that time to receive their diploma. This can be videotaped and pieced together. The virtual ceremony with pictures flashed on the screen should be the absolute last choice when all other options are impossible. We are supporting our local restaurants by picking up carryout meals. We can certainly support our students while they receive their diploma. Thank you for your time and consideration, Jennifer Doge. May 6th, um, Dick, Dr. Kane board members and principals of KI and Queen Anne's. 
I, along with other Ken Island High School and Queen Anne's County High School seniors and parents, were blindsided by a premature announcement of an unprecedented decision to create a virtual slideshow video presentation to commemorate the class of 2020. This decision that was made in haste has put a bitter taste in the mouths of many locals and students. I respectfully ask for discernment on your behalf and properly commemorate the class of 2020 with a, the dignity and integrity they so much deserve. My daughter is a graduating senior of the class of 2020 at Ken Island High School. I can attest that throughout her 13 year tenure within the Queen Anne's County Public School system, she has worked diligently academically and athletically and never wavered from being respectful to her peers and staff. As stated in Queen Anne's County Public School mission statement, students are expected to maintain a high level of achievement and everyday excellence, of which she and her peers have not taken lightly. Now, as the class of 2020 are about cross that threshold, about to cross the threshold and venture off to other endeavors, we as parents and the school system must show our gratitude and praise to our young adults. Express to them that we've acknowledged their hard work to get to this milestone in life and display affir affirmation that they will, can, and will succeed in whatever path they choose goes toward. Again, I ask that you reconsider your decision and show a little more initiative and creativity to honor our class of 2020 in a more memorable way. Thank you for your time and consideration with this most important matter, God bless. Andrea L. Boardley, mother of Ken Island High School senior, Aria Clark. Dear Queen Anne's County Board of Education, I do not understand at all how you could in all good conscience reach a decision in early May to simply cancel the class of 2020 graduations when it was way too early to make such a rash decision. There are schools all across America planning to hold commencements of various styles. The state of Maryland is making plans right now to reopen its stages. There's no reason we couldn't have upcoming dates to hold outdoor ceremonies that would adhere to all social distancing requirements. Many schools are setting up a date for late June and late July. By this time, our state will certainly be open, enough to allow for a ceremony of some type. To cancel completely at this early date says to the class of 2020 that you do not matter enough to us to make the time and energy to celebrate your accomplishments. Our kids have spent 12 years working up to this moment, which you just threw away in a meeting because you are not interested in putting forth the effort to put together a safe event you are demonstrating the exact opposite characteristics that we are teaching our kids. You have hundreds of staff and parent volunteers who are willing to help to get this together. You have parents who have taken the time to outline event ideas with specific details. Why not take the time to review them and do some planning? You are being paid to do this. One idea, a stage could be set up on the track around the football field with students lining the track all standing six feet apart. Parents could sit in the stands six feet apart wearing masks. Students could walk around the track and enter the stage one at a time to receive their diploma. A photographer could be present who would most likely donate their time to take a picture of each graduate. If there are too many people to adhere to state laws, two or more ceremonies could be held either back to back or on separate days, whatever works best. This would make such an impact on our kids and the entire community in Queen Anne's County. This could be a life altering event for some. This would also send a message of hope to younger children and every member of our community. We do not care about a virtual graduation that is full of administrators talking. No disrespect met here, but this is not the focus. The focus should be on the kids. We want a ceremony that celebrates our children, their accomplishments, and honors them in the manner they deserve. Do the right thing here. Reconsider your decision to do the right thing. Dick and Denise Trump, parents of Ken Island High School Senior. May 5th, dear President Harper, Board of Education members, and Superintendent Kane, I am writing this note to ask the Board of Education system to work as a team, not as a board or a superintendent or administrators. Unprecedented times calls for the Board of Education to act unprecedentedly, unprecedentedly. No barriers between roles when discussing the high school seniors and how to give these students a positive memory in a scary time in our country and world. Work together as a team. At graduation, we tell our seniors that they walk into the auditorium as a high school senior and walk out as an alum. We as a community want these alum to go out and grow and experience life, but our hope is always for them to come back to town and our area where they grew up and start their lives and their families and careers. It is these seniors that are the future of our community. 
can we work together to figure the best way to celebrate these seniors? It may not be the typical graduation ceremony or prom, but please help them feel important and cared about by their community. We have two high schools in this county. This is the time that these two high schools need to be looked at as one. Decisions made for these seniors should be made by the team. Whatever, event, whatever events are planned, both schools should be doing the exact same thing. However, prom is handled, both schools should be doing the same thing. However, graduation and events associated with it are handled, both schools should be the same. This is not a time for individual schools to make decisions. This is a time for the board, superintendent, and principals to unite as a team, showing our seniors that the dedication at the education system that raised them cares and wants them to head into the world with Queen Anne's County Public Schools as a positive memory for them in a turbulent time in the in turbulent times. This is about the students, our seniors, our pride and joy of the county. Help make graduation, prom, and all the events lost in these critical months for our high school seniors memorable in a positive way. Thank you for your consideration. Cynthia Todd, Southersville, Maryland, proud parent of a high school senior, former board member. Do Dr. King, Mrs. Harper, and Board of Education, as a parent of a senior and longtime resident of Kent Island, I am respectfully requesting that you and the school board Reconsider your decision about the virtual graduation. I don't understand why the graduation can't be rescheduled until July or the end of June. I understand there was a group of students that were representing the class of 2020 and their ideas were not only dismissed but never taken seriously. This whole entire state is backwards. The stay at home order is ridiculous. These kids deserve a graduation and a prom it is heartbreaking. This is a huge milestone in their lives and they need to experience it. I just don't understand how the school board can be so heartless when there's other schools, including Talbot County, that are holding ceremonies for their graduates. I know that a lot of parents and community members had a lot of great ideas and were willing to step up and help. What is so frustrating is this will never, this was never communicated to the students or the parents. Some of these kids have gr given up. They feel defeated and depressed. This is teaching them to just give up and not fight for something that is important in life. Please reconsider the decision. M. Bowman, Samantha Bowman's mom. To all this concerns, I am writing this email with sadness and disappointed in the school board and the school system for not giving our children a graduation they deserve. Look, a lot of kids been busting busting their butts to get to this day only to be to be taken away they are not okay with you placing their pictures with names on the video it is not even close to the same thing as walking across the stage their hearts are broken and so are ours my daughter alone has always given her all to school and loved going to school she had succeeded to getting honor roll all this year all while having kidney surgery one after another only to get better, return to school excited about her last year, and then the virus hits and all is taken away from her. We kept telling her that you guys care about her and the other many students, however, sadly, it looks like this does not matter as much as we thought it did to you all. There is, there are many emails that came your way from so many parents and maybe even students. It seems you dismissed that. We could have all had a graduation with taking precautions there are many there are many ideas but none of you want to put the time or effort in you all need to understand that this could also been pushed into the last the late summer if needed to just so it can happen this is not right at all to also give out the cap and gowns for them not to wear but accept their money is not right at all yearbooks also paying a crazy price eighty dollars for what so for what so they can look at their class that was not able to graduate together to look at and wish they had their friends signatures as they are supposed to do but instead it's empty just a waste of money and some very upset parents including my husband and i who worked hard for that money these kids looked up to every single one of you and all they are learning now is to never trust a single one of you you lied to them basically and this is upsetting a god says in his commandments shall not lie you can keep giving us the runaround that you were looking out for the kids, but this will never, this will never ever make up for what is taken away from them. They feel broken, sad, upset, angry. All of you do not see your daughter crying her eyes out because she cannot come back to school to see her friends for the last time. 
You do not see her crying because she cannot walk that stage. You do not see her angry because she just was looking up at all of you adults who gave up on her and all her friends. How would you feel seeing your kids upset and having this happen to them? Wouldn't you do all you could to make the things happen? Why have a school system if you're not going to do the right thing? Now, I have dealt with the school board many times over bullying and thought then that you clearly did not care about the kids as much as you said the way you dealt with the issues that arised. However, I trusted you with my oldest since she was graduating to give her what she clearly without a doubt deserved, but you only proved again that you are not for the kids as much as you act like. I know, yes, you have some sort of excuse, but excuses are not enough. You all might be afraid of what the governor would say about it or do, but as any one of you brought it to him for these ideas that the parents have given, given to you to see if you can approve it or not. I know also that the last time they were talking to the governor, he said it was up to each one of you to make the decision. Then Dr. Kane said the principals would make the decision for the school. However, it sounds like Dr. Kane made the decision and everyone feels the need to follow with it. As this has upset a lot of us, this just stirred the pot. We will stand up for what is right for these kids, including our own, do the right thing and give them a graduation. Sincerely, Joe and Teresa McNate, McDade. Dear Dr. Kane, I write this email to express my frustration with not only the governor of Maryland, but the school system. It is 100% unacceptable to even think of a virtual graduation. My daughter has worked her butt off for 12 years to reach a milestone that has now been taken away from her. The principal of Ken Allen High School just announced the graduation ceremony would be virtual this year and 333 kids and their parents are outraged. I spent several, I have spent hundreds of dollars for a cap and gown and all the graduation items that go along with it. My daughter will not wear that cap and gown now. How is that fair or even right? The school has passed the buck on to the parents to deliver the news, blow number two. How is this fair to take their milestone away? It's not. The Naval Academy canceled commissioning week a few weeks ago and just this week graduation is back on. They are graduating in cohorts groups of 200 over a 10 day period and it's being recorded. Why can't we do that? If they are, why can't we? Why has it been decided already that the graduation is canceled when Hogan said that schools are supposed to reopen on May 15th? Hogan hasn't even said anything and that the school has already made the call. Isn't that putting the cart before the horse to assume? This is not fair to the kids. Dr. Kane, something needs to be done. There are over 9,000 9, seniors. I think it's 900 seniors. Oh, 9,000 seniors in the state of Maryland. And in one swoop, schools think that they can just take that away as if their kids didn't even matter. Has anyone, supposed, has anyone stopped to think how the kids feel right now? Being out of school since March, having to do work online, not seeing their teachers or friends, then take their graduation and prom away. Really? No one is really thinking how this is affecting the, the kids. And first and foremost, there should never have been an option to cancel graduation or make it virtual. The only decision should have been when this can be postponed until. I think every parent would support a June, July, or August graduation, and no one has even offered that for these kids. Why not? Why is no one thinking of the kids? This is not okay. Something needs to be done. I urge you to please help the seniors in Maryland get their day to shine. Please help them. This is not fair, and they do not deserve to be swept aside as if they have not, that they have accomplished is not important. If you are a parent, please understand how this feels to parents of seniors right now and their children. I beg for your help, our children, to help our children graduating. Please don't let this happen to them. They deserve this, and I think you agree with me on that. Please, Corey Wegman, mom to Chrisman, Kristen, a senior at Ken Allen High School. Dr. Kane and Mrs. Hudak, it is with a heavy heart, May 1st, heavy heart that I am writing this email to you. At 11.38 a.m. today, I received the email informing the seniors and parents that both Queen Anne's County High School and Ken Allen High School will hold pre-recorded virtual commencement ceremonies. I find this very un unacceptable. The class of 2020 is a great group of strong and resilient young men and women. They were born during the era of 9-11, and now their senior year has been cut short by the COVID-19 pandemic. They deserve much better than what the administration of Queen Anne's County is giving them. As a proud graduate of Queen Anne's County High School class of 1983, I had hopes and dreams during the 2019-2020 school year to watch my only child enjoy his senior year and graduate from Queen Anne's County High School on May 29, 2020. Mrs. Hudak, I believe you had the opportunity to watch with pride as each of your five children graduated from high school 
with your youngest graduating from Queen Anne's County in 2019. Many parents and students have shared different kinds of social distancing graduation ideas from other states and other Maryland counties. Our children are entitled to a graduation ceremony, not a virtual video that some families in the county may not be able to access due to limited viewing options. As a county school superintendent and high school principal, it is up to both of you to show these students how to handle adversity in life and not give up when you, the going gets tough. Now is the perfect time to be a role model for our children. Please reconsider the decision of a virtual commencement for class of 2020. I hope you and your family stay safe and healthy. Amy Benton Greenwood, proud mother of Benton Greenwood, class of 2020. Dear Dr. Kane and Mrs. Hudock, I am a mother of two Queens County High School seniors, Cameron and Connor Wingate. When the stay at home order was announced and things began to cancel, the first thing that came to their mind was what about graduation? From the beginning, I told them not to worry. Our Board of Education will make sure there's a graduation celebration and you will not be forgotten. As we all did, I began scrolling through social media and saw all the heartfelt things schools were doing for the class of 2020. I was excited to see what our small town area would do. I even read a post from our principal saying not to worry, that our seniors will have their moment. I believed in that and led my seniors into believing it also. I must say I was shocked after reading the email last Friday morning with the decision to flash the students' senior pictures up with their scholarships listed below. This email came as we were having fun taking pictures in the caps and gowns they picked up not 24 hours before. This email came as we were taking pictures with their college acceptance letters for College Decision Day. This email came while finally seeing them smile and have fun amongst all the stress everyone has been, had been under for the last six weeks. The smiles and fun and sense of accomplishment quickly went to tears and disappointment. I felt like I had let them down because I was the one telling them to believe in their school system. The one I believed would let them down, would not let them down. With so many different ideas out there that would stay within the boundaries of social distancing, I ask that you reconsider your decision on a virtual graduation for Queens County High School class of 2020. You have so many parents and families that are willing to help with this. Let's come together as a community and do the right thing for these hardworking seniors. Let's think outside the box, be innovative, and give these students the recognition they deserve. Thank you, Brenda Wingate. I received an email from Benton Greenwood who asked me to read the uh, class of 2020 officers for Queen Anne's County High School, May 6th, to the Board of Queen Anne's County Board of Education. On February 18th of this year, we released a statement to the staff, students, and parents of Queen Anne's County High School. Our statement was defending your decision to hold all future graduations starting with the class of 2020 indoors in both of the schools. While we fought on your side for that decision, the decision made by the principals and ultimately Dr. Kane about our virtual graduation is one that we cannot defend. Each student that comes through the Queen Anne's County Public School System or any school system looks forward to their senior year. Seniors are given the fortunate opportunity to spend 165 days with their friends and teachers before their lives as high school seniors comes to an end. The class of 2020 is not like any other class to date. We spent 118 days living up to the expectations and standards set by our school system, only to be disappointed by them on the biggest and most important moment of our high school careers. Throughout the process of the graduation and senior activities decision making, we were aware of many parents, students, and community members sending in multiple suggestions on other graduation ideas that are well within the governor's executive orders and CDC guidelines. The mission statement for the Queen Anne's County Public School states that it can only be accomplished through a partnership with families and community. Our partnership involves two or more parties. And from our standpoint, the families and community are giving you the and the principals a bountiful supply of ideas and suggestions on how to give us a ceremony or celebration that would make us feel that the past 13 years were well worth it. All four of us class officers sat on the prom committee for the 2019 QACHS prom. We know the amount of time, effort, and planning that goes into event or function. This year, we had already attended and sat through countless class officer meetings, planning senior activities, gatherings, and our cl senior class trip. Unfortunately, we are not able to provide our class with a senior class trip, which is one of the three major senior activities we have to look forward to. The second major senior activity we have to look forward to is our senior prom. We are not here to argue the point of canceling the prom for this year, but we suggest that the decision be reevaluated. Lastly, the highlight of anyone's senior career, senior year is graduation. Not only has the current pandemic stripped us from one senior activity, but our Queen Anne's County Public School System has stripped us from the other two. 
If we had not been given any more than just a picture or name on a screen, then why the past 13 years have even mattered? From the, for, from the education we have been given, we know that there are intelligent and driven teachers, administrators, and even community members and parents in our school system. We ask that the Board of Education, Dr. Kane, and the two high school principals review and change the decision on our virtual graduation. If the decision is not to change or is not amended, we ask that every senior from both schools be released from the county's continu continuity of learning plan. For seniors taking AP tests, allow them to continue their class or allow the teacher to post the necessary review for that class. If the QACPS cannot provide us with another graduation plan, then what values and lessons will future, future classes learn from this? A school system that is high performing, but cannot find a way to give their seniors a proper graduation. The QACPS mission statement states that our curriculum provides excellence in teaching and challenging educational experiences. This is one of those challenging educational experiences that you want us to problem solve. We expect the same from you and our county and our school administration. We carried out the mission statement, commitment to high achievement, achievement and everyday excellence. We expect our achievements and hard work for the past 13 years to be recognized with more than just a picture on a television screen. We suggest that QACPS live up to the mission statement. You make us live and learn by or change it. We are the QACHS class of 2020 officers and we request that our school system give us the recognition and graduation like countless other school systems have for their seniors during this pandemic. We have a strong, tight-knit community that will do anything and everything for the school system, and now they are standing behind us. If you do not give us a proper graduation, we are sure our community will. We want to remember Queen Anne's County Public School System as a school system that did the correct thing and planned a revised graduation, not a slideshow. You should be the ones to organize and plan a proper graduation and recognition for our, recognition for our accomplishments, not the community. We hope the decision is changed so we can remember our senior year very much like every other senior before us and not in vain. Live up to the expectations and standards you have set for us, much like we have carried them out for you. This pandemic is something nobody could have planned for, but there is no reason to put down the pen and give up on your seniors like the current virtual graduation makes us feel like you have. There are 23 days until our original scheduled graduation and 16 days until the senior's last day of school. Our days are being our days of being high school seniors are quickly coming to an end. Do not make us envy other seniors and other school systems that are giving them proper send-offs and graduations. We want to be proud of Queen Anne's County Public School System and the current plan in place leaves us more than disappointed and frustrated. Do not give up on us. When times got tough, we did not give up on school. We have kept our promise and commitment to you. Please do the same from us. Sincerely and respectfully written from our homes, the Queen Anne's County High School Class Officers of 2020. I am the mother of Zachary Kite, a graduating senior of the class of 2020. Mm -hmm. After reading the email sent this morning to all seniors regarding graduation, I must tell you I feel that the Board of Ed and school system has fully, has fully failed these seniors and let everyone down. I am fully on board with social distancing and the plans that Governor Hogan has laid out for the state of Maryland. That being said, there are a ton of ways QACHS could honor their students better than a virtual graduation, which I fear no one will watch. I can tell you from personal experience in talking with my senior son, he will not be watching it. He has no interest in watching his name go across the TV screen. If allowed at that time, we will be celebrating him with family and friends. I am not going to list all the hundreds of creative ways other much larger high schools are honoring their students because that has been done. Many, many senior parents have sent in ideas, volunteered to help with planning and coordinating and suggested ways to honor and celebrate our students. To add insult to injury, having the students pick up their caps and gowns yesterday was a slap in the face. I feel my $40 should be refunded with his class funds. To say that I am disappointed is an understatement. There is still time to do something to celebrate these students. Please reconsider your decision and ask for help from those willing to do so. Signed, Kimberly Kite, mother of Zachary Kite, class of 2020, Queen Anne's County High School. Dr. Kane, we are writing this letter to express our family's disappointment in the decision to have a virtual ceremony for the graduating class of 2020. This decision was made prematurely without thoughtful consideration for the students and families that you serve. The decision violates the very mission statement and core values set forth by Queen Anne's County Public Schools to partner with community members and value students. 
The same students that year after year have represented Queens County Public Schools so well with their achievements and recognition as scholars and athletes, musicians and artists are being dismissed as another casualty of COVID-19. The same students who are responsible for earning the standardized test scores and college scholarships that Queens County Public Schools loves to boast about are being robbed of an opportunity to graduate with their peers. Our governor has recommended that planned gatherings or events must be canceled or postponed until the state of emergency, until after the state of emergency. Postponement of the graduation ceremony, ceremony should be the first plan of action for our graduates. The students that you value have already offered ideas for a modified graduation ceremony that can be orchestrated in a reasonable amount of time and within the constraints of the current executive orders. The community that you partner with has expressed willingness to step up and volunteer time and resources to provide the graduates with the recognition they deserve. You cannot deny that, gra that this graduating class of 2020 has represented Queens County Public, School Public Schools extraordinarily well. These young adults have earned the right to contribute to the ending of their school story. Show these graduates that their voices matter and that they can make a change. Allow them to be the leaders that Queens County Public Schools has taught them to be. Support them in planning for a meaningful graduation ceremony at a later date. Respectfully submitted, John and Colleen Childs, parents of Carter Childs, Canalan High School. I have an email from Aaron's Erica Steinbrook. Dear QACPS Board of Education, Dr. Kane, Mr. Schreckengast, and Mrs. Hudak, my name is Erica Steinbrook. I'm a senior at the Kenan High School. I'm also the National Honor Society President, Class of 2020 Student Government Treasurer, Treasurer of, Treasurer of the National English Honor Society, and Treasurer of the Student Government Executive Board at Kenan High School. Ever since my classmates and I started at QACPS in pre-kindergarten as the Class of 2020, we have risen to every challenge and excelled in a multitude of ways within the school system. I am confident in the fact that our class is special, unique, and incredibly deserving. When we reached high school, we accepted the traditional deal. We would show up to school for the next four years, work hard, and increasingly rigorous classes, play sports, be team captains, shine as actors and actresses in plays and musicals, be a part of band and choir and dance, join clubs that make Kent Island High School and Queen Anne's County High School better places to grow and succeed, becomes officers in student government, put forth momentous academic effort to be accepted into honor societies, raise money for our prom and other school events, behave respectfully, respectfully and treat others with kindness create art that has won awards and touched hearts, perform exceptionally on standardized tests, and so much more. To summarize, we were focused on results and creating value, managing for innovation, participating in a learning-centered education, holding a systems perspective, showing visionary leadership, being agile, agile students, partaking in, in organizational and personal learning, valuing faculty, staff, and fellow students, managing by fact and exhibiting social responsibility. We, the Ken Island and Queen Anne's County High School class of 2020 undoubtedly demonstrated a commitment to high achievement and everyday excellence so that we could continue to grow intellectually, physically, emotionally, and socially in a rapidly changing globally competitive society. For our efforts, we were promised a senior year and commencement ceremony that represent the culmination and celebration of all of our efforts for the past 12 years as students in QACPS. As students, there were not any shortcuts to receive our diploma and have the opportunity to walk the graduation stage, which is why I plead with you to reconsider your decision to solely hold a pre-recorded virtual graduation ceremony. I firmly believe that the best and most effective remedy to, to tragedy is hope, which is why I think it is the utmost importance for QACPS to commit to one of the, most, of the many solutions proposed by the Kenan High School class president of 2020 and Board of Education representative Skylar Pedraza, including a po possible postponement of the 2020 commencement ceremonies to July or earlier, depending on restrictions set forth by the state government. My peers in the class of 2020 are my best friends, my study buddies, project partners, and the people I have been so proud to grow up with. I respectfully request that QACPS hold up their end of the deal as we have held, upheld ours and grant the class of 2020 the commencement ceremonies that we deserved and have worked incredibly hard for. Thank you all for your time and dedication. Sincerely, Erica Steinbrook. Dear Dr. Kane and Tammy Harper, I am one of many proud parents in the class of 2020 graduating seniors in our wonderful Queen Anne's County. I am also one of many parents that are extremely sad and angry about your decision 
as, as how to handle their graduation ceremony. So I'm writing to ask you to reconsider how to handle this. My daughter, Carly Nielsen, has been in the school system and Ken Island District since pre-K, 14 years. She has developed lifelong relationships with her peers and teachers, bonds that last a lifetime and memories that can never be forgotten. She deserves to be able to have a proper farewell and goodbye to such a long and wonderful journey in her schooling in Queen Anne's County. Do you remember your graduation, the feelings you had that day? You have memories of this, right? So do we. We all do. I am fully aware this situation is unprecedented and we are learning how to handle all of this as we go. However, your decision on how to handle this is, quote, the easy way out. A glorified slideshow, really? How is it that our very own neighboring counties, many other Maryland counties, and countless other schools across the nation are able to orchestrate creative and unique ways to give these kids a little more of a normal commencement ceremony and still abide by social distancing guidelines and laws of the state. But we get a slideshow. We raised our daughter in this county and many of our previous generations have been raised and schooled here in the county. Carly's father was a school resource officer with Queen Anne's County Sheriff's Department for many years at Kent Island High School. We are committed members of our community and this is how our senior is going out without any effort on your behalf to make it right for these kids. I can speak for many other parents. It is an effort and manpower you need. If it's effort and manpower you need help with, we are here to help. We would like to help and be involved in making some graduation memories for these kids. Please make this right. For some of these kids, this will have been or will be the only graduation they'll have. Sincerely, Keely Hensher. To whom it may concern, I would just like to say thank you for keeping the seniors and their families up to date on what's been going on during this unforeseen time. I'd like to address that my brother and I are both Ken Island High School graduates. We both were able to walk the stage and turn our tassels from the right side to the left side of our caps. We were able to have that experience of a high school graduation, having our parents, siblings, loved ones, and friends screaming our names and cheering as our names were called. It's a once in a lifetime experience to walk that stage, being handed your high school diploma and looking out to the crowd and locking eyes with your parents, loved ones, and your legal guardian, and, or your legal guardian, and to see them smiling because they are so proud of all the work, dedication, and time you put into these 12 years of school from projects to midterms to finals. All the nights they've stayed up studying their butts off to pass that test, to finish that one project, stressing out over a test or a project they have take they have to take or present to the class or having anxiety over whether or not they're going to pass the test or if they'll get a good grade on that project or essay they wrote or having anxiety over whether or not the grade they'll receive is going to drop their GPA and whether or not it's going to prevent them from playing sports or they'll still be able to get into their top college. These seniors deserve a graduation where they get to walk the stage and be handed their diploma. These seniors definitely don't deserve to have a slideshow of them, especially if they aren't going to be wearing their cap and gowns. It's honestly so sad to think and to feel that you guys are just giving up on these guys. Sorry. Taking, taking the easy route instead of trying to figure out a way to have these seniors walk and experience the feeling of walking the stage as most of the siblings of the class of 2020 got to experience. To most of the senior class of 2020, this will be the one and only time they will experience a graduation. Most of them won't be attending a college because it's too expensive or that's not what the future they have in mind for themselves. Most of these seniors can't afford college, can't get into college, can't be approved for a student loan. Their high school graduation is all that they have to look forward to. They were robbed from a prom. They were robbed from a senior night sporting event, which in hindsight, couldn't have been prevented due to COVID-19. The last bit of hope these seniors are holding on to is being able to graduate and walk the stage. And yes, they still technically graduate regardless if they walk the stage or not, that's not the point. The point is that these seniors should be able to walk the stage while still following the guidelines Governor Hogan said. If neighboring counties are having their seniors walk the stage while still following the guidelines, Queens County should be doing the same. For example, St. Mary's school officials said the plan is to schedule an appropriate number of seniors to arrive at the Dr. James A. Forrest Career and Technology Center and have a limited number enter the building at a safe distance while the rest wait outside in cars. 
One by one, the students will be filmed walking across a stage without touching anything and exit the building through the courtyard. If they're able to do that and still be following Hogan's orders, I think Queen Anne's County Public Schools can do the same. And if you can't do the same, then you should try and push back graduation until mid-June. Governor Hogan has laid out a roadmap for reopening Maryland. It holds out that graduation ceremonies can be held, but probably only if they are pushed back to mid-June. So why deprive the senior class the opportunity to walk the stage at this point in time and set up a new graduation date in mid-June when the state reopens? As a high school graduate, I remember the day I graduated like it was yesterday. The feeling of walking that stage and turning my tassel and tossing my cap in the air to celebrate graduation and closing that chapter in my life on a great four years of high school. But also, as somebody that didn't go to college, that was the one and only time I ever walked the stage. So I have a question for you. Do you remember the joy and emotions when you graduated high school? Being able to take the pictures of you and your high school best friends after the ceremony and having your diploma in hand in the picture. Because I sure do, and so does my brother. It was one of the best memories I have as a senior, has, as, as my senior year of high school came to an end. Why well, deprive the class of 2020 of those feelings and memories? When you can follow the rules of Hogan's orders, just have the necessary people on the stage and the senior and the senior's parents come in to watch them walk the stage and then walk off and out the building. Then the next senior and their parents walk in to watch them walk and so on and so on. Also, everyone can be wearing masks and gloves. I know that this wasn't something anyone expected to happen and it is truly devastating that this is happening. But please let these seniors have the graduation ceremony that they deserve. As I finish this letter, I hope you take into consideration all the students and their families that are truly upset and hoping that you'll change their minds on how you'll be honoring this amazing group of seniors. Lastly, I'll leave you with both my brother and my graduation pictures that were that we were able to experience and enjoy hoping it will change someone's mind on this situation. Sincerely yours, Ken Allen Hall High School graduate class of 2016, Madeline Nielsen. Mrs. Harper, this email is in hopes that there is something that you can do for this wonderful class of 2020 from Ken Allen High School for their graduation. So many other schools have found a way to get it done, so there is a way to make this happen. This is a huge milestone for these young adults and one that should not be stepped over. A virtual graduation is unacceptable. Here is a safe distancing proposal. The students sit six feet apart on the football field. Each of them walk and get their diploma, then sit back down. At the end of the ceremony, students can be dismissed 10 or so at a time to go to their prospective vehicles and leave the school immediately. No pictures in the parking lot. A representative from the school can be in the parking lot to make sure this happens. The next set of students can leave the stadium and head to their vehicles. Parents do not attend the ceremony. A live screening of the ceremony would be so terrific that the parents, families, guardians can view the ceremony from their homes or prospective locations. Please reconsider your actions. These kids deserve much better. Thank you, Cindy and Wendell Williams, proud parents of Madison Williams. Good morning. I am a proud parent of Queen Anne's County High School, 2020 senior Julia Smith and I would like to express my thoughts on the virtual graduation decision. And having a discussion with Julie about graduation and what she would like to ha see happen was more important than what I wanted to see happen. Her first response was, quote, there has been so many things taken away from us this year that we had no choice in. They probably won't let us decide about graduation. After reading the letter from the principals to have a virtual graduation, she told me she was so disappointed that school had given up on the seniors and she feels that you want them to just go away. I am very sad and disappointed. That is how my daughter feels about her last year of high school. She has been a four, all four year athlete, National Honor Society member, honor roll all four years, and has completed her community service hours and all other academic requirements to graduate. She's done her part and then some. Please reconsider and do your part. I submitted a plan that could adhere to social distancing, mask requirements, limited number of participants, no harm to the athletic field, and giving seniors an appropriate ceremony. They have many creative ideas submitted addressing health and safety of students and their families. It just seems as though the time requirements and organization is too much for school administrators to undertake. There are so many parents that are willing to step up and help with any and all plans to give the students a graduation that will make them proud and feel accomplished. These students have had no prom, no senior week, no senior recognition night, no spring sports, no senior day acknowledgement in their sport. They can't even say goodbye to their friends. 
some of these seniors will be moving on to the next phases of their lives, college, military workforce, and many other facets. The, mat the fact of the matter is they will never be one class ever again. Julia has worked so hard for the past 13 years as so many other seniors have. She has battled dyslexia. Her father passed away at eight when she was 12, juggling sports, going the extra mile with academics to achieve straight A's throughout high school. And she wants her one shining moment to walk across the stage to the next phase of her life. It's called adulthood. So everyone's, it's everyone's rite of passage. She picked up her cap and gown with a glimmer of hope that graduation would actually happen, only to have her hope crushed by a letter saying, you'll have a picture shown of you. That's it, just a picture. Please reconsider this decision. Schools have not been officially closed for, for the year. You have five weeks. Just look at what has happened to, in our country in the last five weeks. Things can certainly change in the next five weeks. Don't jump to any fast and poor decisions about graduation. It impacts these students' emotions more than you know. Prove Julia wrong and don't give up on class of 2020. Respectfully submitted, Donna K. Landis Smith. Uh, May 5th, 2020, dear Dr. Kane and Queens County Board of Education, I'm writing today concerning the class of 2020 graduation ceremonies. First, I would like to thank you for your time and ask you to have open consideration for any alternatives for the graduation for the class of 2020. I would like to draw your attention to the Queen Anne's County Public School mission statement and core values, which include managing for innovation, learning-centered education, visionary leadership, agility, organizational and personal learning, value faculty and staff, social responsibility, and management by fact. All of these characteristics support and drive the alternatives that I suggest today. First, propose and plan two alternative dates for traditional graduation event, which could be potentially held out of the school year in the summertime. I know one potential issue with this alternative is teachers not being available due to pay or prior obligations to run or navigate the event. The solution to this problem could be having community and teacher volunteers support and run the event. Two, if, alternative, if both alternative dates are not possible due to the governor's restrictions still being in place, I suggest having a pre-taped graduation event where students can walk across the stage to receive their diploma. I know one potential issue with this alternative is violating social distancing. The solution is, to this problem is dedicating one day where student groups come in for the pre-recording in time slots based on the alphabetical order of their last names, which is similar to the cap and gown delivery event. This alternative virtual graduation would be much better than a slideshow type of graduation. Both of the alternatives would benefit not only the graduates of the class of 2020, but all of their families that stretch across the Eastern Shore. The class of 2020 is held up to the mission statement and core values of Queen Anne's County Public Schools, not only this year, but many years before. Now I ask you, the Board of Education, to use your visionary leadership, agility, management by fact, and social responsibility to help the class of 2020 have the graduation event that they have been waiting for since the beginning of their academic career. Once again, th I thank you for your time and careful consideration. Sincerely, Skylar Grimes, family and friend of class 2020 graduates. May 4th, hello, I am a very proud parent of Sydney Bowman, a graduating senior from Ken Island. Sydney has loved her years at Ken Island High School. She has worked hard, followed the rules, respected her peers, classmates, teammates, coaches, and teachers and educators. She was happy and proud to do so, it's just her way. In return, she asked for nothing because she knew it was just the right thing to do. Please do the right thing for Sydney, her classmates, teammates, and friends. Show them the respect and dedication that they deserve and have worked so hard for, again, without asking anything in return. Let these wonderful young women and men have a graduation they've worked so hard for. A virtual one does not seem fair when there are many other options to choose from. Within a little effort, with a little effort, this can happen. Please, please reconsider your choice of having virtual graduation. Don't discount, discount them so easily. They will remember this forever. This may not be important to you, but it is truly is a milestone they should be honored with. Thank you for your time and consideration. Best, best, Chris and Dan Bowman, proud parent, parents of Sydney Bowman, class of 2020. Good evening, principals, Dr. Kane, and BOE members. I am writing this letter to you in an appeal to reconsider a way to make a traditional old or new graduation for class of 2020. <clears throat> My name is Diane Cummings, the mother of senior Julia Madison Cummings, 
who has given all to Queen Anne's County, a high performing public school system, a core value, the Board of Ed Queen Anne's County dictates in the mission statement. Your mission statement goes on to state, it is to ensure that each student demonstrate a commitment to high achievement and everyday excellence. My daughter, Julia, has done just that. As she attends Ken Island High School and attended the Pathway Program of Cosmetology at Queen Anne's County High School, she has achieved just what your mission statement asked for by getting her Maryland Board Certification in Cosmetology prior to graduation date and her 18th birthday to include being an honor student and receiving many awards throughout the school years. I fully understand the restrictions with COVID-19, but now times they are changing. The country is opening back up and there is no reason not to have an alternative way to have graduation. These children you push to uphold your mission statement should not have a slideshow, which by the way, I know most will not bother even watching. So who is that you're doing it for? There are alternatives other than a virtual graduation. I beg you to make these kids feel like they matter because contrary to what you have heard, that is exactly how they feel. You, you consistently convey to our children the mission statement of the Board of Ed. So my question to you is this, how is it that you are upholding that statement? What are we to tell our children? It only applies to them and not the people who put it out. I can honestly say my daughter believed in that statement until just the other day when she told me, what is the point anymore? School is over and no one cares. So I am not even going to bother with doing any schoolwork. I did what I had to do and oh well. Do you know how heartbreaking that was to hear as a mother who pushes her child to succeed, to hear and see the defeat in her voice and on her face? Think for a minute if that was your child saying that to you. Of all the ideas that are moving around out here, I have to say that what is being done in Cecil County may be a favorite. The county is allowing their seniors to take the final three choices and take a survey to see what comes back as the ultimate decision. This way, the seniors of 2020 get to write their own story, not a board making a verdict for them, feeling like a punishment. You hold a position that demands be heard, yes, well, you have asked all these students to uphold a mission statement, therefore earning them a right to be heard as well. We understand that all concepts require time and effort and it can be done simply using your core values that you have put in place. I offer my help to carry them out as well as many, if not all the parents, including the seniors themselves, to give them just what they deserve. Following your mission statement of empowering them to thrive and continue to grow intellectually, physically, emotionally, and socially in a rapid changing global competitive, com globally competitive society. This will accomplish through a partnership with our families and community. Respectfully, Diane Cummings. Dr. Kane, members of the board and principals, I reached out before with a detailed plan for, alt for an alternate, alternate virtual walk ceremony graduation ceremony. It is similar to what is planned for a neighboring county that abides by the current CDC guidelines. An additional suggestion is to have a limited student-only ceremony at a later date in the early summer. It is similar to the U.S. Air Force Academy's graduation ceremony. Ideas such as these can have been provided by multiple parents throughout this planning period. A few of the core values of Queen Anne's County Public Schools include visionary leadership, focus on moving past the status quo and ushering new ideas in creative and imaginative ways and valuing students, value their opinions, their learning and their accomplishments. I respectfully ask that you reconsider the current plan for a picture slideshow. Let's show these students that their accomplishments are valued and that they are valued. I know parents and other community members would assist you in creating a memorable, meaningful event for these young people. Thank you for your time, sincerely, I don't know how to pronounce this. Jennifer Addis or Adis, parent of Dylan and Tyler Adis, Queen Anne's County High School. After receiving this morning's communication regarding 2020 senior activities, I feel the need to share my utter disappointment with, this, with these decisions. First of all, how are all students and their families supposed to view this virtual ceremony? Will some be relegated to sitting in the high school or Dunkin' Donut parking lot in order to have internet access? Secondly, I find it ironic that captain gowns were distributed yesterday prior to this announcement. 
4240 wasted for a cap and gown that will never be worn for a ceremony. Mrs. Hudock, last year during the graduation, you cried during your speech as your daughter was the last of your children to graduate. This would have been my last child to graduate as well, and the feelings of joy and sadness at this event has been replaced with frustration. The welcome note to the, on the QACHS webpage speaks to it being the school's mission to assist students in meeting with success in the classroom, staged competitions, and fields. Where did this come into the decision about graduation? Last but not least, there were many emails sent from parents and students alike with alternate graduation op options and suggestions and offered to help in the planning. As a parent, it feels you have taken the easy way out and this is a slap in the face to our seniors who have worked so hard and have looked forward to, their, to this event for their entire school year. Mary Burke, parent of QACHS senior Riley Burke. Thank you for teaching my child that action, or in this case, inaction, speaks louder than words. Thank you for teaching my child that if it takes effort or ingenuity, it's much better to take the easy way out. Thank you for teaching my child what lip service looks like and feels like. Thank you for teaching my child that even adults can be thoughtless. Thank you for teaching my child irony by canceling graduation the day after she picked up her cap and gown. Thank you for teaching my child that the leaders don't always act like leaders. Thank you for teaching my child the autocracy trumps democracy. Thank you for teaching my child that sometimes when life hands you lemons, the people in charge will prevent you from making lemonade. Thank you for teaching my child that milestones are disposable. Thank you for teaching my child that hard work and perseverance are not always rewarded. And finally, thank you for turning what could have been into hardly worth it. This is signed by Suzanne Lashinsky, parent of 2020 Queen Anne's County High School senior Claudia Lashinsky. Dear President Harper, Dr. Kane, and members of the Board of Education, it goes without saying that we are living in an unprecedented time. We are keenly aware of that by this point. Everything we are living requires a different mode of thinking, innovation, and extending ourselves to do what we previously thought wasn't possible, to become visionaries. It also requires a commitment to valuing all members of our community, helping them in whatever way they may need to be helped, sometimes partnering with one another to make sure that all members of our community are taken care of. As a Queen Anne's County Public Schools teacher for the last 22 years, I know and live these core values every single day. My job title is elementary art teacher. However, I believe that even more important than teaching visual art is that I model the core values of a good character, of good character in absolutely everything I do. When I bump into a student, when I open a juice pouch in the cafeteria, when I ask a student to do something, I am teaching character and expect that good character be demonstrated in return. It is now that our core values and expectations of good character be extended to our graduating seniors. Let them trust in you to show how much you care for them and take on the responsibility to create the celebration for the culmination of 13 years of education in our county. Show them, show them that you will do your very best work your, your hardest to try, to at least try to set a date later this summer for an actual commencement ceremony for graduates to come together one final time as a class. And eventually it becomes evident that a late commence, commencement date will not be possible due to restrictions from our governor, then have them creatively to schedule times, then have creativity to schedule times for each graduate to walk the stage in their graduation regalia and receive their diplomas while being videoed, and then orchestrate an actual virtual graduation. All of our surrounding county systems have taken this change, or this charge, in part and in its entirety. Who is more deserving of the same than the graduates of Queens County? Students who achieve more than all other students on the shore in their academics, sports, leadership, service, and extracurricular activities. I implore you to reconsider your decision of a slideshow, no matter how challenging the tax, task may be to do more, rise to the challenge and do this for our outstanding Queens County Public School seniors. Respectfully, Sydney Pedroza, proud mother of Ken Allen High School senior Skylar Pedroza. I am very disappointed. As a single mom, I have struggled to make sure my daughter pushed and did her best to accomplish the one thing that every parent wants their child to accomplish, graduation. There were times being a parent that I wanted to give up because it was such a struggle. And I know there have been times that my daughter has wanted to give up, but she pushed on. She wanted that one thing that everybody wants, 
graduation. And yeah, I know that the kids are still graduating and they will still get their diplomas, but it is not the same. What if this was one of your own children that does not get to celebrate by walking across the stage? What is more upsetting is the fact that these children have no say in what will happen with their lives. Even counties in our own state gave the children the option by sending out a survey. Montgomery County, Cecil County, sent out an email asking what the children wanted. Talbot County is videoing, videoing each child walk across the stage in their cap and gown, even if they are the only ones there. Queen Anne's is taking the easy way out. There are many other options instead of doing graduation this way. You even have tons of parents that will step up and help plan or do what, is, what we need to do to make this happen. Go to the Facebook page, QACHS and KIHS, Class of 2020 Parents. You will be able to see all the parents that will step up. When I was searching for emails, I came across the mission statement. I, don't know, I know you don't need me to tell you what it says. Just take a few moments and reread it yourself. Your decision is going against what the whole statement states. I always thought QAC was one of the best counties in the state of Maryland. Your decision has proven to me otherwise. I am asking, pleading, begging for my daughter who needs to walk across that stage. Please reconsider your decision. We will be more than happy to wait until July if that is what we need to do. Please do not give up on our children. Jennifer Kozar, proud parent of a 2020 QACHS graduate. I'm writing this on behalf of my son, Ben Harrington, and his classmates of the Ken Island graduating class of 2020. For weeks, parents of both Ken Island and Queen Anne's County High Schools have been emailing letters su suggesting alternatives to virtual graduation, and today received a letter t letting us know our efforts were futile. What is even more disappointing is that the kids had to pick up their caps and gowns throughout the week only to be sent a letter today when you knew this was the plan all along. I have lived in Queen Anne's County for over 40 years and graduated from Queen Anne's County High School in 1993 and have never been so disappointed in the treatment of our younger residents. These kids have worked hard for the last 13 years only to be told sorry. Governor Hogan closed the state. I call BS. The parents of both high schools have come together to fight for our children to have closure for a part of their life that every student is entitled to. While the decision has been made by the Board of Ed, please know that the parents of the class of 2020 will not stop until every avenue is exhausted. This will include newspapers, television stations, county commissioners, and other Queen Anne's County residents and businesses. I assume no one reading this email has a child that is graduating this year, because if you did, you would certainly have found exceptions to the rule. Amanda L. Frampton, proud mom of Ben Harrington, Ken Island High School, class of 2020. Good morning. I understand you are receiving a plethora of emails regarding graduation for our 2020 senior class. I will not belabor our point. We live in Graysonville and our daughter Riley is graduating senior from Ken Island High School. Why aren't we considering alternate plans for graduation? Why has there been no communication to our classes of 2020, ours and Queen Anne's, with regards to alternate plans for graduation? Why are our neighboring counties able to do celebratory parades and we say we are not? These are not easy times for any of us. Most have had to become very creative when it comes to their daily lives and routines. Why isn't the Board of Education being creative here? These students deserve far more than what you are offering them. They provide you with three alternate plans for graduation. All no's. Why not? Exactly why not? Communicate to the communities why those are no's. Help us understand because our view of what is happening is so poor and we would like some insight and answers. Thanks for taking time to read this. Karen and Matt Tangwall, parents of Riley Tangwall, Ken Allen High School Class of 2020. And the last one I have is actually a duplicate. Oh, okay, thank you. Hello, I just read the email that you sent out regarding prom and graduation. I am very disappointed and disheartened that the people who are supposed to care for and educate our students can give up on them so easily. The same people who for 12 years have asked our children to one, apply themselves for their less, to their lessons, two, to do community service and promote a good social image, and three, strive to become the best versions of themselves as they work towards graduation. They deserve the fruits of that, la of that labor, even if it's in July. You've told them to never give up, to find new ways to do things, to be strong and fight for their rights. 
just to roll over and tell the senior class of 2020 that they mean so little to the administrators of Queen Anne's County Public School System, it appears that you and your peers took the easy way out and passed the buck by citing the governor's order as your reasoning. I've seen what other school systems are doing for their beloved seniors, and it's a shame that the administration of QACPS can't muster up the same qualities they expect from our children or the creativity offered by other school districts in our surrounding areas. Please reconsider that your decision and allow us, parent, uh, us parents to assist you in making the best of this situation for the class of 2020. These events are their rite of passage, memories, something they will have for a lifetime. Let's make it memorable. Stephanie Hines, mother of graduating senior Sierra Hines, Ken Island High School. My name is Lori Tulowitzki and I reside in Churchill, Maryland. I am writing you today to voice my complete disappointment with the decisions that have been made concerning the graduation ceremonies for class of 2020. I understand the current situation has caused tremendous turmoil for everyone and I've tried to be understanding of the school's viewpoint but today you made decisions that were easy instead of what was best. A graduation without a graduate is completely unacceptable. My daughter has been in Queen Anne's County School System since pre-K at Church Hill Elementary. She was the transition class that moved to the new Sellersville Middle School in fifth grade. I have had a front row seat to the many ups and downs in our school system. My daughter, her friends, and the graduating class of 2020 have worked incredibly hard to reach this milestone in their lives. After all the setbacks this spring, these seniors have weathered through in hopes that they would have a chance to stand together one last time at graduation. Today, less than 24 hours after seniors picked up their caps and gowns, Queen Anne's County Schools took all hope from graduation away and showed our seniors exactly the type of educators they are. You should be ashamed of yourselves for treating your students in this manner. You took the easy road. You did below average work. You left children behind. What happened to thinking outside the box and be an advocate for all of our students? I have sat and watched as schools across the country and surrounding counties have come up with creative and six feet apart ceremonies for their high school seniors. I have sat and read the many ideas that have been submitted to our school system from <coughs> parents and community members. Today I sat and cried for my senior as I read that the school that she has attended and represented as a student athlete for 13 years <coughs> tossed her graduation into a PowerPoint. Shame on you, Queen Anne's, they deserve better. Lori and Richard Tulewiski, proud parent of Kylie Tulewiski, Queen Anne's County High School, class of 2020. Uh, Mrs. Wright just handed me an email that came earlier this evening. Thank you for re recognizing that we must abide by the governor's phases. If we are able to go into phase one, a drive-through graduation will be feasible. We will wait for the governor. I know it's a long night. We can honor them at every phase. Born during 9-11, school shooter drills, and a pandemic. They deserve it. Michelle Johnson, Shannon Billups' mom. Good evening. As I'm sure you have received a lot of emails regarding the decision to hold a virtual graduation, we wanted to let you know of our disappointment as well. Our child has worked very hard over the years and maintained a 4.0 over her entire scholastic career. Our daughter, Sydney Carroll, has so much to deal with from the loss of her prom to not knowing if she will even have a first semester of college next year. There has been so many other ideas presented by parents, seniors, and other school systems that could keep our children safe while acknowledging their graduation. And unfortunately, there are people that do not have access to internet as well to see this virtual graduation. We are asking that you reconsider your options to help honor our students in a better way. Sincerely, Bob and Renee Carroll. I am writing you in regards to the email that was sent out Friday in reference to graduation being canceled. I am just trying to figure out why this decision was made to cancel graduation instead of postponing until the summer or early fall. There are so many options available to the seniors that will comply with the governor's order. Having a virtual ceremony is the last option that should have been made, made available to celebrate their accomplishments. What saddens me the most is the fact that my son who has worked his butt off for 12 years will not be able to walk the stage. Myself, my husband and relatives walked to receive their high school diploma, our high school diploma. You see, it's a big deal for me and my husband because my son did everything his father and I asked of him from elementary to high school. That was to show respect, 
stay out of trouble, get good grades, don't do drugs, and to graduate. Let's be real here. Like my son and several seniors will be going off to college, then you have some who will not for multiple reasons. So for some parents, this may be the only graduation they get to see of their son or daughter. I am truly trying to hard to understand why it seems that you, uh, like a big something you, and or slap in the face to our graduating class. Seems as though the decision to cancel graduation was something that was already planned and to have them pick up their cap and gown the day prior. Why even do that? The joy on my son's face when we received the email to pick up his cap and gown was priceless. He was full of joy, assuming that it was postponed to a later date. Then the next day to see his joy turn into heartbreak and anger because of the email sent out canceling graduation. As a parent, how can you just sit and let that be acceptable? You can't, at least not me. I truly hope you and the administrators take this letter into consideration. Take a minute and put yourself in my son's shoes. How would you feel knowing everything you have worked hard for in school the last 12 years is being recognized via a virtual ceremony because of the selfish and inconsiderate acts of the administrators? To me, it seems like you all are pretty much saying, hey, you're a senior. COVID-19 happened. Nothing we can do. See you later. I know that is how my senior feels. There's still time to put another plan in action. If you don't know where to start, seek help. Local, help, local school districts, myself, and several other parents and even businesses in our communities are willing to help. It's bad enough these kids miss prom, saying goodbye to their friends, spring sports, and most of all being shorted out the last few months of being a high school senior. But let's work together to make graduation as special as we possibly can for the class of 2020. We can do this and still abide by the governor's orders. Thank you, Wayne and Nicole Gross, proud parents of Tavion Gross, Queen Anne's County High School class of 2020. Yeah. To who it came, may concern, I'm a senior at Kenan High School. I'm the youngest of two older sisters who both graduated from Kenan High School. I've attended both of their graduations inside and out and both times that I've witnessed two people that I look up to greatly walk across the stage, fathering in success. I can't wait for the day I can do the same. A lot of people see graduation as a token to finally be free of high school and move on. While this is true, I also see it as a celebration with my class to honor all the hard work and dedication we have put into our schoolwork to set us up for greatness. It is the last moment we can all gather together as one and behold, each other's company before we all go our separate ways. It is a time to give thanks to our teachers and family. We have helped pave the way for our future success. and is a time that we hold for the rest of our lives. This is something that it cannot be simply be matched with a virtual graduation. The board took the easy way out when thinking about an alternative and did not take our thoughts into consideration. Queen Anne's County has the lowest number of cases in Maryland and other counties like Howard County have thought of other alternatives like postponing their graduation. Not to speak on the fact that they have a greater amount of cases than us. I imagine it means COVID cases. I believe that this is the most important to keep our people safe, which is why I understand the decision made. Although I believe there's other ways to do so, like postponing, holding a social handout, each, holding a social distance graduation, small group events to honor each student at a time, or meeting in person to hand out each individual diploma, anything but a virtual graduation. A diploma to you may seem like just a piece of paper, but to us, it is a landmark in our success and, a gra and our graduation is what we have been looking forward to all our lives, our whole lives. Our senior year has already been taken away. All we want is a proper recognition of the hard work we have put in for the last 13 years of our life. I hope that you can, look, can thoroughly look into each one of the students' writings to, to you with sincerity, as we have taken a lot of time to voice our opinions. And just know that this moment is one we will never forget and our success should never be looked passed by by the adults who claim to have uh, our best interests. Thank you for your time, Campbell Beach. This one is dated Wednesday, April 22nd. Um, I am the mother of Madison Loker, a senior at Queen's County High School and I'm writing to you after watching the board meeting on QAC TV to ask you to find an alternative to a virtual graduation. These students have been through and seen enough loss this year. This is supposed to be one of the best times of their lives. However, they are missing so much. Spring sports, seasons, prom, the last days in school together, baccalaureate, senior award ceremonies, senior breakfast and graduation. 
please try to think outside the box to salvage some of these memories for them. We have a small town community that is ready to band together to help. A big part of the beauty and reason why most of us chose to live here. There have been numerous wonderful ideas shared to honor our seniors. Yard signs, banners, flags at the high school, and a parade through town. Any and all of these would be great. However, graduation ceremony would be the most memorable for them. The Air Force Academy was able to hold a graduation ceremony for 1,000 with the cadets sitting six feet apart. Yes, this situation is different. However, couldn't we do something similar from our graduating, for our graduating class? Parents and guests can watch remotely, but students could be together. Safeguards could be put in place. Another option was recently announced from Gulfport High School in Mississippi where times were booked by each senior over the first few weeks of May to have them walk across the stage and receive their diploma. During each senior walk, it is videotaped. Then compiled them together to make the part of graduation where seniors walk across the stage. It will, be fi it will fit into the graduation video to air with all the speeches. It can't be a basic stage, it can be a basic stage setup like what is used for National Honor Society inductions or such. As for the number of people, it needs the principal, video operator, professional photographer, student, and two to four parents, totaling less than 10 people. In this scenario, the seniors only miss graduating with friends, but they do get to do their walk and have their parents watch this moment. Please consider all options, keeping in mind these kids have sacrificed a lot this year. These seniors will never get to have this experience again. Sincerely, Lori Loker. Dear Queen Anne's County Public School Board of Education, Dr. Kane, Mr. Schreckengoss, and Ms. Hudak. My name is Riley Tangwall, and I am a graduating senior at Ken Allen High School. Throughout my four years as a student athlete for Ken Allen High School, I've been the team captain of the field hockey team, a member of National Honor Society, secretary of the National English Honor Society, member of the Hispanic Honor Society, and a delegate for the Class of 2020 Student Government Association. As I know you are receiving a plethora of letters, and rightfully so, I wanted to contribute my own letter on behalf of my senior class at Ken Allen and the seniors at our neighboring Queen Anne's County High School. Being a part of Queen Anne's County education system since kindergarten, one has been one has been quite a memorable and promising experience for me. That is until I reached my 12th year as a senior at Ken Island. While growing up in school, we constantly dreamed about our time as a senior and taking on the final and most thrilling step of the process, walking across the grand stage at the annual commencement ceremony to receive our diplomas. Once I reached my sophomore and junior year as a member of the National Honor Society, I got to witness one of these graduation ceremonies as we helped organize and host the most exciting event of this school year. After attending those graduations prior to mine, I became extremely hopeful and exhilarated for my own graduation ceremony, which is now beyond disappointing to say, will be through a virtual pre-recorded video. This change regarding our graduation ceremony this year is disheartening to say the least. As a delegate for my senior class, I am fully aware of the opposing solutions that were presented to you by our class president, Skylar Pedroza, which is undeniably dis was undeniably dismissed by your administration, knowing that we won't have the ideal graduation is something we've all accepted. But knowing that our own school system that is supposed to ensure that every student demonstrates a commitment to high achievement and everyday excellence possessing the skills and knowledge to empower them to thrive and continue to grow intellectually, physically, emotionally, and socially, is not willing to listen and make change for their own empowered students, is unacceptable and heartbreaking. Us seniors from both Ken Island and Queen Anne's High School are more than deserving of an unforgettable, engaging graduation, from being in an AP classroom to the turf field playing a game even against Queen Anne's County High School, to participating in the annual dance show or being in an honor society meeting, I know that each and every senior deserves the proper recognition and secure feeling of success as we are handed our diplomas on the grand stage. We have undoubtedly, undoubtedly shown our part of focusing on results and creating value, managing for innovation, participating in a learning centered education, visionary leadership, agility, organizational and personal learning, valuing the faculty, staff and students, management by fact, and social responsibility throughout our years in the Queen Anne's County education system. The amount of effort or lack thereof is not being accomplished through a partnership with our families and community on your end. 
students, families, faculty, and staff are all more than willing to create something more than, you propose, than your proposed plan. I plead with you to reconsider your decision to make a pre-recorded virtual graduation ceremony by firmly evaluating the plans given by Ken Allen High School 2020 President Skylar Pedraza or even potentially holding a late graduation in July or earlier with regards to the state's orders, the state government's orders. There is a solution and we won't accept the easy way out of it that you've proposed. We have hope. We've seen it happen in high schools in our neighboring counties. As seniors and leaders of the education system of Queen Anne's County, we did our part. Now it's time you do yours and provide your students with the respect and honor they deserve through acts of hope and confidence that we have yet to see from our very own leaders. Sincerely, Riley Tangwall. Dear Mrs. Harper, my name is Benjamin Herlihy. I live, I hope I said that correctly. I live in Chester. I am a Kenan High School class of 2020 student. With the transition to online school, seniors have already had a hard time trying to grasp the thought that their days of high school are over. For three years since we walked in as freshmen, we watched the seniors before us have the time of their lives as they were in their senior spotlight, telling us how great senior year is and how we should look forward to all the fun events seniors get to be involved in. The class of 2020 has now been cut short of these memorable times. The events and activities that we have looked forward to during our high school careers are now gone in the blink of an eye. No senior night, no prom, no senior breakfast, no senior all-nighter, and most importantly, no graduation. We understand that safety and health is one of the biggest priorities within the world right now, but the interaction, but the interaction at graduation is the key factor in what makes it so special. Celebrating with your friends and family by your side, exchanging smiles and seeing all the hard work and dedication pay off. Now we get to grab our phone and our computer and watch the screen to be honored and celebrated as a 2020 graduate. A diploma will be scheduled at a will be scheduled at a later date to be picked up without a handshake received. We will text our friends and say we did it while imagining what a real graduation would have felt like. Being left alone, le being left feeling alone, and not celebrated as a whole, we would wish only for a normal year. So much has been taken away from us already, but taking away the end of celebration of high school. Some may believe that the virtual graduation would be more beneficial, but seniors deserve more recognition than just a through a through through a screen sitting in their homes, unable to laugh, smile, and enjoy it with their peers. With everything, we deserve a say in how we want our high school career to end. The class of 2020 will always be remembered for the coronavirus, online school, and social distancing. But the more important thing is how we would want class of 2020 to remember their senior year and accomplishments of graduating high school. Seniors should get a say in how we want our high school year to end, not having adults decide for us. Thank you for all the collaborative work of our student advisory group that led by student member of the board, Skylar Pedraza, who has identified several opportunities for recognition and celebration. I am asking that you reconsider options for potentially holding a postponed graduation. Kind regards, Benjamin Hurley, hashtag 2020 Senior Strong. Hello, I just read the email that you sent out regarding prom and graduation. I am very disappointed and disheartened that the people who are supposed to care for and educate our students can give up on them so easily. The same people who for 12 years have asked our children to apply themselves to their lessons, to do community service, and promote good social image and to strive to become the best versions of themselves as they work toward, work toward graduation, they deserve the fruits of that labor, even if it's in July. You've told them to never give up, to find ways to do new things and to be strong and fight for their rights, just to roll over and tell the senior class of 2020 they mean so little to the administrators of Queen Anne's County school system. It appears that you and your peers took the easy way out and pass the buck by citing the governor's order as your reasoning. I've seen what other school systems are doing for their beloved seniors. It's a shame that the administrators of Queen Anne's County Public School can't muster up the same qualities they expect from our children or the creativity offered by other school districts in our surrounding areas. Please reconsider your decision and allow us parents to assist you in making the best of this situation for the class of 2020. These events are their rite of passage memories something they will have for a lifetime. 
Let's make it memorable. Stephanie Hines, mother of graduating senior Sierra Hines, Ken Island High School. Dear Dr. Kane and members of the board, my name is Julia Cummings and I'm a senior at Ken Island High School. I have one question for you all. Do you remember your high school graduation? No matter how long ago it was, I'm sure you still remember it like it was yesterday. So please explain why the class of 2020 will be the only class that never gets an experience to experience that. Other counties are going above and beyond to make sure their graduating students get that amazing experience like everyone else. Green County has planned a ceremony where each student can invite up to 10 family members to come watch them walk across the stage and get their diploma. Cecil County and Montgomery County sent out a survey to students and families asking what they wanted for a graduation. Other schools have opted for virtual graduation now and a proper ceremony in the near future. Students and families have vocalized that a virtual graduation is not what they want. We have all waited 12 plus years to walk across the stage and accept our diploma in front of our friends and families. We have gone above and beyond by excelling in school. Why are you depriving us of that milestone? We, all, we are all aware of the times we are in right now and why we cannot have a proper graduation this month. But states are starting to open up and there's no reason we cannot have the ceremony we deserve later in the year. There are many possibilities to what you can make happen, so please give us something better than a slideshow for graduation. Respectfully, Julia Cummings, Class of 2020. Thank you. Is that it? That's all you had? Okay. Anyone else? Any other? Good for the order? Just one good for the order. We certainly do not want to miss an opportunity to acknowledge that this is Teacher Appreciation Week. This is also the week that we appreciate our school nurses. And so amidst all of the things that are going on, we always have something positive to say about the work that our employees are doing. So to our nurses, to our teachers, and all those who support instruction, that's our teacher assistants, our tutors, all those who are supporting instructions, this week is for you. We do appreciate what you're doing and we thank you. Okay, here, here. Thank you all for attending tonight. I know it's very late tonight. How, how many of those it. letters were read? Uh, all of the parents and yeah. about 15 of the students. So we had 21 of the students. So we're talking that 36 letters. No, there was no. 15 and 21. No, there was 35 parents and 21 kids i'm just trying to get the total number of them yeah i had it written here i'm sorry i threw it away but yeah we had quite a few but i don't point? even know how many i will go through and count them no, Mr. No, Mark. You, no it's late i'm just a good guess is it okay let me count them again that's not use necessary number 50. i mean 50 60 whatever something like that between 50 and 60 yes what is our what is our next step anything I'm not sure where we ended up. We are going to be looking at an alternative when things open up. Absolutely. So that's, that. yep, that's the next step. Our principals are already working on what this graduation may look like uh, when restrictions are lifted. Okay, great. And would they be looking at a delay too, if possible, if required? Well, delay for certain because we're not seeing the restrictions being lifted. Even if you look at the governor's plan, it's not going to be before June. Oh, oh I understand. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they are, they're not discounting a delay. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can I suggest that after hearing all of that, we write the chair a letter as to our response, uh, what our flavor is, and then you digest them all, and then we have a meeting at some point? I don't think we need to have a I mean, Dr. Kane is already... Oh, we didn't get to vote on what, what, what was decided, but I thought it would be a good idea that hearing some of this, I mean, there's something that can work in here. First of all, we don't take a vote on what happens with graduation activities that is decided by the principals and, and with... Well, we can make a suggestion. Well, we can make suggestions, but there's no vote from the board on this. No. So, um... Then why are we being asked to decide? Because they don't understand the... They the, don't understand uh, the process. Yeah. Yes. But, but I mean, we have input on this. We were listening. We have some other plans that Dr. Kane has mentioned. We don't know where we're going to be next week or two weeks from now. Once we get a better picture, we have a better picture today, there'll be, there'll be things that can move forward. There'll be setbacks probably. Hopefully, we will be able to do something 
in June, maybe as late as July, but we don't know that, so we cannot say what we're going to do until it happens. I think there's some plans and some good ideas. I mean, I, like I said earlier this evening, I think it hurts the principals and our staff because they've been with these kids for 12 years. Nobody does not want to do this. It's just that the, right, right now, we can't do it. We will try to do any recommendations we can do it what at the best way we can at the time. What it says is that the people are logically disappointed. They're angry. Um, this is obviously a very important passage in life, but they don't understand the rules because we obviously haven't communicated enough. Uh, otherwise, intelligent people would not take the point of view that they have. Well, this is a very emotional thing when you well, have students. Of course it is. Students. And that, that's factoring so, into it. Well, This is an emotional time for these parents and the students. I mean, on, it's always an emotional time anyway. Given the time that we are in now, it's exacerbated by COVID-19. And we have to take it. into consideration and be respectful and hear them. And I know, agree I, with that. I mean, that I, I will be glad to read the rest of the students. I mean, there's a few left. If you want to want, like me to, I'll be glad to read them right now. No. Well, I think it's important that the community know no one in this room is insensitive to the fact that these kids are missing out. And no one is certainly immune to it either. I mean, my own child is missing. She's getting a virtual graduation. I have a niece and nephew who are going through the same thing, one in this school. So no one's immune yeah. to feeling bad for these kids. I think it's important that they know we didn't just throw it away and not even think about it. it there was serious thought and consideration into the safety of what can and cannot be done. So I, I think it's important to know though that. Although I heard the easy way out a half a dozen or more times. And I, well, that's I how it's tell perceived. You that it's, it's quite an undertaking, I would think. I'm not an IT person, but what I went through just to submit things for my own daughter who has to do a virtual graduation, it, it's not an easy undertaking. And a lot of time and, and effort will be put into it to make it special. I mean, each child will be recognized. And I think that's the important thing. That is the very important um, thing. That we do consider all of our seniors special. And in lieu of a face-to-face, -face, we're trying to be in compliance, but still give them the opportunity. So where there are, and, and again, Mr. P has said it today, I'll say it again. We will be meeting with principals this week. We have a meeting tomorrow, but we'll meet with high school principals separately. Uh, we have spoken with them more than once or twice this week already, and we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to work on it. Thank you all for going through that. I appreciate it. Thank you all very much for attending tonight. Do I have a motion to close our open session? I moved. I have second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to motion, a vote on the motion to close our open session at five minutes to 11 on Wednesday, six. May 6th. I had to look at the date. Six of May. 2020. Thank you all very much again. Motion's carried. Good night. Mm -hmm.